Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to ESA. My name is Keglanek, and with me is the wonderful and beautiful C Dabs. We have a beautiful game for you guys here today. We have Intense versus Revenant. Now, Intense is actually very new to ESA. We don't really have much info on them, but Revenant, they didn't quite make the cut last season. They placed in the bottom four. So this season is going to be their chance for the ultimate redemption. Yeah, ultimately, when you're in rival series, it is sort of the bottom of the totem pole in the ESA ecosystem. But this is the sort of the proving grounds where you make your name for themselves. And I'm sure both of these teams are insanely hungry and really want to start carving out their place. Yeah, let's see if they can satisfy their hunger tonight. The first map is going to be Cafe between the two teams. Cafe is always an interesting map. Um. It's generally a defender-sided map. There's a lot of nuances to it, especially with the three-floor system it has in place. Oh, but it looks like map number one, like we said, is going to be Cafe, but Coastline going down and Consulate going to be the ban on Revenant's side. Theme Park going to be choice number two, C-Dabs. And the final one is going to be... I bet you can't guess what it is, C-Dabs. I bet you can't guess. I think it's going to be Clubhouse from Order of <laughs> Elimination. Oh, well, maybe. Oh, and it's yep. going to be Clubhouse. Beautiful. So we got our three maps between the two teams today. I'm excited to see how this is going to go. Like we said before, we don't have any info on Intense. So, you know, it's the time now for these five individuals to make their statements and prove what they can really do in this league. And hopefully, you know, if they do really well, we can see them do a lot more going forward. So it looks like we're just about ready to get started. I don't know, CDAPS. How do you feel about this? How do you feel going in? Do you think Revenant can make that comeback? Um, I think they are already established in, so they really do have that T3 competitive experience. And when you're looking at the map pool with you, I see Theme Park, I see Cafe, I see Clubhouse. I think of really structured strat-heavy maps. They definitely fall more towards the right side of that. You really do need to be disciplined. Your utility matters a whole lot more than, let's say, if you were playing Consulate and Coastline, where those maps can sort of like devolve into aim drainers. But when you have maps such as these, it is really going to come down to a really structured attack, trying to get as many rounds as possible on that side, as well as not wanting to relinquish any of your defensive map control. And especially on, as we start on Cafe, with the vertical control that you have to go through, in order to effectively take sight and cut off certain choke points, it's going to be really interesting to see how everybody does line up. Yeah, I'm glad that you mentioned that, you know, maps like Cafe are much more structured, especially for, you know, T3 and plus teams. I never really thought about how it's much more of a structured style, like you said. And it, it makes a lot of sense because you see a lot better, better teams, all things considered, really play at a much higher caliber on maps like Cafe. But the first operator to go down is going to be Thatcher. First one to go down, no surprise there. He's like the number one attacker to always go down at the beginning of every single round. But Maverick with the follow-up there from Intense. You know, Maverick's not too surprising either. And I believe Echo is banned globally. And so Maverick going down as well, C-Dabs. Why do you think they chose Maverick over, say, Hibana or Thermite? I think, honestly, on the side of Intense, maybe they are not necessarily comfortable being forced onto the maverick so having the opportunity to still bring the thermite still have the habana the more traditional hard breachers it isn't as high of a skill ceiling to attempting to get these breaches open as quickly as possible you don't have to waste all of the time getting drawing those two lines making sure you're not exposing yourself to somebody possibly trying to just take your head off as you're breaching torches out it's just sort of a really a lot easier way to get the necessary lines of sights and possibly entryways into the bomb sites as well. But seeing the mirror ban is pretty standard as well. But what's a little bit more interesting is the intel op of Valkyrie getting taken off the board. Now with the bans of the global ban of Echo, as we already touched on, that's Echo and Valkyrie both off the board. That's a whole lot of cameras and intel that the defense would have been able to use. So it's probably going to make it a lot more impactful to have a maestro so we're going to see w instantly go ahead and lock out and it's also going to minimize the roles and the all the utility that iq has to burn so we'll probably see as just try to be an absolute gunner on the ga that we so affectionately love to see people frag out on yeah if you're intense right now you need to think of the best way to probably roam clear 
top down on cafe you're gonna have a um a fairly easy time i would say you know upstairs with the lack of intel Defenders you know no valkyrie cameras or echo drones to scout or get in your way or anything oh no but it looks like we are gonna have a rehost skins are on unfortunate but like we were saying you know if they stay with all these same operators as last time there will probably be a lot more people upstairs and say bar cocktail or cocktail balcony white stairs cigar that whole area is going to be have a lot more roam presence because the intel's not going to be not going to serve as pretty much a, a crutch for the defenders and they're going to have to rely on their own bodies to get that intel and try to take down those attackers as soon as they can yeah, it was really interesting on the defensive side. You had that mute mozzie vigil combination that we really see prominent on Clubhouse with that famous SSG roam where you just control the entire map and make it impossible to drone anywhere and really know where the defenders are, where they're playing as they're just having a really big dynamic roam and just denying map control left and right. But seeing how that could be translated to cafe with all the little caveats and ways you can be shot like from pillars if there's somebody down below there's almost the entire floor of the third floor is destructible below from a nitro cell that a mute or a mozzie might have down below and there can just be a whole lot of danger inside the back of the minds of the attackers as they're trying to not really fall into the traps that the defense might set yeah the mute mozzie combo is the best thing you can really do as a defender when echo's banned of course he's globally banned right now and valkyrie's banned as well i mean we did see w like you said uh insta lock into that maestro pick so they are an intel heavy team you kind of have to be on a map like cafe but you know you got to do what you can especially on the defense and it looks like they were going to go bar first anyway so even with you know there's not really much the roam clear when it comes to the top part of cafe obviously because that's where the site is you still got to do what you can and make sure that whole, you know, red stair, cigar, all that are effectively shut out. Or at least you have eyes there just in case someone does try to sneak on by. But I think overall, both teams um, operator selections on both sides were fairly well picked and very well placed. Especially when we had the um, the sixth pick away from, I believe, uh, I think it was the Ash pick into the Kali. That's a really good pick for uh, on Cafe. Yeah, the long lines of sights toward of over towards heaven to new drop area, as well as some teams like to open up most of piano wall and just really like have a dock or somebody else with a long ranged weapon take those engagements toward piano and continuously set, cut the site in half. Could be a really interesting thing to see, as well as those lances attached to the bottom of Cali's rifles are a direct counter to those bulletproof maestro cams that are, I assume are going to be brought nearly every round on defense. I mean, if you're Revenant, you pretty much have to. But the Cali pick is also really interesting because on Bar and Cocktail, there's not a whole lot of great angles that I can really think of on the inside once you're in the top floor that you can really get a safe angle with her on. You know, once you're inside Red Stairs, you could push up in the Cigar Lounge, but then that line of sight into, you know, let's say there's a Wamai connecting cigar to white stairs hallway you know usually there's a defender there on a shield but that's like really it i mean you could rotate around the pillar on your left and maybe get some lines of sight going down bar and cocktail but like you said mp5 doc on a with an acog that's usually there with your number already you know ready for that pre-fire yeah it's just going to be interesting to see exactly how the soft breach is able to take away the utility we did see a Jaeger out here as well, trying to sponge up all of those explosives. Going to try to protect things such as the shield that most likely will be played over towards the pixel corner of White Door inside Piano, as well as probably try to protect those Maestro Cams for as long as possible to let them not only feed information, but possibly even stop a plant if it does get to that side of the round. But most of the time when you think of Cafe Third Floor, I think it is one of the, personally, one of the easiest sites to defend in the entire game. Oh, yeah. It's a very oh. powerful position. There's just so much choke points that you can cut and choke off, as well as with the main room being that piano area that attackers have to take control of, being fully destructive from down below. You really have to get a lot of map control in a quick fashion, or else your attacks will just stall out. 
and we did have to go for a rehost. A lot of the players seem to have been wearing skins. Um, yeah, skins have been kind of a controversial thing for this last new season. Pretty much everywhere in Siege, um, they recently made it so globally, the skins that players can be allowed to wear are the Pro League, the Pro Team skins, and the vanilla ones. And that's a pretty much it. And so it looks like a lot of players still are trying to take a little bit of time to catch up to that new rule. And they unfortunately were running skins in that first match. And so they are still trying to take them off and put them to the default. You know, to be honest with you, CDAPs, I love the skins in Rainbow Six. My, one of my favorite parts of the game, not even playing the game, is just customizing each person like a little action figure. Yeah, it's something really interesting. It does offer just that little bit of extra flair to your operators. And it's sort of the individuality on how the game is played. To a certain extent, the game is very simple, but like you just either plant the bomb or kill everybody. It's like similar to Counter-Strike. It's just a very simple bare bones 5v5, but the way everybody plays is so individualized and there's so many different facets and nuances and little strategies and tricks and tips and token up bra videos that are 40 minutes oh, long, man. telling you every single pixel you can wall bang to get a free headshot. Or that, ledges. <clears throat> exactly. Yeah. I, I regret ever seeing <laughs> anything about those ledge glitches where you could just fall 40 feet and be inside a site. But it's going to be straight back to the same site with the same operators coming out on both sides due to our rehost protocol. And hopefully we will be getting a right on into the action and seeing how the defense is able to set up the site to their liking. Do a little bit of... As many bombs as they you can. can't switch your... Oh, did um, someone do that? Yeah. Anyways, well, we did see TK6 pick out of the Kappa Tower. Couldn't quite remember who it was during that first rehost, but it was Kappa Tau into the Kali pick. And I mean, like we said before, Kali does have a lot of options when it comes to Cafe in general. But even on that top floor, Kali does have options. You know, you could repel on the sides in the back of Piano. There are, you know, lines of sight you could take advantage of, but once it becomes later into the round, you can't really rely on your sniper too much. You've got to go your secondary but we do see an interesting Five setup it looks like they're going to be prepared for that western push from from a um, red patch into cigar and so you know if they go for that they have to run some yeah they do run the thermite so they couldn't use ace obviously he's banned right now they couldn't use maverick and maverick would have been the best option there you could have gone for the habana as well but probably just the safe pick of the thermite just getting up close and personal with that reinforced wall it's probably your best option yeah it could be a little bit nerve-wracking as we've said that the down below is destructible you might catch a little brick of c4 blasting through those floors but if you are most likely gonna be like i probably gonna be going down below to try to get these new banners and other pesky gadgets while he's on there as well as most likely freezing going with him, trying to cut off any of those flanks under the main stairways of red and white as the crack stingers are going to go ahead and spread some spiky leg, spiky Legos all over the top of that staircase, making it very dangerous and painful for any of the roamers, such as we're going to see Neo and Yaiko downstairs to possibly rotate and get that flank. It does it's seem as if there's going to be a little bit of drone work coming out, trying to find out if there's anybody over towards Piano, because that does seem to be the primary entry point and map control that Intensu wants to get so desperately. Cigar being opened up from Red, and that's going to allow a full gigantic push coming into Cigar Lounge. And right away, not a whole lot to really combat the attacking team. Intense able to get into Cigar relatively easily, and that's going to be Ven getting that initial opening pick on the freezing. That's going to be important for the defenders, holding onto white stairs as much as possible. Ven finds that kill on the gridlock. And I mean, if you had to lose gridlock first, I would say that's a pretty big deal. You know, it's not as bad as losing your hard breacher in the beginning, but those late game spikes that go down, we did see gridlock send her spikes down on red stairs already, but control freak with the follow-up taking down um, Toady. That's going to be another big yikes. You've lost two of your biggest utilities on the attacking team already. Now, there's a minute left into the round, so not all is lost. It's a 3v2 for Intense. They can bring it back if they play smart. Kryptonite, however, trying to find some angles on the white, but that's going to be a bad option when there's many different angles looking right at you. The only option you have right now is to push into Freezer. You can't really rotate around, and that's going to be immediately Control Freak with such beautiful precision on the SMG-11 taking down Toady as well. It's a 2v5 
And it's not looking good for Intense right now. Speaking of which, Control Freak with a 3k, taking never mind a 4k, leading them to a flawless round. That's gonna be revved and bringing it back. Round one to zero over Intense. They're shaping up already to look a little bit better than they did last season. Yeah, that's definitely when we're talking about momentum and how you're wanting to really set up the rest of your season. You're making an absolute statement coming out to your map and getting a flawless round, something that is not easy to do in the slightest. And sure, you gave up piano control in a pretty kind of fast fashion, but that was almost like we said the trap that the intense attackers fell into as the mute just absolutely eviscerated everybody from the rotate holes inside a bathroom, creating all these close range engagements that the SMG 11 is so suited for. Yeah, uh, you're absolutely right. It seemed like there was almost no defense and Revenant just allowed Intense to just push into Cigar as much as they wanted. But as soon as they took a step further, just like we Attackers saw at the end of White Stars, Control Freak and Ven were ready for that follow-up. They were ready to hold those angles and obliterate anyone that got by. Frieza Attackers Wall did open up, but we saw zero advancement, minus Kryptonite, who made maybe an inch of progress into side freezers just get taken down immediately at first i was really worried about that defense but they shaped up super quick and they made it into the ultimate trap because you can't rotate out of cigar really you can rotate around red stairs or maybe rotate around pillar but we didn't see that happen but there were bodies waiting for that as well now we have seconds to go Five seconds remaining. So we are seeing a defense inside kitchen right now. Attackers it's an interesting defense. Nothing really bomb. too crazy from the looks of it. However, it looked like maybe bakery wall wasn't reinforced. I'm not 100% certain on that. If we could just go back and look. And, nope, it is reinforced just on the other side. They do have a rotate hole going inwards. That's a little... I don't know. That can get really risky really quick for... Revenant side, but if Bankery does get open up for the attackers, that could be pretty bad. But right now, it looks like they're mostly focusing on how the players will be entering from the White Sear side. And right now, I mean, they're falling for the trap almost perfectly. Intense right now, looking for those second floor pushes. Not going to find a whole lot of action right away. And again, TK running for that Cali. I don't, I don't know, C Depths. I don't know how I feel about the Cali being run on Bakery. I mean, I guess when you're trying to get in all of your breaches open from a safer distance, Thatcher is off the board. So taking those Electro Claws off of the back side, it not only opens up the main wall for Freezer, as well as the hatch if you want to get control of Dining Room and Train, which you most likely will have to do if you want to breach over towards Bakery. But this time it is a little bit different because Bakery seems to be the trap card that Revenant is playing. They're sticking a lot of manpower over on that side with a whole lot of utility denial with that shield, all of the Jaeger ADSs, as well as just the Jaeger himself with the smoke ready to swing out of prep. But what's also more interesting is Dubby has just rotated over towards that backside and it seems to be Kai juggling those electric claws, trying to catch maybe a free little bit of utility and deny that breaching capability that the Thermite of Toddy does pack in his back pocket with the extra Thermite guard. And he was looking at the top inside dining room for the Electro Claw on the hatch going into Freezer to see if they can open it up. And it looks like the soft reach option might be what they have to go for. But Neo, waiting way too long, wants to go for that initial kill, but Aeos is there for the follow-up. Then, though, takes down Kryptonite. And I wish we had seen that because that's you lose Zofia and you lose your Nomad already. And that's a lot of fragging power off the board for potential late game push. But that's going to be Frieza Wall open, and Toadie does not want to get immediately picked off like he did last round. Then, I'm sorry, Dummy, this time not on the Maestro anymore, waiting for those peaks coming on Freezer. But no, instead getting lit up a little bit, but the, uh, the follow-up from Control Freak takes down Aya, and suddenly it's not looking great again for Intense. They had a rough first round, and it looks like they're going to have another rough round to follow up. 26 seconds left on the clock. TK realizes they're going to go for broke. They, take, uh, they bring down the... Kaid, but it's not going to be enough. That's me control freak again with another. I want to say that's a 3k taking down, bringing them to round three pretty much in a 2 0 lead. I think we can go ahead and safely say that control freak is an absolute freak on the SMG 11, and you he's don't want freak. to challenge. Yeah, he's an absolute control freak. But 
as we're going to see a little bit of talk in chat about the reflex that Control Freak is bringing. He does have six kills to his name, so I think he has earned the right to bring that site if that's what's going to keep on bringing the pain for Team Revenant. But we're going to see a little bit more of an interesting site coming out as Reading Room Fireplace is going to be the battlegrounds for this round of Round 3 of Cafe. It's going to be probably a very similar setup to what we saw for the third floor of Bar. And that was in the first round of the game because if you look quite quickly Attackers as the game and loads as in, the bomb can. site is directly below what the bar area that we saw the last time. So most of the time, because of vertical control is so important on a map like Cafe, you're going to see a giant roam presence upstairs trying to hold on to all of that map control for as long as possible, probably even playing till dawn. I mean, it's a rough situation to be in for the attackers. I would say reading and dining may have one of the highest skill ceilings for either attacking or defending in all of siege now i'm glad you brought up earlier c that that bar and cocktail might be one of the easiest defending positions i would say it's almost the opposite for reading and dining it can be really really good for the defenders don't get me wrong but there are times where it could be an attacker-sided one as well, depending on how the rotates, and in Ben's case, how those castle placements can shut down the attacker's advances. Now, we are going to be seeing a back alley majority spawn from Intense's team, and they're going to have to go for a top-down push once again. Now, we have seen great follow-up on those drone clears. At the very least, last round from Revenant's side, we did see AO, I'm sorry, Neo go for a double kill, I believe on inside mining room and that worked very effectively it kind of really scared those defenses back and killed the roam on the top down roam clear completely yeah i do believe that they were able to take out the nomad before the air jabs were even placed which just gave even more breathing room to the rest of the roamers i do believe the jaeger was also off site could have been rotating in and out and just getting behind and having these attackers constantly worry about anybody on the flank. But I use this game to be back. And as he breaching charges his way straight into Freezer behind the drones, he's going to be faced by a good amount of defenders over towards the bar area. Protected by a castle barricade, but Kryptonite's going to go ahead and take out that ADS and probably try to get the sledge to come on over and use that big hammer to blast away the armored panel. But um, Tati has rotated over to the back side as well, as the Zofia is going to go and clear that out. Freezing is going to be on a little bit of a flank watch duty on the sledge. As the rest of his team clears out the area, he will most likely rotate over after the clear is done and start blasting away at that floor to maybe reveal the layers of defenders down below. Now, we mentioned before that the roam clear from the top down is the way to go for the side. We do see Neo trying to get some random pop shots on from the top. Not going to really amount to too much. We're going to have to claim or go down on Cigar Balcony. And that's really all you can do for the flank watch after a while because you need to find those angles. You need to figure out where those defenders are too because so far, no one's been seen. In fact, no kills across the board between either team. Ayo's right now looking on white stairs, trying to find any kind of shots. Unfortunately, not going to connect any on white stairs against Control Freak. And we're, bit, we're a bit of a stalemate right now. Control Freak wants to get that kill. He's waiting for Ayo's to rotate around into bow, uh, bow, uh, little bar again. But it looks like it's not going to happen. Ayo's goes for it and takes down Control Freak right away. Beautiful work. That's going to be your top fragger on the defensive team down immediately. But there's 30 seconds left. Freezing follows up, taking down Neo. It's going to be a 5v3 situation. The castle panel going down. It's going to be Ayus with the return onto Ven. They need to push the site right now. They need to go for the plant. There's only 15 seconds left. Dubby trying to find some pop shots off. Not going to find a whole lot. Toadie goes in for the defuse. And that might be the round right there. Yikes needs to do whatever he can. He takes down Freezing. He tries to get the double kill. Gets the double kill on the Freezing. And tries to follow up with the, typical, uh, with the triple kill with no luck. TK taking out Nyaiko. And that could be round. Dubby, last one alive. Needs to find those shots right now. He brings up the revolver, but... At that point, you've already known you've lost round three. There's not much you can do in that situation. Intense finally having a score on the board for map one. Yeah, and that's exactly how you want to respond. Get your first round under your belt here. And there's not much of a better side to do it than trying to get a little bit of momentum as you go to fireplace and reading. It is sort of traditionally the tertiary site because it necessarily isn't the strongest on cafe, but it definitely is still defendable as we talked earlier. But now, 
with getting a little bit of momentum rolling, you've got your first, you get your first round jitters are out if you're intense. You you're gonna start feeling yourselves a little bit more. And but you are gonna have to attack bar and cocktail lounge, which is traditionally the stronger site. However, if you can start getting your momentum rolling, Again, that and start might your be fight, the round right there. Yeah, he needs to do whatever he can. He takes down freezing. He tries to get the double kill. Gets the double kill on the freezing and rounds. It does start to pan out. Yeah, if you're in Ted's situation right now, you're not having good time because you did win that one round. But like we said before, that is one of the hardest defending sites in all of Siege, reading and dining. And you're going back to probably the easiest one to defend again. You're being put in a cycle right now that you just do not want to be in. If you're in Ted's, you either really need to win this next round or you're just hoping to get one more round at some point, at the very most until you know into that second half where you can go back to defense and hopefully put revenant in that same loop that they're in right now because they lost uh kitchen they lost bar and cocktail they did win reading room so this is just a really bad perpetual cycle for them right now and they need to bring it back now we're not seeing the castle come out again on top floor this time we did see in reading room i'm a little disappointed so i like seeing castle and what it can do to transform a site but we're seeing the same exact um we're seeing the same exact operator lineup that we saw on both sides, in fact, that we did in round one. Yeah, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. And for Revenant, if you still have Control Freak on the board on with that SMG 11 in his hands, the round is never quite over as we've seen him just cause a heap and heap of damage and just cut off any entryways here. Revenant is probably going to be trying to just hold in exactly the same way, get their same picks if possible. And if you're on the side of Intense, you want your... No, um, your gridlock, pardon me, not a new guy. You want your gridlock to stay alive just a little bit longer, possibly to have those smokes still in the back pockets that could really isolate out defenders, such as Control Freak, as he is still playing inside a bathroom. Is really close quarters combat, and you don't want to challenge necessarily. You can just throw a quick little... Oh, actually, Neo's going to get the first pick, and like I said, you want to keep your gridlock alive, but freezing will fall at the hands of the Roni. That's the kind of fast shooting gun as Ayaz is going to start shooting off on the, the other roamer downstairs over towards the mining area. He's going to be reconciled up with Kryptonite, who's also going to try to take out these players. More shots are getting created left and right as the Jaeger is trying to get a cheeky little wall bang, some pot shots going through, and he's going to be faced with two defenders or two attackers trying to get out his position as Neo also rotates over towards him. There's going to be a little bit of pinch going on, but Ayaz is going to get the kill on the Yaikel. Dropping the Jaeger, however, with about halfway done with the round, his job might have been necessarily over, as he did kill a good amount of time as well. But Neo's going to pick up his second kill of the round onto Ayaz, and dropping off the sledge in glorious fashion as he continues his reign of dominance on the second floor. Still has the Nitro Cell in his pocket that could do some vertical construction here, but the Sophia is going to be trying to fight two people on the bottom of White Stairs, as well as over towards the 90 area of dining but neo's just gonna say ah, i'm gonna rotate out and value my life maybe get a cheeky little flank over towards the brown stairs or whiskey area but the rest of the control for intense is over towards the piano room again as the breaching is going to be going here neo's gonna pick up a triple kill for the round taking out kryptonite as the superman continues to keep on getting his kills leaving it all up to the breaching duo of potty and tk over in piano yeah, if you're freezing, you're not having a good game so far. You've died, I think, beginning of every single round so far. Maybe minus one round, but there we go. TK getting another kill, but that's going to be Revenant bringing it back. Neo with, I believe, a 4K clutching the round again. That's going to bring it to a three-round lead over Intense right now. And again, if you're Intense, you needed that round so bad. But unfortunately, not even really coming close to the site, unfortunately. But freezing has died on that gridlock all like first been the first pick almost every single round. I think there was one round. I think the only round that intense won where they got that initial first pick on to Revenant. Otherwise, it's been Revenant having a field day so far on the defending side. And they have been relatively uncontested, especially on that bomb plant. I think they've only managed to get that diffuser almost going down once. And again, that was on reading room. And you're not going to go back to that anytime soon in fact we're going back to kitchen Defenders again which was been another very rough site for intense and i don't really see that changing for this one either yeah if you're in the revenant side 
getting a 4-2 split is really sort of expected on Cafe. That's sort of the bare minimum that you definitely want to feel like you had a successful defensive side. And that usually is accompanied by winning bar twice and winning kitchen twice. Reading room is where it's really a toss-up. You can, If you win it once, then amazing. You have a 5-1 split if you're successful on all your other defenses. Then you're definitely in the driver's seat and you have the momentum pushing in your favor. But the main thing is just that you need the mental floor to come out of intense if they're able to come back from starting down at a deficit because most of the time when you start on attack you're gonna be losing due to the nature of the map that's chosen and overall siege is a little bit more towards the defender side because you're constantly fighting trying to take map control you've you're the one that has to take the initiation on all of the gunfights as well as that clock in the top of your screen is constantly ticking away and that is not your friend Speaking of the clock right now, the round has officially begun and Freezing needs to prove a point right now. I believe when we last saw Kitchen, we had Kryptonite on that Zofia and Freezing again on that Nomad go down first very quickly. And if you're him right now, not only are you pushing in by yourself, there is a drone following you up a little bit, but it seems like you're racing the drone right now and you are going by yourself. You need to figure out what you need to do right now. Yeah, and it's most likely going to have to be this full top-down roam clear because the roamers of Revenant have just caused so much damage to this intense attack. It's causing the stalling. It's causing the death of your important operators that you really need for your execute as well as just continually wasting more and more time. But it does need to be a little bit faster on the roam clear here as the entire top floor is cleared. I use this rotating and taking control of the reading room and there doesn't seem to be anybody in his way if he wants to start taking away all of the gadgets that might be playing in the kitchen, as well as maybe finding somebody who is in a compromised position as the rest of the floor starts getting destroyed. Kryptonite's going to be breaching away that back hatch and making sure that there is a last-ditch effort in the way into sight if worse comes to worse. Yeah, I mean, I think that's one thing Intense need to fix up this time around is that they're going a lot faster this time around. They're not playing any games. Speaking of not playing any games, that's I is finding some shots on the Neo. Actually, no, I'm sorry. Neo finding some shots on the Neo, but Neo got cornered out completely freezing. Finally getting a kill on the board. That might be, oh, that's kill number two. I apologize. I thought that was kill number one, but that's going to be your Mozzie off the board completely. And that is... A really important kill so far because Neil has been one of the best roamers on Revenant's team so far, putting in the most effort. That's going to be two castle panels out of the game as well. And this is looking like a very aggressive push, much more than we're used to on Intense's side. Before they had gone a little bit slow, and that might have hurt them too much. They were playing too carefully, but Ven pops back, taking down freezing, bringing it to a 4v4, and there's only 30 seconds left. With 30 seconds left on the board, it's going to be a back and forth bloodbath. Control feed taking down Ayus. That GA off the board once again. Dubby still holding that angle onto Freezer. And it's not Attackers looking good for the, the attackers all of a sudden. The diffuser's remain. still in hand. It's a 3v4. And you only have 10 seconds. You gotta do something. But that's me. Toady taking out Dubby. The follow up needs to be there. Taking out Yike. But Five seconds to go. Control Freak needs to go down as well. And that's gonna be Kryptonite taking down Control Freak and Ven needing to find where that diffuser's going down. No one has Attackers angles on that castle. He can get an easy kill right now. But no, he's playing the slow game now. The question is, what can Castle do now? But he goes through Freezer, takes down Kryptonite, but the angle from Toadie finds Ven, and that is going to be another round on the board for Intense Gaming in their very first match in ESA. Yeah, and that is a huge win coming out of Intense, as you were able to much not more than we're used to on Intense's sides we before they had gone a round. little bit slow, and that might have hurt them too much. They're playing too carefully, but Ven pops back. Being able to fight back and get the necessary entries onto site, just completely decimating everybody in their path. Kryptonite had a wonderful flank on the timing to go through Bakery prep and just get his free kills of shooting everybody in the back, paved his way for the Thermite to go in, get that diffuser down. Then once you set up your necessary crossfires for your 3v1 post plant, it is very hard for the castle using the UMP, one of the weaker guns in the game, to try to tank all of those engagements by himself, especially if you are organized in that fashion. Defenders but with that, it's going to cause a repeat 
of Kitchen to come out once again as Intense is going to try to do the same thing they were able to do last round. Maybe even get a 3-3 split, which I didn't personally think was in the realm of possibility. But Intense just continues to fight on and could really put themselves in the driver's seat of this game depending on how this round pans out. CDAPS, you're absolutely right, man. And here's the question not only for you, not only for the players, but also the audience. Can Intense do it again? Can we see a 3-3 split go into the second half for Cafe? That's the miracle question. I think from the performances we've seen so far between the two teams, it's probably going to be a 4-2 split in Revenant's favor. But the performance they had on Kitchen is exactly the momentum they needed to bring it back to maybe a 3-3 tied split going into the second half. But you got to keep in mind, I feel like a lot of this rests on Neo's shoulders. Neo, unfortunately, going down in the beginning has been a huge driving force in keeping those roamers, I'm sorry, those attackers back with his roam clearing. And because he died so quickly in the beginning of last round, if he can dial it back this time, hold an angle, never mind. Freezing takes down Neo again at the beginning of the round. That's going to be two twice in a row now where he goes down first from freezing or at least freezing had something to do with the kill and it's probably looking like another version of last round yeah i have to say i think freezing heard you peg talking about his <laughs> lack of entry and he's just turned it up all the way to cranked up 10 and he's going to continue probably trying to not only cut off the rotations but also have that dragging potential that the nomad does bring that arx packs a punch in the right hands but i was also going to want to talk about how this round was most likely going to be played out and seeing how Whoever got the first kill would probably win, but now that that's gone inside Intense, they are starting to shape up a quite lethal attack as the IQ starts blasting away the floor with those breaching charges, opening up angles and making it very hard for people inside the site. Safe, it's also going to be Jeremy and just taking out all of these gadgets, making sure that there's not a whole lot, but Nitrozel is going to go through and take about half of the damage off of DK. But he still has that breaching hammer in hand. Is going to be opening up some nice lines of sights over towards plates on the B-bomb chassis, making it very difficult for, I believe it is Dubby on the Kai playing over towards that area. There's only about a minute left, but all five attackers are poised and ready to start taking in this backside positioning as the cam's going to go out. Toddy's going to try to breach that wall and probably have the same way of entering the site that they were successful on last time around. The biggest difference between this round and the last time we had seen Kitchen was that the soft reach that they tried so desperately on Intense's side was not able to be found before because those soft reachers were killed early on. Freezer opened up now, the Thermite opened it up, and here's the real question. We're down to 30 seconds again. That diffuser needs to go down. Dubby and Ven this time holding the same angles as before, needing to pull a rabbit out of their hat. It really comes down to whether or not Ven and Control Freak can stay alive on the defending team. And who can make that first push? But Ven goes down and Dubby follows up and goes down as well. That's going to be the diffuser going down. And now it's a matter of, oh, can it go Attack down? Cody goes down from Control Freak. Such a huge control onto Kitchen Cooking side. That is going to be a huge moment because it stalls that plan for so long. One second left. And the diffuser goes down at the last second. That is going to be Revenant taking down who's the most important, bringing it to a 4 2 split in this second half. Wow. You know, if that time limit did not exist, that probably would have gone intense in favor. But unfortunately, right at the last millisecond, that diffuser needed to go down. The control freak was there with that pop off on the SMG 11. Yeah, it might have been a little bit of a mistake on the IQ's part to try to plant in the same exact spot that the Thermite had just died in. But as there's just so many bullets flying around, the smoke canisters are gassing everybody and you're trying to get your default plant down it is definitely a very hectic position so for the smoke of control freak to just be able to keep a nice level head and prioritize the main target of making sure that that diffuser is not being typed on as the clock hits triple zero to ensure that clutch of a round was really 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 well played I mean, when you're in that situation, there's seconds left on the clock. You need to beat the time limit. Like, where else can you uh, plant that diffuser, right? Because you're right behind the bomb chassis. It's indestructible for the most part. And 
there's not really other places you can rotate with, you know, being safer. We could have rotated to the little half wall in a kitchen, but even then, your head would still be exposed and defusing it would be a night. I'm sorry, defending it would be a nightmare. But in the second half right now, we do see Intense coming back over on to defense now. It's two to four. They really need to win this cocktail. Are moving out to locate a bomb and yeah, they need to start their defensive rounds off to a great start. But speaking of great starts, I do have to go ahead and shout out Control Freak, who already has double digits in the first half, stuck on the hard support role, really showing that even if you don't have the strongest guns, if you are going to play smart, you're going to play for the team, you can really make a gigantic difference in this game. Typically, people on support are like, Oh, I'm just going to let the Jaegers, the Ashes, all of those crazy people with crazy aim take all the glory. But it's just a shout out to the little guys here, as he also is the Thermite with the Diffuser, just continually playing hard support, but showing that they can still frag. But the rest of the attack is going to be going on a traditional top down, what you would expect to see coming out of a bar attack. They're going to start breaking open the hatches, making sure there's no runouts, and start swinging in towards Piano, taking out all of the gadgets and any other tricks that the defenders might have placed inside. Yeah, support players are really slept on. They get usually a lot more kills than most people realize. You know, there's plenty of other pro league players that I could list off, but Control Freak is just playing his role so well. Speaking of roles, one well, my on the Iron Shield and Cigar is going to be an interesting but not too uncommon located. placement and that well my on an iron shield alone can be a stranglehold on cigar that's what i thought we were going to see on revenant side when they initially defended on bar and cocktail but we did not see that go through it doesn't seem like it made too much of a difference kryptonite though holding on to cigar as long as possible we're halfway through the round and we haven't seen a single attacker until now with neo drop onto the building the entire building and that's gonna be neo being taking down kryptonite and that's gonna be a really important kill neo again having so much difficulty with these first picks right now not a great place to be in but he held on to cigar for so long so well in fact and that's gonna be neo trying to find that follow-up onto the maestro but unfortunately freezing holding on as much as he can now it's gonna be a matter of what to do next there's a minute left on the clock. There are rotations of the defenders going through the back near white that we can see. What can they do with Cigar? And now TK is holding onto the back of Freak for as long as he can. Soft Freak's going through, but TK finds that kill on the control freak. And that's going to leave it with 30 seconds and the diffuser down. Yeah, that's a little taste of the own, meta his own medicine as the SMG 11 takes the head off of the thermite before he's able to get any breaching going on. With 20 seconds left on the board, the smoke canister is still one in the back pocket, as well as cutting off all of the doorways. It's going to be a very, very hard push for these Revenant attackers who are going to be funneled in through choke points. And like, just like that, Toddy's going to pick up a nice kill on Neo as the attack just seems to stall out and not know where to go. TK is going to pick up his second kill on the Yikel, leaving out a 4v2. It's all up to Ven and Dubby as the Micro are just blasting away and shipping off more and more damage, but the clock's going to strike midnight. And there is going to be a no Cinderella story here as um, Intense is going to take round seven and tie it, or not tie it up, bring it a little bit closer back at a scoreline of four to three. I mean, Intense right now needs to do whatever they can. There's nothing really too crazy about their defensive side. They played it pretty standard to the cafe books, doing exactly what they need to, needed to do. And, you know, those angles that the defenders held were so good. They did exactly what they needed to do. And I think a big issue, similar to what Intense was feeling in the beginning, is that I think Revenant was just going too slow. We had seen them struggle a bit, you know, being halfway into the round and not even dropping onto Cafe in general. And that's a big issue because you don't have enough time to play around Defenders, with. Defenders, protect your bombs from being diffused. Yeah, by that's attackers. really the giant pitfall of trying to attack that third floor. Your primary, your primary and way into the site is dropping those two hatches, but they can be hotly contested and very difficult to get into if the defense is set up and structured in a way to try to deny that map control, as well as there was a little bit of a roam presence down in the bottom side, making it very difficult to possibly go up the white stairs or just try to clear out any of the utility from below down in piano. But at the end of the day, Kryptonite was just sitting on that shield over towards the pixel corner, 
as the Wamai, just throwing those magnetic frisbees, picking up and trying to protect that shield for as long as possible. Sure, he died, but when he died, it was about a minute and ten seconds left. He killed about two-thirds of the round, and that can almost be more important than getting a kill in the more traditional way. The round starting off once again. It's three and four for Intense right now. Intense, again, needs to defend this round. We had seen a struggle for Revenant on Kitchen towards the end of the first half. We had seen Revenant just barely pull through in that final round, bringing it back to that score lead in their favor. A two-round lead, in fact. Now we're seeing a different kind of attack. We're seeing a much more aggressive attack, and Neo taking down Freezing. A taste of a taste of their medicine back and forth between the two almost every single round so far and that's gonna be losing your bandit so if you had any potential for you know uh, uh, bandit tricking that's gonna be completely gone and with that being said that's gonna be the bakery wall open or just one of them that's gonna be the sort of half wall open up and that will be a huge line of sight going in the kitchen but not the biggest line of sight we could see another one going for the main wall and bakery and that's gonna be a huge fragging opportunity for the attackers but it looks like that hallway might not provide too much information or what's most important to them, too many bodies to supply. Now we are seeing the defensive side hold a very, very, very held back defense. We only have one roamer on the board and that's gonna be Ayaz roaming around just trying to find out any kind of kills. It seems like they have a general idea of where he is and that's gonna be Neo unfortunately just barely missing out of eye shot. I believe that was TK on the board. Neo right now in washroom might be able to find a huge kill on the Neo, in fact. Losing out on that Zofia. Looking around. Neo seems to have no idea, and that's me. Ayo is taking A is taking down Neo. And that's gonna be him tacti tactically retreating into the back of white. Freezer's completely uncontested right now, and it's gonna be a huge cat and mouse game now between Ayas and everybody else. Yeah, being vigil, you can't just cloak your way out of being droned. But now I think the biggest impact is his presence is felt. His ability to potentially flank these attackers that are stacking up inside a cafe should be quite worrying if you're on the side of Revenants. But Yaiko's just going to be blasting his way straight into prep, pre-firing these common angles, taking out barbed wire in his way. His presence is definitely felt out here. As Dubby's going to get a kill onto TK, dropping the Maestro down. Definitely not an operator you want to be losing when the clutch does come to the end. Both these players are just going into sight. Ben is getting another entry here as Pulse is going to fall at the hands of him and Dub. He's going to take out Ayaz. Finally, Control Freak is half away on that Diffuser, but it doesn't even matter as the gridlock of Dub is too strong for Kryptonite. And Revenant win an attacking round and extend their lead back to that two round cushion that they probably want to be in. Oh man, if you are NTS, you would have thought, I'm sorry, if you're intense, you probably would have thought you had that round in the bag. Ayaz played that really well in the beginning against Neo, and then the snowball effect happened, I guess. It just was not a great... Yeah, I mean, a snowball effect from there was just not a great situation to be in. Revenant played that really well. They held back what they could. They didn't go for the immediate refrag. They didn't let their emotions get to them after that first pick. They kept... They rolled with the punches. They kept it going, and now we're reading in Fireplace. If Intense can bring it back, it needs to be now. We said that a lot in the first half, Defenders but now the stakes are a lot higher. A it's a 3-5 scoreline, and all it takes is going to 7 to bring it back home, or bring it to map number 2. So, here's the main question, CDAP. What can they do? Here they... If you're on Revenant's side, you want to win this site. You want to hit that 6-point threshold and really put the pressure on Intense. And... It's going to have to come at the top down roam clear. You're going to have to get control of bar and lounge as quickly as possible and force away all of the utility that we're seeing in tense place over towards Ten these areas. Remaining. There's castle barricades. There's Goyo shields. There's Maestro camp. There's the ADSs to stop any of your attempts. And it's... But on the side of Attackers Revenant, they do have a Zofia and Ash. That is a very powerful soft breaching combo that can take out those aforementioned utility sponges from a safer distance. And then it's just a matter of staying alive and making sure all that utility is not gone, going to waste. And we're going to see everybody just immediately going back stairs. Actually, Yago's going to be just blasting away at the window, making sure his presence is known. And he might just swing in and keeping that 
initial danger in the back of the minds of these intense defenders, but he's just going to drop on red and blast his way straight on into piano. Caution to the wind, flying all the way towards white stairs. He's going to see a shield. He's going to start burning away the ADSs with his flash mags. And probably, yep, Neo's going to swing on over and take out that Goyo shield with the first impact of the lifeline launcher, as well as a breaching charge in the back pocket. Drops into train if they decide to push from that side. The Maestro's actually going to get hit as he's in there and some drones are going to start going away. He's make his position known that he is not safe down below. He's going to rotate over towards Pillar and probably make his way over in Reading Room if he is able to. More drone work is going down as this might actually be evident of a sort of unorthodox dining push through train if the cards do line up that way. Yaikel is going to be trying to get this opening frag as the Jaeger is playing over towards the mini bar areas. Here, a Goyo shield actually is actually not going to get popped by the grenade, even though it was untaken by the ADS. There's some drones here that Yaikel is going to be following as the pings go out, but the Jaeger is just going to be playing peekaboo whack-a-mole style behind the shield with another player over towards white continuing to dwindle away the time as the castle will actually swing out and drop the other fbi agent as a whole flurry of kills goes in tk throws his hands in the bag but control freak does get a kill on the kryptonite downstairs as he did actually drop all the way inside now they actually have access in here to the a site but Ayaz is going to pick up his second kill of the round on that castle leaving it all up to dubby and neo to try to clutch out this round so anyways, Yigel started blasting, and it did not go well for him whatsoever. 45 seconds left on the clock, and you're right, there's an unorthodox push, and the defense, all things considered both ways, a lot of upwards balcony being held for what turned out to be a really good reason. Dubby's barely holding on to life as much as he can, but that's going to be Aya's following up on the flank, taking down Dubby, and that's going to be your gridlock gone. All that's left is Neo, and all things considered, he's surrounded. 20 seconds left, you're on the wrong floor, you don't have any other support, but you take down Ayas, and you need that diffuser to go onto the site. Time is running out, you need to get the diffuser, you need to plant, or at least play for picks, do something, and you're gonna have to go through washroom and get that plant down, but you're running out of options, and that is gonna be a three, I'm sorry, two bodies waiting for you through that rotate hole, and that's gonna be intense, winning that round. I, you know, it was a big back and forth for a while, but in the end, I'm not really too surprised that Intense won that. I think their defense overall, even though they lost on the attack for uh, Dining as well, they played that defense, I think, a lot better than Revenant did. Yeah, it was... What we saw on the side of Revenant was sort of the opposite approach to that top floor control that we saw Intense employ. Intense, for lack of a better term put a really intense amount of pressure up there and we're playing till death they took the gunfights and ultimately Ayaz on that ump just rode through the entire enemy lineup but what we saw Attackers on revenant side was they showed bomb. their face upstairs then they retreated back to site but by giving up all that map control ultimately they just got choked out on site and were unable to hold the sheer amount of angles that the attackers were employing but that was the main difference between those attacks, and that's why ultimately Intense was successful. And with their ability to go back upstairs to the third floor bar, they're looking to tie up this game if they're able to repeat what we saw a couple rounds ago. Yeah, tying it up is the name of the game right now. Revenant, of course, still needs to get to that 7-4 scoreline if they can, but... This is, in, I don't want to say it's another last chance for Intense, but this is a great opportunity to tie it back. You're on the defense, you're barring Cocktail. You know, the chances of you losing this are fairly low, all things considered. Especially because, all things considered, Intense has been playing their defensive side extremely well. Yeah, they've been really structured and holding onto the necessary map control for as long as possible. And we've just seen the Revenant attack stall out at really inopportune times. This time you're probably going to have to have Neo get a little bit aggressive again, trying to get the picks for the opening frag and getting this Wamai out of that pixel corner as quickly as possible. Last time they let him survive just a little bit too long and it almost was a dead round at the end, but the utility is going to start getting burned away as once his shield is gone, he probably will retreat. 
Well, it's just like that. He's actually stuck in the corner if Neo is able to just hold this window. But he unfortunately misses the shot as the Wamai tucks tails and runs over toward the bathroom in white. But with only a minute killed this time, it's not as successful as a roam as the Wamai most likely would have liked. And that is Kryptonite. But he is still alive and has his life as well as a very powerful gun in his back pocket. Yeah, I mean, if you're Kryptonite, there's not really much you can do other than run away. And they, he played that perfectly well. And so Yaigo right now just pulling on to see what he can do. He wants to get the soft reach and probably try to approach Whitehall as well. But TK is waiting for any sort of really aggressive push. And it looks like Yaigo is debating whether they want to go for it or waiting for the bottom of White Stairs. Or I suppose in that angle, the top of White Stairs. But TK is ready for anything. He wants to get that pop off. And you can tell, you can tell both of them are really antsy to get this next kill. They got to do what they can. But it's a slow attack, all things considered, from Revenant. The drones are going down. They know exactly that TK is there, and Yaikul just needs to follow up now. Both are, like I said, waiting for that push, playing a game of cat and mouse mentally and physically with each other. It's a matter of who goes for that first pop-off first, but Control Freak lets the time loose and takes down uh, Tony, and that's BW taking down Breezy as well. That's kind of a big yikes situation, I think. All things considered, TK's played that really well, but no, the knight from Yike taking down into a double kill. Control Freak gets a team kill on top of that, and Io takes down Yike, but Yikes, all things considered, wow, a knife into a double kill, straight out of Call of Duty style. 30 seconds on the board, it's a 1v2, and Aya's, Aya's man, you, you gotta do something. You, you gotta hold your angle, do what you can. The diffuser's going down. Aya's does it, he's listening to the stream, does exactly what we need him to do, but Ven, unfortunately, is waiting there for the headshot connecting, and that is gonna be, I believe, match point for Rev. That was a really, really well executed attack coming out of Revenant. As soon as they got the initial pick, they just flooded the site. Well, that's kind of a big yikes situation. I think just all things that are DK played that really well, but no, the knife from Yike taking down into a double. Smoke had both of the players that were covering his backside just fall instantly. And that's when the Ash just pinched away. And there's not much you can do in a two-on-one if you have that shotgun. Sure, he probably maybe could have been still looking towards that bathroom swing. And it wouldn't have been as easy for the Ash to just sprint in, give a little taste of the six-inch blade, and then vault on in and take out the Wamai. But ultimately, if you're those Heaven players and the other balcony players you cannot lose Attackers those gunfights by being over aggressive trying can. to peek the players towards cocktail and new balcony drop yeah i feel like intense overall was a little too cocky on that defense they felt like they had it in the bag because it is bar and cocktail but you know tk played that really well there's not really much you can do other than rely on your teammates and unfortunately they failed him and that's when young just came in with the knife rotated over into freezer getting another kill and then he did get followed up and uh, killed by Ayas, but even then, that shouldn't have happened. That second that kill especially remaining. should not have happened whatsoever. But we are going into potentially match point between Revenant and Intense in map number one between the two at ESA Rivals. It's a matter to see if Revenant can bring this home or if Farm and Cocktail is going to be a huge choke point for them. Yeah, it's just... Almost every single one of these rounds, I want to look at the stats afterwards of whoever gets the first kill typically wins. And just coming out swinging with your guns flailing as Revenant has done on their successful attacks seems to be what works. Just continuing the pressure, continuing to take map control, and continuing to getting kills is just how you have to take these particularly strong sites that, that Intense is defending right now. Hopefully, if you're on the defending side right now, you're going to try to see what exactly went wrong. You're not going to overextend, and you're not going to lose these engagements. But Neo definitely has a little bit of confidence as he's going to swing over towards White. His free fires are not going to land, but he's going to be able to use that reaching charge to blast open a potential path on into Freezer. And that's where the smoke is sitting behind a shield, as well as having those gas canisters in the back pocket if unchecked could just to kill the entryway from the site if Revenant isn't quick enough on the time. There's now two players over towards the fight, but the Jaeger's gonna be shot out and it's gonna fall at the hands of Crypt or at 
Neo as Kryptonite falls. He's going to take a good amount of damage for his endeavors, but getting that opening pick is definitely huge. Getting that opening pick, like you said, is definitely huge and might go towards your theory that whoever gets that opening pick usually tends to win the round as well. Trees are being completely opened up. Flashbangs are going down. Where are the defenders? It seems like they're still watching towards the guard about a new hatch. And which is not bad, all things considered, but it's going to be Neo again, trying to go forward and maybe get that kill on TK again. No, it could be a little mistake, though. It's like TK, yep, TK going down from Neo again. Neo with the double kill. The follow-up is coming out right now. That's going to be Neo not unable to find Toadie. And that's going to be a 2v4 intense. What's going on? It's not looking good. That's going to be Toadie taking down Yaikel as well. It's one, I'm sorry, 2v3. That diffuser is going to go down. Attackers it, activating the as much as you would hope that people like to do too much, unfortunately, not going to be a whole lot until that bomb plant is already down. Toady takes down Control Freak as well, bringing it to a 2v2. Freezing right now is looking for any potential angles, but it looks like both the attackers are back on top of the cafe ceiling. They have that diffuser down, they have their rotates. It's going to be really hard to refrag from this angle if you're trying to go for that diffuse, and unfortunately, that's all you can really do. Those gridlock spikes are going to go down, and now the attackers know that it's happening. It's going for it. Revenant takes down Freezing, however, and that's going to be potentially it. This could be game right here. Timer's going down. The attackers don't need to risk a whole lot for their stats. And that is going to be W taking down Tony and Revenant take map one against Intense for ESA Rivals. What a... I almost want to say surprisingly close game, all things considered. It was 7-4 to four overall, but... You know, those attacking rounds for Intense were not looking good. And towards the, the end, their defense was better. But it seems like Revenant just had their number and figured out exactly how they needed to rotate and adapt around their surroundings to beat out Intense. Yeah, this was definitely, it was Intense, or it was Revenant's map choice. So you would expect them to be more comfortable on this map. So it's not necessarily an unprecedented or really surprising result. But it's going to be a lot more interesting to see how Theme Park pans out, which is Intense's map pick. Hopefully they'll have some tricks in their bags. We're going to get to see some really, really exciting gameplay coming out here. But with that, we're going to take a quick five-minute break to let these teams go ahead and restart their games and make sure everything is all in order. So bear with us as we go to break. Make sure you're ready as we get right back into map two in about five minutes.
Map number one between Intense and Revenant didn't quite go as Intense planned. Revenant was the, I'm sorry, Cafe was the choice for Revenant and it seemed to work pretty well for them. But map number two for ESA Rivals is going to be Theme Park and it's Intense's choice. You had seen before that they didn't quite do as well as probably anyone had hoped on Cafe. They almost brought it back, but not quite enough. But map number two on Theme Park will be possibly Intense's redemption story. And if they don't, unfortunately, it's going to be a 2-0 when we have to say goodbye to Intense. But I have faith. I think we all have faith. We all need to group together and have some faith here for Intense to bring it to map three. But Revenant right now is looking like a super strong team and seemingly nothing can stop them so far. But Theme Park's a whole different beast from Cafe. My name is Kai Glenek and with me today is the wonderful and beautiful CDAPS. And we're going to see if Intense can bring it back on defense this time around, starting off on Theme Park. Yeah, I'm definitely looking to see Intense bounce back on their own map choice, especially starting on the favored defensive side of their own map pick. So getting like quickly into it, they can take a big lead, as we've seen with Theme Park. I've seen games tie at 5-1, five, 5-1 one, five, one halves. Like, it's just, it is a very, very, very difficult map to attack. And you add in the factor that it is newer. It's one of the reworks. It's only been in the pool for about two or three months. And a lot of teams off of the back end of last season just kind of stuck away from it because they had so much going on where they didn't necessarily want to open up their map pool when you can just ban it away and deal with what you're comfortable with. But as this whole new season started off, it's just with also Oregon joining the map pool, there's not really any ability to hide and shy away from these new maps. And that's why we're seeing Theme Park being brought. But with a Thatcher and Monty ban, as well as Mira coming out, they are pretty typical bans besides the potential of Monty being gone. That could be Revenant reading into Intense's strategy that they might have a really good shield player. And on a map where of Theme Park where there's a lot of narrow corridors that you have to push in through, hiding behind the giant Frenchman with the shield can make things a little bit easier. And with him gone, it might help the defense hold on just that little bit easier. Yeah, Monty can be really annoying on Theme Park because you do have large hallways, but once it comes to the actual rooms and bomb sites for the map, they're really small, all things considered. And having him just block the doorway as well, it can cut off a lot of potential roam, you know, pressure. It could put a lot of pressure on how they can articulate their angles. It can put pressure on the attackers as well to just push onto the site and be as effective as they can be. But with Monty off the board now, it looks like we might see a blitz. But I mean, the chances of, you know, realistically having a blitz is probably close to a percent or maybe even less. But with round number one going to be in Armory and Throne Room, no surprise. That's usually the cream of the crop site to start off on. We are going to see, I believe, a castle Defenders starting off. And yes, we are. We're seeing Toadie on that castle. And because it was the sixth pick choice, it will not be found. They will not be expecting it on the attacking team. However, Ven has been hard stuck in on that sledge roll here, bringing the British hammer with him in his back pocket. That is going to make quick work of those castle barricades if he's able to get up close and personal, which he probably most likely will have to do if he's alive as the executes go down, as well as the soft breach team of Neo and Geico being on that Ashen Jaeger we saw so often last time around is just going to try to remove all the utility that the intense defenders are bringing to the table. There's a good amount of breach denial, but all of that is going to be a mute point as Control Freak has brought the Maverick here. And if he is able to use his torch effectively, he can just draw two lines in a sh on the top and bottom of a barricade and turn that hard reinforcement soft for one of those soft breachers to just blast her. It's going to be tough because Revenant's team has pure destruction on their side. They have two, three soft breach and two hard breach in their name. It's going to be a matter of how they use it effectively. Ben already Bro, waiting for someone it. inside of uh, ooh, initiation, I believe. Not going to find a lot, but someone is waiting inside and that person's going to be freezing again. Now, freezing has had a hard time last map getting that opening pick or you could be in the first pick. 
goes out, unfortunately not going to connect with Ven. It gets shot out in the air, but Ven is in a corner. Ayo's though trying to find... I believe he's going to try to rotate around. There's going to be castle barricades hiding from the top of Cash Dash going into... That connecting room. Oh man, I don't know my theme for it. Ooh, that's me, Cash Dash, waiting and not going to find a whole lot of action right away. It's a bit of a stalemate, all things considered. Everyone's droning out and waiting for that next move on each other's side. The real question is, what's going to happen? That's going to be Neo finding Ayas, and that's going to be the double kill from Neo taking down Kryptonite as well. Then finds a kill as well, and that is going to be a great start for Revenant on the attack. Proximity alarm goes off, and I kind of forgot those were in the game. You don't really see them make too much of an impact, but they are there and a little annoying. There's a minute left on the clock. It's a 2v5, and if you're having the man disadvantage defending on throne, things get scary really quick because there's a lot of open space. It's the only room, really, or the only bomb site with a lot of space, but even then... You're kind of stuck in corners. You don't want to peep out too far because there's a lot of angles from the outwards going inwards that can catch you out. As well as there are three entryways into sight if you count both doors of split, but there's not going to be enough people to watch it as Control Freak takes off the head of Toddy, leaving it all up to DK and a 1v5 clutch potential, but it's going to be too big of a mountain to climb as Revenant starts off once again with a flawless round coming out. But this time on the attack of Theme Park, as the Ash just sprints in and takes out the Kai, the roam clear was completely solid. Everything was almost perfect to a T on that first Revenant attack. And we're going to have to see Intense try to hold on to the upstairs just a little bit better and not die as quickly. Maybe get a couple picks going on your side as well, as there was the potential for some of these gunfights to be won. But the attackers just had a little bit more confidence and a little bit better aim, just barely able to edge out the defenders that were upstairs. We're seeing the full roam strat. It didn't work that time, but it still does have the potential to work. And I'm I'm a believer in intent. Attackers right now. need to locate and defuse as many. Once as that they can. first kill went down, once Neo found that first opening pick on the I believe it was freezing, I could be mistaken. It was just a snowball effect from there because the way Revenant attacked was that it went, all things considered, really slow. And each kill that went by, they just ramped up the tempo again and again until it just became way, way too much for Intense's side. And, you know, even after that first kill, I would say, or I guess after Neo's first double kill, it became a little too much for them, I think. And they were just overpowered pretty much by brute force alone bringing it to a flawless win with the prep phase ending we're seeing throne come out again and i'm really skeptical about this one you know throne is probably the easiest site to defend on team heart but if it didn't work out in a flawless first win i don't really know how much of a difference a second one's going to make unless they all turtle onto the site i mean it was just the way that intense lost that round was just not being able to win the gunfights and that's something that can change round to round in very very quick succession just as easily as revenant got a flawless round we could see a flawless round come out of intense just swinging back the other way but there's a very similar roam presence through both a meeting room or waiting room as well as initiation and office Kirk Knight is over there with the mute of freezing and yikel is going to keep on you holding that ACOG with that M762, trying to see if anybody gets a little bit over aggressive on the peak. The drone work is going to come out as they find the locations of these aforementioned roamers. Neo's going to start swinging in towards the bathroom of office and try to find out the player in vault who is now rotated behind the wall. Actually going to fall all the way back into vault once again, trying to stay safe inside that location. But the entry team of Yikel and Neo is going to have something to say about that, but the crossfire is too strong as I use picks up. Yikel and Kryptonite finishes off Neo. TK is going to get a nitro kill onto Ven over the wall, and just like that, Intense springs to life and leaves it all up to control freaking Dubby. Suddenly, as a Revenant player, you are freaking out. One is completely stuck inside the office Jackers ball, and there's no real way of moving around. Suddenly, you're stuck in off. I'm sorry, you're in the castle entrance. You died in office wall. And you have no way of really entering the site. You entered a little bit, and it was just an absolute mow down. Flawless against another back-to-back -back opposite flawless of the both teams. 
so far in theme park this has been a very decisive match it's hard to say who's playing better than the other that's not to say you know just because it's one to one but because both teams have gotten a flawless win against each other back to back hey keg what's up you remember when i said i could just go right back to a flawless the other direction i feel <laughs> proud of that one whatever man well yeah let's see it happen again huh uh, this one is going to be <laughs> intense. Is going to take the round with two people left alive. Two people left alive. Yeah. I like the way you think. Let's see it happen though, because we are moving away from throne into bunk and daycare. Now this could be a much more saucy site because it's smaller, it's more compact, and there's a lot more room Attack for hard reach potential uh, in initiation. Can. So if we see intense play this right, we could. You know, of course, see another flawless win, but we might also need to see Revenant play a different site. I'm sorry, enter from a different area that's not cast dash because they entered the same way twice in a row. There's a lot of growth potential on this map, and Intense just took advantage of it, just lined them up one after another, and just bang, 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 killed them all. Yeah, it's just winning those gunfights is how this map has panned out so far. There's going to be a roam presence on nearly every site. If we were going to see any turtle strats, it probably would have came out on the room, room, but we haven't seen that so far. So there's going to be a nice horizontal extended push over as the mute drones over. Tries to block all of that intel on that eastern side of the map, where most likely it's shaping up to be that side of the push once again. On this site, there's you sort of have two options. You have either take control of cafe or take control of waiting and cash and initiation on that other side of the map and it does seem as if a revenant is more comfortable continually pushing this back side as cafe can be a little bit of a death trap neil looking for those pre-fires through any kind of wall this is the same area where they were mowed down in cold blood last round but it looks like it's a much more dialed back defense this time they don't want to show all their cards right away on intense's side if they went for the same strat twice in a row, that could be another flawless against them. Now the real match has begun. Both of them have gotten their flawlesses out of the way, all of their aggression. And I would say now we're seeing the beginning of the real match. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit closer coming out as both of these teams have traded punches. Neo seems to know that there's somebody over towards this vault area, and TK is going to get his head popped off, but he is going to get a like, quick little refresh on the Yai Kill. Oh! As more and more shots go out, Neo's going to pick up his second kill and continue the pain train as the Ash flies Thank in God. with that high fire rate. R4C and right punishes back. anybody to beat them. Ven is also over over in control room, and there is a player thrown over a towards that located. side of the map. His location might not be known quite as well, but Neo's going up towards yellow stairs. is going to be trying to push over towards this wooden block, but the wall is open and freezing. is going to punish the lack of intel with the 81 bullets of the all. That's obviously going to get a quick pick back onto Toddy, leaving at a 2v3 situation with a minute left. Now, keep in mind, every round where Neo has gotten a kill has been, at the very least, been a double kill. At least in Watch Theme Park, I want to extend that to Cafe as well, but I could be wrong. 3v2, you're at a man disadvantage on the defense. Control Freak pushing up, waiting to get those pre-fires. Not going to find a lot of action, but the diffusers needs to be planted on B. Ben takes some damage inside of Initiation, but not able to really follow it up too well. Could be the head of freezing being found from control freak beautiful peek into the headshot and now kryptonite's the last one in a 1v3 kryptonite does have some options he's waiting around to see who's gonna rotate through office and what peekaboo both of them are on each side of you control freak with a double kill taking down kryptonite and that is gonna be good night to round three in revenant's favor yeah control freak hit two insane shots right there. that there's somebody that over shot onto the board nice sure vault was. area and tk is going to get For his head popped off but he's going to get a little quick little 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 as more and more shots go out oh, to it. eh, dad jokes have to come out see dab sounds like see dad 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 jokes it, it comes with the territory I oh start it all the makes sense now. Through this. i figured it out well it's time to retire no nah, i'm just kidding i'm still here but we are going from lab to storage now.
Now, lab and storage. I don't know about you, C-Dimes, but this this is a really bad site. This is a rough site for the defense to be on. They realized throwing was not really much of an option for them. And that's really all you can play on this site. You don't want to go initiation because that is another rough site as well, especially with the attackers just dropping down from hatch and probably running you over really quickly. And so you're stuck with lab. And lab it doesn't really have too many vertical options, all things considered. It does have some, but it's mostly a horizontal map where you need a horizontal push. Remaining. Now keep in mind the old lab from Old Cafe, you had to push from the small little window on the western side. And there's no hatch anymore as well, so you can't drop the hatch. Yeah, that was one of the main issues with the old drug lag, but once you have the rework, it has actually become a little bit more of a favored site on the competitive scene and it is interesting to see that it's being brought out here some teams would have liked to bang their head against the wall and try to get um bunk to work but NT intense is just gonna be a little bit smart take a step back and understand that there are three and possibly even four viable sites on this map and they're gonna keep on throwing at the wall and seeing what sticks but what has been sticking so far is Neo on this entry, picking up five kills in the first three rounds. Definitely doing his role quite effectively, if I do have to say so myself, as well as Yikil on this second entry, just trying to get the refrags and trying to find out where all of these roamers are. But on the top floor, there are none so far, and the drones are going to sort of reinforce that idea that they can start going for the vertical control if they do believe so. But freezing, I believe, on the Jaeger is rotating up the arcade stairs, and his location might not be known. Actually, yes, it will. Neo's going to get an entry once again and start barreling his way over towards barrels in the bottom of arcade. And that's where another player is going to be in, as there's a nice long angle coming out of TA, trying to hold with the TCSG, the slug shotgun that can just take away so much damage in the right hands. The right hands is most important right now. You lost freezing already, and again, freezing carrying over from cafe, just being taken down immediately at first. Not the best roamer, in my opinion. Well, his roaming game is really good, but just his positioning has been kind of lackluster against Revenants. TK does find a kill onto Neo, and it's going to be a possible follow up as well. He extends himself into barrels. But it looks like Yaiko going down doesn't quite go to too much fruitful killing this. But Vent takes down Ayas as well, and the follow-up might be there again as well. Don't see... I don't see TK following up against that though, and Ven opening up bathroom. Suddenly the site is looking unbelievably clear. You really only have Kryptonite on site it looks like. Or no, I apologize, that's Cody. Cody gonna be a little premature on that smoke grenade. Pre-fire through the wall, gonna be getting a little bit of action onto Ven it looks like. And so it looks like right now Intense might be wanting to play not so much for the retake I thought they were going to go for, but the pre-fire through the wall is going to be Yigel taking down Kryptonite and suddenly you have two of your anchors left alive. 20 seconds left on the clock. Through the cocaine, you find that Toadie has the rotate and it could be another smoke grenade going down. He still has one left, I believe. He gets the pre-fire through the smoke, taking down Ben. 2v2, the C4 takes down Yikes. And that is going to be five seconds left and suddenly a really good situation for Revenant. Bringing it to a 2-2. Two -two. A surprisingly close round, bringing it to a victory on Intense's side. Looking like it's not going to be as easy of a round or a map as Revan maybe had thought. Yeah, taking the lead back for and or tying it back up is huge for them as you want to continue to chain together these defensive rounds into a way that helps you not only build momentum, but a sizable lead that you're able to continue building and trying to demoralize the other team as they switch onto their defense. Maybe they won't have as much confidence, but ultimately having a 2v4 clutch is going to do wonders for the momentum. And there wouldn't have been any two operators on that lineup that I would have rather had than the Kaid with the nitro cell and the smoke with all three canisters in the back pocket. It was absolutely perfectly executed by, I think it was Tati on the smoke, getting, I think, two or three kills with Attack the SMG-11, throwing out those smoke canisters, can. disorienting anybody and making them off as they sprinted their way into sight, weakening them up for those close quarter engagements that the SMG-11 really shines in. And that's ultimately led to a full round win on the side of Intense and tying up the score. 
But with that, we're going to be going back downstairs to Throne Room, which has been the most interesting site so far in this map. It has been won once and lost once. Both flawless. times, either an attacking flawless or a defensive flawless. Ten seconds to yeah. Insertion. Throne Room has been very interesting so far. Five seconds left. Really, if anything, controversial because both teams were flawlessly won Attackers against on this site. And barely even had the site played at all. It was mostly all upstairs where the action was going through. The castle is off again. It's going to be mostly Toady on the castle barricades just outside of the site. Not really going for any kind of attacking restrictions, it looks like. Then again, with Castle on a vertical plate like Throne Room, there's not a whole lot you can really put the Castle on. You can maybe divide off Bathroom like you see there with Neo, or maybe even from Cash Dash going out. But again, there's not a lot of options you really have. We do see one upstairs in the main hallway, and that's going to be dividing off Office. And we do have Kryptonite holding into Vault. Now, Kryptonite can get this kill. This is going to be huge because not only would Neo go down, but Yigel would as well. It's a waiting game right now, but Neo goes down from the C4. That had to have been from below. Yes, it was from below. That would have been TK, and that means they're spotted out. Neo wants to go in for the kill now. Follow up against on Yigel, but it's just a standoff between the two players. Standing still, stoic, not really showing a whole lot of movement on either side. A story is being built up here. Crypt uh, uh, Kryptonite does have the bullet hole, and Yigel doesn't seem to want to push it. He seems to have the sixth sense of knowing that pushing that area would not be a good idea. Now, the rest of the team do have the Maverick holes. They do have the hard breach, and they are looking in the office to see where this potential roamer could be. Kryptonite, though, has that bullet hole or punch hole. I'm not really sure once again. The grenade's going to go through, but not connect too much gonna use another one that's gonna be the bullets coming out they know someone's there they just don't know exactly where he is that's gonna be the rotation movement that's gonna be the Zofia concussions going down Neil rotates over to his left side it looks like and that's the actually no never mind Ayas rotates around they must have thought maybe that defender was Ayas and no they both rotate out to safety so much time has been lost on the single engagement without any damage or really bodies being traded back and forth with 56 seconds left, that Diffuser needs to go downstairs and attack maybe one of the most defender-sided uh, sites, again, in all of Siege, just like Bar and Cocktail. Yeah, Freezing has made himself in a, put himself in quite a great position inside of Initiation. He can get a really, really, really nice flank if these defender attackers do forget about him, as well as Kryptonite is over towards Arcade and still in a quite dangerous position. Time is continually dwindling down as the switch hatch does get open. Ben is going to go ahead and rotate down yellow stairs and start putting pressure over towards the bathroom side. And that's where Ayes is just laying in wake. He could swing out and catch out the, the sledge as the proximity alarm does go off. He's going to start slowly, slowly peeking. And we'll find the Maverick, but the Maverick says no. Shuts the doors, control free, picks up one. PKs is going to get the refrag onto Ben and pick up another one with two headshots onto control free. Yaiko's going to pick up freezing, but it's a little bit too little too late as Intense's defense was too strong and they finally take the lead on defense at a scoreline of three to two. A beautiful lead so far for Intense. They've really woken up this map and have brought it back. Keep in mind, Theme Park was Intense's choice. Revenant had a really strong start, but it looks like they've fallen off a little bit. This could go to map three, and I believe map three, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, was Revenant's choice. Now, we are going to Clubhouse. Well, I mean, I guess all things considered, it was the last one available. So all the through the picks and bands, it might be what we've seen so far. I would say the third map is probably Revenant's favor. Just because it's structured, just like Cafe was. And Theme Park is there to an extent as well. But the initial entryway that the teams can use is just a lot more limited. Now, a 3v2, like you said, we will be returning, I believe, to Bunks. I didn't quite see where we were going. And I believe it's going to be Bunks if I had to guess correctly. And what do you know? It is Bunks. Now, this was a divisive site between the two teams. I believe it allowed Intense to get that initial tie between the two teams. Now it's just a matter of keeping and holding on to this as possible and just hoping that your attack side can work just as well. Yeah, really the round that Revenant won on this site came off of the back of Neo. I think he got three entry, entry frags and then the Maverick of Control Freak picked up the rest of the scraps. 
Ten but that initial remaining. aggression coming out of the Ash, paving the way for the rest of the team to follow Five in behind, taking that map control, utilizing the utility, and just continuously taking operators off the board was a, a good amount of aggression that Intense was not quite ready for. But this time they have the Goya Wamai oh Jaeger combo in the back pocket, and that's going to be trying to slow down the speed that the Ash and Zofia combination has been really powering through on the Revenant attack. And if they are able to win this round, they're going to be in a lot better of a position at a lead of 4 2, typically what you would expect, as we say. The 4 2 split's probably the most common for any defensive side in this entire game of Rainbow Six Siege. And that's the magic number that Intense is going to be trying to get towards, as there's a whole lot of rotation holes and fluidity on the side of the Intense defense. As the Goyo is over towards Waiting Room, hiding behind one of the shields, the drones are probably going to spot him out as quickly as they can. And they're going to have to start sponging away this utility and wiping it off the board if they want to get any sort of smart oh, But speaking of that, Neo's going to take out TK, taking down the Goyo from behind. But the bullet holes are not going to be able to find the refrag onto Neo as Ayus also takes about 25% damage for that endeavor. Neo has lost a little bit more health on his side as Ayus has fallen back towards the yellow stairs. But Jerome's going to spot him out, but he's going to take that out in a quick fashion as the flashbang tries to go through the rotate hole and the wall bang is not quite successful enough onto the Wamai playing over towards the wooden box. Mew Jammers are going to get taken out by Yaiko as they take office and initiation control, trying to push out the player over on that back half wall of that area. That's the mute as well as there is a rotate hole in the site if they're able to take initiation control, but that's going to be easier said than done with only about a minute left. Easier said than done is Revenant's middle name, though. Oh, Taking down TK it. already, it's going to be a close call, it looks like, for this match because there's only a minute left, and you're just so close to reaching that bomb site. Initiation, though, is being held by so many different defenders. Ven takes down Kryptonite, and that rotate hole is there, but is it bait? Is it bait? Why, well, yes, it is bait because Tony takes down Control Freak, and suddenly Ayo's takes down Neo as well. 3v3 right now. They, the defenders need to hold on and turtle in the site as much as they can for the next 40 seconds, but Tony wants to play the aggressive and takes down Ven. Now it's not looking great right now for Yike. He is completely stuck. Two different bodies watching his angles right now. And that's freezing, taking down Yike as well. Dubby, last one alive, needs to figure out exactly what he wants to do. There's 20 seconds left. He can try to rotate around on his left into from initiation into bunk, but there's bodies watching it. To his right, we have uh, the Maestro. We have freezing on Maestro. And again, to his left is Toady waiting for that rotate as well. He realizes there's not much that can be done. He wants to take down at least one body. He finds Toady. And that will be the end of the round, unfortunately. And looks like no other bodies being traded Operator, across the board. Intense again with a two-round lead over Revenant. We will be going to the second half now where Intense on the attack needs to bring it back. Keep in mind, went on Cafe before. Intense didn't have the best attack, but hopefully because it's their map, they know exactly what they need to do. And it's Revenant's choice as a defender to really bring it back. Yeah, and we'll be going straight on into Armory and Throne Room, and I'm excited to see the difference in the potential play styles of these two teams. We're going to see a Vigil and Mozzie combination, as well as the Legion really leading me towards believing that there's going to be a whole lot of upstairs presence, just as we saw on the intense side of this bomb site defense. The Jaegers and the Maestro are going to be probably just sticking their utility on site and trying to hold on. We could potentially see four people up top with just one in the site, but the main glaring need to locate and really the issue I have, the only thing I can see with this lineup, is that there is no anti-breach on the side of Revenant defense. And with three main walls over towards maintenance, barrels, and yellow stairs as a gigantic the choke points and entryways in the site, those being unprotected could be very, very bad if Intense is able to get a read on the Operator lineup with their drone work off of this initial prep phase. However, they do only have one hard breach on the side of Intense in Taki on the Thermite. It would have been maybe a little bit more interesting to see a Havana as well, but 
TK has picked up the Cali, so they most likely do definitely want to get a breach open if you're bringing the Thatcher replacement with the operator, with the sniper. Beginning of round seven on the second half will be very decisive for both teams. If Revenant brings this all the way home, we are done for the night because that will be a 2-0. Kryptonite already making his way onto top of castle entrance. You know, I never really realized, like, I know the name of the callout, but it's a castle? That's crazy to me. I don't know, the whole theme park you just lay out, and the idea of what it is, it's just so bonkers to me. But we have Kryptonite holding that bullet hole all the way through towards the other side of control room. Not gonna find a lot. Freezing, though, taking down Neo. And that is gonna be a big first kill. Again, it's always between Freezing and Neo. Every single round, it's between those two. Now, with that yeah. being said, holding on to Throne, we're seeing a very roam heavy presence. Again, they either wanna play for the retank or just take down the attackers in their tracks. There's no real reason to hold on to the site if you don't have to, because they're not gonna allow any way for them to sneak onto the site. Nico already looking like they found some action going on to Ayas, and that's gonna be ay ay ay. Ayo's going down as well. 4v4 between the two teams. It's going to be a matter of how they can push this site. And it's looking like every possible way to get onto Throne Room is just being cut off completely. But the upstairs is seemingly clearer right now for the attackers to do whatever they want. The defenders are struggling a lot. It's going to be a matter of what they can do now. Now, Yaiko is going to be trapped inside the bathroom. He has no real ways of rotating without running into what seems to be the Kali and the spikes now he could rotate around in arcade and maybe make his way back on the site but that's going to take forever the vertical plays in effect as well kryptonite trying to find some action on the odd uh, w i believe but they're going to move away and rotate away very quickly it's a stalemate once again c daps yaiko goes for the run out and that's a very risky move he's not going to find a lot and now he's been telegraphed exactly where he's at and it's gonna be tk no never mind tk finds him but yaiko goes in immediately takes them down into a double kill three k's three kills so far for yike so far and he is playing this fantastically 30 seconds left he's wasting so much of the attacker's time he's doing such a good job now suddenly toady has no idea what to do toady's by himself with the diffuser but kryptonite not too separated away 20 seconds left on the clock it's gonna be a matter of what you want to do next again a slow stalemate Yaikel doesn't need to really push up at all if he doesn't want to. Kryptonite needs to rotate at some point or another onto the site, and Yaikel is going to be there in the bullet hole watching, and that is going to be... No, Yaikel doesn't go for the kill just yet. Tony, though, tries to find that way onto the throne room. Not going to find it. Diffuser goes down, and that's Kryptonite going for the save. Yaikel going down at the very last second. Revenant, first round on the defense, brings it back home to a 4-3. I'm sorry, a 3-4. Yeah, and it was a really good defense coming out of Revenant as they were able to show a whole lot of pressure on that top side with the roam, but ultimately falling back at just the right time for the in intense attackers to feel a little bit safe. But that's when the Mozzie went on an absolute rampage inside a bathroom and drug lab, just running in and out of doorways, running out of the bathroom, jumping back in, getting two kills, flying all over the place, and just that unpredictability that Yaikel brought on the Mozzie is going to be brought once again. Actually, as soon as I talk about it, he's going to sixth pick off of it as initiation room and office is being brought for the first time this map. This is going to be the site that we didn't Attackers see intense employ onto their side, but Revenant wants it for their defensive round. It is a very interesting site as the complete opposite of the bunk and bedroom bomb site. It's just separated by one wall, but with how the map is structured, it's going to really force a traditional backside push as opposed to letting... The way Revenant was able to attack on the bomb site picks is they had almost the same entry for every single site. They went through cash room, they roamed clear, they pushed onto site. But by going initiation office, 
Revenant Five is forcing and tends to go over towards the western side of the map, over towards Arcade and Cafe. Attackers objective and is to locate since that and part of the map really wasn't played a whole lot on the defensive side, it might catch and tends off guard as they aren't really familiar with that side, as this map probably hasn't been scrimmed a whole lot in their little repertoire. However, just as I say that, Kryptonite's going to be propelling up to the roof, going to start some droning, and we might actually just see a straight-up control drop breach kind of attack over towards this eastern side of the map. Eyes is going to start breaking his way inside the cash room with a drone right in front of him, feeding him all the intel he wants on his team, trying to get that initial pick that has been so important in this series so far. A very slow attack in the beginning. It is speeding up. We do have Ayas rotating around in Dragon Stairs, looking around in Control Room. Like you said, probably a Control, not quite the drop, but pushing from Control. The smoke grenade goes down, and no one is inside Initiation. Ven does rotate in, however, but it looks like the focus isn't quite there. It's inside Bunk. Now the rotates in the Bunk can easily be opened up, and the wall bank potential is also really intense. Now it's going to be a matter if Ayas can find his next kill. He finds a little bit of damage onto Yaigo, but not enough there to secure the kill. Flash grenade goes down. That could be the chance for Yaigo to get not only heal, but also get away with his life. But no, Yaigo wants to keep going for it. Just toying with the um, Ayas as much as he can. Yaigo's not able to get that secured round. He is just too far away, but that's going to be doubly taking down freezing from somewhere. And that is going to be two operators, two attackers stuck in the corner. I just let's go down. They can get up by themselves. Well, that is Zofia's special ability that you don't see too often. But the revive is still there. Oh, no, she does get up from the... by herself. What intensity. My God. And that's the Ayas pushing it back a little bit because the entire team is inside control room. Yaiko gets the magical headshot onto Ayas. And that is going to be a beautiful first hit. But is it going to be enough? Two of the attackers are, yeah, two of the attackers are down. All the defenders are on the board. This could be Revenant's chance to bring it to a 4v4. But with this, some um, ADS are going to catch oh the initial frag grenade of Conti, trying to maybe get a free kill or deny any utility over on that side. Well, Mai's going to be throwing a magnet over towards the top of waiting room as the rest of these attackers start flooding in from cash stack kryptonite has rotated off of control over towards this area as toddy's gonna get a kill on to neo dropping off the wamai making sure no more of those gadgets get deployed and as well as taking a very strong gun off of right here but ven and control freak have a nice crossfire as a whole flurry of kills goes down tk gets one but not only gets one but he gets two but the time is continuously dwindling he's in a crossfire situation as talk hits triple zeros he's not able to get the diffuser down as revenant wins another chaotic defense and slowly 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 cuts the lead away chaotic is the best way to put it c daps at first it was pretty slow then the buildup started happening inside a control room and the attackers just were not able to rotate whatsoever kryptonite and a um yeah aos were just completely stuck in a corner from yikel and they were having no opportunities to rotate and that's after freezing again taking down first from what was seemingly the flank but that wasn't really that wasn't really approached on that wasn't really followed up at all but that allowed the attacking team to rotate around through cash dash and maybe find some action but unfortunately it seemed like that plan should have gone down right at the zero mark but just in the end being unlucky and not getting that initiated start and with that being said it's 4v4 it's even across the board in map two between these two teams intense has woken up but can they still keep themselves awake they're gonna need a lot of mental coffee right now because their attack has not been very good at all. In fact, they haven't won a single attack so far. But anything can change with Seed. It's the beauty of this game that we Attackers love to play, the cast, of a and a watch where anything can happen. No team is out of it. And all that matters is you can just, you can just hit heads and win rounds. But so far that hasn't been able to, to fall into intensity into their crosshairs, I guess, Five if you want to go remaining. that way. But what's really interesting is Control Freak, who has been quite a prolific fragging force, is actually on the clash for Revenant on their defense. It, they, 
the Revenant defenders seem to have gotten a nice read onto how Intense wants to attack every single bomb site from that cash room side. So sticking the clash in there is gonna act as a just gigantic drone on the defensive side, feeding Intel and denying any easy, easy map control that the initial entries of Ayas and most likely Tati will be trying to take. 4v4 right now, the cash room push is in effect once again. It's really the best way you can attack on the theme park. That's going to be the back. Castle Barricade dividing most of the sites down. And already, Aya is playing too aggressively. That is going to be, I, I believe, yeah, that's Vem getting the, uh, I'm sorry, I don't believe the points are on. So he doesn't realize that there's an injured down. Cody wants to go in for the revive, but unfortunately, it's just way too risky. Or they're baiting Aya's out right now and it's just not a comfortable situation to be in that thermite charge has gone off inside office that's gonna be a huge line of sight the pre-fire goes down but not gonna find any action i don't know how you feel about this cdaps but i don't like the cali pick here it's awkward to say the very least but i, I mean i just don't think there's really much use for her utility other than that's her being banned you having to use it to open up those castle barricades you can't use her primary really at all on this map yeah, it's, there aren't insane amounts of long lines of sights that Cali Sniper Rifle really lends quite advantageous to bring. But that secondary still does have a very similar time to kill as the F2. So it definitely packs a punch in a small package. But just like this, Yigo's going to keep on peeking out and get punished for a little bit of over-aggression. As he goes down to about one shot, you could sneeze on him and he will fall to the ground. But with only 50 seconds left, everybody is still left alive and there is a clash back on site for the size of Revenant. This is going to be a very thrilling end to this round as there's probably going to be a gigantic flurry as the aggression comes out. Dubby's going to get a kill onto Ayaz opening up the frag party and this really? could be the plug coming out of the funnel as Dubby picks up another one onto Toddy as Neo also gets his hat in the bag, takes out Freezak with the shotgun, the picks up another one onto Kryptonite and it's left all up to TK. One against five, and the world is falling back on his shoulders as the flank is coming out. He's getting shot from every angle, trying to make an escape out Ooh. through the window, but it's not going to be enough as Neo secures the flawless round for Revenant. Now, keep in mind, this is not the flawless round we've seen from Revenant, and it's not the flawless round we've seen from either team on Theme Park, but Revenant getting one flawless round, so far at least, on each half of Theme Park. Now, keep in mind, Rev Theme Park was not Revenant's choice, and so them getting a double flawless so far, first of all, is almost unheard of in any league. But, you know, ESA Rivals is a great place to see those flawless wins come out. But overall, just wow. Fantastic work so far. And they're really showing intense that just because, you know, you're on attack and this is your map choice doesn't mean you know what you're doing at all. We've seen both teams go for the same exact attack pattern where they play a little slow then fast, then dial it back, and then, in the case of the last round, just try to skedaddle and get out of there as quick as they can. Attackers but that initial skirmish between them and I believe that was the Ash pick on Ayus, it's just yikes. That was slowed down all the aggression that Intense had for Attackers so long. The location of a bomb. Yeah, and with their ability now to go back downstairs to Throne Armory Room, Revenant is eyeing towards the end of this map and potentially pushing map point and series point if they continue this dominance on defense that we've seen so far. This is three in a row as they completed the full site trilogy as they were able to just continue winning and taking back the lead from being down four to two at the defensive split. We're gonna see a very similar roam presence coming out of Revenant once again, as Neo is gonna start taking out drones, making it quite evident that Intense wants to push this east side of the map once again. There's going to be a whole lot of pushback coming out of these defenders on their roam, trying to hold on to deep onto that map control upstairs for as long as possible. But if Revenant plays it in a similar fashion to how they played last round, they were able to show face, get a pick or two, continue to make the attackers fear their presence, and then rotate back away and continue killing time. 
However, Ayaz is actually read into the style of the Revenant Roam and is starting to push the backside, trying to get a nice pinch and possible crossfire. But Kryptonite is going to get the first pick onto Neo as the Vigil might have been invisible on drones, but able to be seen by the barrel of the gun of the Thermite and his head will get taken off. And most of the Roam presence from Revenant is gone in one fell swoop. That Rome presence is gone, but there still leaves to be the entire bomb site for Intense to take over. And that could be really, really difficult on Throne Room and Armory, especially. You know, the Rome presence is really important. Yikel taking down the C4 on Ayas. Two of the most hardest names to pronounce on both teams, taking each other down once again. But the vertical play is really where it's at. That's all you can really do as the attackers here. And it seems like... W trying to find some um, shots off onto Freezing. Again, Freezing just seems to be a kill magnet, but W completely ignoring where Tony was sludging and or hammering down from. Maybe not able to hear, but it doesn't seem like they were able to connect or retrade that at all. And so far, it's looking like it's a bit of a stalemate right now. I think the gears are trying to go through intense attack. They're really trying to figure out, while trying to get some kills, what they can do to get a horizontal play down to take over the site. They can go for the roam clear. They have the ability to do so, but they've already lost Ayaz, and he seems well, to be a really good running and gunner. Not going to really happen now. Yikel's still on the board. With that, Mozzie is a really good option for just that roam clear, but he's going to be hiding on site right now. TK looking down in RK to see what he can do. There are people, nope, playing inside chemistry. Yigel taking down TK again, running and gunning to the very definition. Now the drone's going to spot him out, but is that going to be enough? The answer's probably no. He's going to rotate out into barrels. With 20 seconds left, these attackers need to make their way down. The horizontal push is out, but Yigel's ready and waiting for Freezing to come back on over. Freezing though, looking around inside of chemistry, not going to find a whole lot. Kryptonite opening up, or well, attempted to open up the wall going into Throne, but unfortunately no impact rate happening. Freeze takes down Yike. Is that going to be enough? Two seconds left. That diffuser is nowhere near the spawn. That's going to be Revenant bringing to match point on their team. Yikes! So the attack had the... They got a good amount of control in a quick fashion. But as soon as that Nitro Cell kill came out of the Mozzie, it's really hard to try to refrag. Over, a bit of and that could be really, At that really point, difficult you didn't on know the exact location. Rome of the and Armory, and especially. You know, the world presence is really Talent important. Yaikel taking down. And Yaikel has just continued to prove that he is a very, very strung roamer on that side of the map. And at this point, you sort of need to steer clear of that area because he's so unpredictable in his exact location, as well as Intense was just not able to get close enough to the site with enough time as they were able to get a good amount of vertical pressure. It wasn't in the correct spots to effectively deny the impact trick coming out of the Legion as he sort of both rounds on the throne armory defense was able Attackers to stop to the breach on yellow bomb. and just completely stalemate out the intense attack unfortunately for them but with being on match point this is intense with their backs against the wall the entire series rides on this round potentially as it is a lose and you go home and they will have to try to take initiation office and if you're trying to take from cash room and control like they did last time, it is a very, very difficult take because of where the site is located. You're not only going to be running into roamers that want to push over to left. where you're making it evident of your push, as well as you're going to be running Five into the anchors for the superior Three weapons and angles that just are going to make sure you don't easily get into the site. You're absolutely right. It's going to be really rough for Intense here. This is going to be one of the hardest rounds of their lives. The series rides on this as well. Revenant, having that two-point lead, keep in mind the first half was 4-2 in Intense's favor, and Revenant have not lost a game since the half started. It's match point right now. They need to figure out exactly what they want to do. It's going to be a control push, it looks like. Toadie right now looking around, trying to find any of those initial roamers. Not going to find a whole lot. 
and it's gonna be a cash dash push as well now this is a split push coming out from the attacking team that's probably their best option but control freak's already ready on that mute his smg 11 is absolutely nasty and it's gonna be a mass it's gonna be a matter of seeing will this work out and i i don't know it, i don't think it will i really don't see dabs ao is with the jackal pick though switching over from the usual ash the Finding the footprints might help out a little bit, Activating but typically drones. we're not going to see too much of a heavy roam presence Attackers on the site. It'll be good for the late game and spotting out enemies if they have the man advantage, but right now it's looking like every defender's in predictable spots. Located. It's just a matter of winning out those gunfights. Now, here's the thing though. Control Freak is playing a very interesting game. He's pushing up very intensely and taking down Kryptonite. The fuse are already going down. That thermite charge goes down, but Dummy following up taking out AOs, but that's going to be... TK Reloading. finally taking down Control Freak before he puts down any more damage. That's Attackers just the yikes all around, though. It's going to be the man disadvantage again for Intense. Can they bring it back, C-Dabs? You know, everything could be in the cards, as a 4v3 isn't necessarily the best lead you want to have. But Yaiko is creeping up inside of Control and could find out a player on his drone. But with him being spotted, he's just going to retreat. Titan and play a little bit more passive. Dubby's gonna get a nice shot onto TK, but Freezing's gonna find Neo, leaving it to a 2v3. Freezing is on a little bit less HP as they have access into sight, but they cannot contest with Dubby's insane long Attackers angle. He has the ACOG and he's just tap, tap, tapping away and trying to pick off the heads of the attackers, but Toddy manages to find his way through and he's gonna start tapping on the diffuser as well as Attackers with Freezing cutting off all these flanks. That's where Yaiko is gonna be going, making a punch hole here, trying to really play some mind Reloading. games over towards the players over on Vault. It is a retake position, with the man advantage, but it is not an advantageous position, especially when Freezing picks up one, but he's gonna be traded back to Yaikil, as it's all up to Toddy, who's on full HP. He's gonna pick up one onto Yaikil, leaving it to the 1v1 clutch potential. Both Ven and Toddy are very weak, but time is continuing to dwindle away as he has to defuse the defuser. He only has about seven seconds to find this kill, and with Toddy playing very passively inside a bathroom, it might not fight, but he's gonna get the kill. Is he gonna have time here? He's it gonna does seem as if he has oh. it. Oh my god, Ven with that final kill into the diffuse with milliseconds. No. Wow! How? I think I, I want to see somebody clip that, please, and just put it in general a screenshot of where it was. He did have it, he had like a full second. No, oh. I think he, I don't think he had it by like maybe 0.2 or 0.3. That was insanely close. Oh, the biggest disappointment. For what revenant. a clutch. What a clutch coming wow. out of the intense boys. Nothing is over. Nothing's over till the it's last over. second hits. And right here, intense smells the blood in the water. And they can force overtime and potentially go back. Actually, I need to look it up. I think Revenant might have the defensive side in overtime, which would be quite unfortunate with how the map is panning out to be quite defender sided. But that's attackers the way map bands work. Typically, you get defense on regulation. Then you have to attack in overtime. So every single every single round on defense is just so important. And that's what we're seeing particularly come out. As now Intense is going to have to try to take the bedroom site of Bunk. It's not going to be easy as they definitely stalled out just a little bit last time. They were a little bit too slow trying to get this horizontal clear of all these players playing over towards office and initiation. Control Freak is on the clash once again with the Goyo of Dubby being able to place down those shields that effectively act as smoke grenades to deny any entry as well as Neo has brought the British operator who is more Attackers than willing to share team. what's inside Attackers the canister the as soon as he clicks his gadget button and just Attackers continue to kill more and more time away. And that has really been the main struggle of Intense as they haven't been able to effectively get into the sites without a very, very desperate, almost last second push. We have seen them able to push in effectively with oh, no. crunch time here. But Ayaz is going to be taking out the barbed wire and almost gets peeked out by the clash. But it's going to be a little bit more of a passive play from Control Freak as he has teamed up with Neo inside of Initiation behind the half wall. Freezing is going to be placing down those track singers, making sure nobody comes up 
the dragon stairs without making a whole lot of noise or taking a whole lot of damage. This looks like a challenge and a half already for the attackers. The clash is on the board, everything important's castled off, and the bullet hole is in effect for Ven, but Ven needs to just look over on the left side a little bit. He's thrown down and the bullets are coming out, rotating just in time. Now it's a matter of what are they gonna do about those castle barricades? What are they gonna do about that clash? That might be the first time I've successfully seen the, um, the proximity alarm go out and do something, leading to some bullets being, you know, one bullet hitting against the sledge. But is it going to be enough? Probably not. Now, how do you attack this site? That's the a million dollar question. Io's right now looking around for Arcade and Cafe to see what he can do. But through the bullet holes on that barricade, not going to find a whole lot of effect either. It's it's a stalemate right now. Time is ticking down. They're already halfway through. And that's going to be Freezing finding Ven already. That's going to be a really important opening pick for Freezing as well. Sorry, for Intense as well. The Kali's already out against the um, against the Clash. Now keep in mind, Kali's sniper can knock back, ooh, excuse me, knock back Clash's shield and make her go a little disoriented. That could allow a good kill opportunity. This is the first round where I think it's been a really, really good option to have exactly. Clash. Though it's been a good option most of the time with the Zof uh, I'm sorry, with the uh, castle barricades going down as well. The B-Sight's being held with an Iron Fist. Dummies have A-Sight, and the Clash on a Control Freak is holding down B along with Neo on Smoke. Smoke and Clash is a deadly combination, especially with that 30-second mark coming out. Each Smoke grenade lasts 10 seconds, and that's going to be 30 seconds of pop. I'm sorry, 10 seconds of pop right there. That's the rest of the match without that Diffuser going down. Keep in mind, however, we do have the man advantage on Intense's side. If they don't win this round, there's no overtime for before Neo takes the wall with the back and forth. Freezing refrag from the Neo. The Clash goes. No, the Clash does not go down now. The Clash goes down. Ayas with a double kill. And Yaiko is the last one alive, but that Diffuser does go down. But where is it? Where is that Diffuser? Can you beat the timer? No, you cannot. It's a 1v2. They know exactly where he is, and that's going to be Intense. Bring it to overtime in map two against all odds, bringing it back 4 6 to a 6 6 tie. And that's a very, very, very good round for Intense, as they actually do have the defensive side, which I was incorrect on, which is actually huge and really breathes a nice breath of fresh air onto them as they not only get to have the advantageous position, but they're going to continue to roll with the momentum of two straight attacking wins. It is interesting to see that they're going to go towards the Armory Throne Room side, which they split last time with a flawless round for each. That was the little bit of excitement we got at the beginning of the match. But on the second time around, Intense seemed to have had the experience under their belt to know how to effectively roam on the upstairs Defenders, and know where Revenant wants to attack from that cash side. I can't stress enough how important going from two attacking wins in a row to be on defense in overtime must feel for intense. We did see a flawless, like you said, goal between both teams in the very beginning on Throne Room. So, I mean, it could go either way still, but that momentum, like you said, still going, it must feel so good. Probably thinking that you have a 7-6 on your hands. Now, with that being said, if they do win this round, they do go 7-6. and six, And that would bring the defensive side on Revenant, where they didn't lose. Well, they did lose some rounds. I apologize. But they had a very solid defense. If they win that round as well, that's going to be intense. Going back to defense again. And that might be a secured round to a map too. But it all matters on this round right now. Nothing else matters in the future except this round. Yeah, when you start going towards your overtime, especially on a swing map such as this, you need to win your map choice if you're in the intense side. Every single round, you have to take in its own level. You have to think, I have to win right here. This defensive round is the most important round that you've played in the series so far, because if you lose it, you're not going to be in a great position. You're going to be forced with your backs against the wall. But that is what we saw them shine as you know pressure and heat makes diamonds and intense was definitely able to rise up to the occasion as 
the four to six comeback it did ultimately force overtime but with this the droning is coming out but it's made a heck of a lot more difficult by the inclusion of the vigil and mute jammers all over the place making it difficult to pinpoint the exact locations of where the roam is with only about two minutes left there has not been a single engagement but the bullet holes almost take off the head of neo but it's missed shots after missed shots on both parties it's a back and forth right now. A minute 40 left. Those bullet holes, like you said, and there we go. Engagement. Neo takes down Kryptonite. You lost your vigil, but the refrag coming out from Ayas. That's going to be Neo again going down. It is just a back and forth between those trio of people. Ben finds it, uh, finds Freezing. Again, Freezing just not having a great game. I don't think there's been a single round really where he's been one of the last alive. Going nine and nine, not too bad overall, but still. Could have been a little bit better so far, but a 111 left, and the upstairs roam is still not cleared. Never mind, it is. Never mind. And so with that being said, it's all downstairs from now. Toady is looking around, not having too much interaction. It's a stalemate right now. They're looking for that vertical play. They need to play it safe. The nerves are coming out again. And now it's just the big the sledgehammer goes down and that's going to be the barricade open. You can really only drop vertically. You could go down in barrels, but you might find a little bit of engagement. Specifically, I want to say maybe Toadie's there, but no, Ayos is waiting down in chemistry for anyone that rotates through barrels. 30 seconds left and you're not even close to that site. You need to do something. Dubby right now is... Dubby right now looking around that's gonna be I is taking down Ben as well there's a lot of fear going on and it looks like the diffuser is by itself 15 seconds left and you haven't even began penetrate inside of the site you need to do whatever you can the concussion grenades are going down they're prepping for something but that barbed wire will still slow you down it may not be much but it's something and that is with one second left the shotgun on TK is gonna take down Dubby and intense brings it seven six taking the lead again and match point for map number two. I think this is the first time in the series that Revenant has been forced on match point. Well, naturally, they won the first map. So intense, they see victory for the first time. It is within reach. And if they're able to successfully attack this next site, as now they've won three rounds in a row, they can continue their momentum and continue going all the way onto the third map of this series being clubhouse which is definitely anybody's game and seeing the lineup coming out of intense they have the necessary hard breach as well as a decent amount of soft breach if you count the two shotguns of both jackal and gridlock if those are the secondary weapons that they are bringing it could be a recipe for success if they are able to effectively clear the upstairs room that Revenant is most likely going can. to be employing. The Maestro and Legion will be sitting on site as Control Freak and W both have a set of impact nades in their back pocket to effectively deny that breach. Even if there isn't a traditional breach denial operator on the board, there's no Cade, Bandit, or Mute, but who really cares when you have little Pokeballs that explode on the other side of the wall and make Thermite charges magically disappear? But it's all going to come down to the roam of Ben, Neo, and Yikel to try to win this round and slow down the onslaught of attackers that Intense has thrown upstairs. Yikel, we've seen do a masterful roam on this western side of the map over towards bottom arcade and barrels. He hasn't necessarily been stopped as this has been his stomping grounds. He's got nitro kills. He's gotten flanks and his gun skill over taking these angles has been unmatched by anybody. But we're going to have to see a little bit of a different approach from Intense if they want to win this round because that Roma has really stalemated them every time we've seen this attack so far. In a difference, we are going to see as both Freezing and Kryptonite are pushing over towards the western side of the map. They're droning out Cafe and going to try to get an effective pinch on these players playing over towards the upstairs area. But it does seem as if there's not anybody upstairs. It's been a complete switch around from the Revenant defenders as they're opting to do more of a horizontal hold as opposed to the vertical pressure that we've seen so far. Yikel and Neil already playing a very interesting game inside of Lab. 
Yeah, Eichel, I believe, if we can just go into the expanded view for a second, I believe still has a C4 on the board. He does. Plus the two impacts from Neo. That, I mean, the impacts won't do a lot of damage, but there's still a lot of counter vertical play that can go on there as well. If, unfortunately, it looks like the time might have passed for getting anything in Cafe, but there was a lot of potential there for, you know, just blowing up all of Cafe. But it looks like Neo and Yikel are working together to just completely roam clear whatever they can. The horizontal push, though, from TK is playing a little bit more slowed and delayed. Now, the reason for this is because if, is, if TK is by himself, he won't really be able to counter anyone up that close with the sniper. It, as great as it is, it's still really hard to maneuver up close. The SMG can only also do so much, but just playing the slow game right now, waiting for people like Ayas to join up with them, is really the only option he has. Now, Control Freak right now is waiting for that Thermite to go down as predicted, and that's going to be the impact trick going down, but Tony is pretty familiar with this trick. He's going to try to go for it anyways. That's going to be one impact trick, and two not going to be able to do anything. That's a big yikes. And that's going to be Control Freak not able to impact trick. And suddenly there's a gigantic hole inside your throne room. Now, the million dollar question is, what are you going to do next? Because push, you know, getting the thermite wall open is one thing, but pushing in a single hole on throne room is a much different question. Now you do have TK backing up everyone with that thermal scope on the sniper rifle, but is that going to be enough? It's going to be down to control free, taking down one, but that's going to be freezing, take down another, and it's going to be a back and forth between the teams. Freezing remaining. gets a double kill, and Neo shuts down Neo. Kryptonite. Ten seconds the plant ahead. goes down, it seems there's only two seconds left, and there's seven on the overall monitor on this counter, and it's going to go down to 3v3 right now. It's a battle of the impact. What is going to happen next? It's a very awkward battle, to say the very least, in terms of positioning. The spikes are going down. That's going to be the end of Neo from a true... I think that might be a quadruple kill from freezing so far. Can we see the ace? And no, we do not. TK getting that final round, bringing it to map three between Intense and Revenant. Absolutely crazy comeback coming out of the Intense boys as they're showing that they are definitely a force to be reckoned with in this rival series. They might be the new kids on the block, but they played that comeback with a, a good sense of poise. They were down four to six, and they not only won two rounds in a row, not only three rounds in a row, but they won four rounds in a row to take this back onto their map, and they are forcing the third map of this series being Clubhouse. And uh, with that, we're going to let these players take another break in between maps. We will return with you guys in about five minutes time. So make sure that you are ready to tune back in for the thrilling conclusion of this best of three so far.
don't fall asleep on us just yet. We just finished map two between Intense and Revenant. Both teams played excellently on Theme Park. It became a very close, almost maximum overtime, but Intense just barely skated out in that victory. But here comes map number three, Clubhouse. Everyone's favorite map or favorite map is here to stay. It's going to be interesting to see how this one goes down because a lot of teams, pretty much every team and their mother's teams, have their own strategies. Know everybody else's strategies on Clubhouse. My name is Keglinek, and with me today is the wonderful and beautiful CDAPS, bringing you Revenant versus Intense, map number three for the ESA rivals. Yeah, and with going to Clubhouse, it's a map that I affectionately call the T3 Playground because, like you said, everybody and their mother loves to play Clubhouse. It's brought in almost every best of three here at ESA and followed closely second by Villa. But who knows? This is only the first map so far. We might see Villa make a return this season, or maybe it's going to get brought out and sort of replaced by either Theme Park or Oregon. But with that, both teams seem to be ready, and we'll be able to get right back into the action with the ban phase of Clubhouse. Revenant, after having the better round differential from their more dominant performance on Cafe, was able to pick their side, and they will be starting on defense, therefore banning away the first attacker here. I'm predicting them to either take away Thatcher, as we've seen, or possibly even the Maverick if they choose to bring that operator off of the table. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we see either or both. We do see Thatcher ban as usual. No surprise there. Thatcher's just way too strong on Clubhouse. And it's very, very rare in the modern day to see Thatcher not banned because he's just so powerful on most of the sites of this map, especially CCTV, which is typically now the most, you know, first area, I guess, primary site that you see. Capital going down next is not too much of a surprise either. Usually it's either a toss-up between Capital or uh, Thermite sometimes, but mostly Maverick. And the reason for that is just some AoE sight and damage denial. Pretty much just making sure a lot of the attacker's pushes are more coordinated and easier to... I'm sorry, harder to be predicted and coordinated for headshots, let's say, and kills for the defense. And Mirror, of course, no surprise either. Yeah, the Spaniard gets just completely decimated on every single site in this ban phase due to her unique ability to completely reform and reconstruct every single choke point of the map by allowing operators to just sit behind those invincible Mira shields, as well as we've seen Revenant banning away the Valk once again, really not wanting to deal with that really powerful intel op. This also could be a quick read into the fact that Echo has been permanently taken off the board for these upcoming weeks due to the little bit of a glitch with the Yokai drones being invincible. Which a is little. Not, yeah, it's a little bit of an issue. But, Just a little bit. Yeah, Ubisoft is working hard to make sure that our everybody's favorite three speed with a suppressed mp5 gets brought back as soon as possible but he'll most likely be brought back just to be banned away in every single phase but just like that revenant is going to be taking up cctv cash room with a whole onslaught of breach denial in the form of not only the bandit not only the mute but also Attackers bringing the Kaid, making it very bombs. very evident that they do not want these walls open if at all possible. Most likely Neo is going to be placing those bandit batteries on both the construction walls as well as the CCTV areas as Kaid will most likely place those electro claws over up in the rafters of garage to make sure the bottom garage walls don't get taken. Hopefully W will still have a couple of those jammers in his back pockets to make sure droning is very easy as well as Jack Yakel trying to protect the rest of his yeah, team, running. probably those anchors such as Kaiji and Maestro from getting their not only utility, but their lives taken away by Five the nade brought by the Maverick and the Sledge on the side of the intensive attack. Attackers must locate and defuse a bomb. Absolutely, and I'm glad you mentioned about those walls not going up at all, because there, there was a lot of options for the attackers to bring that soft utility to open up from below inside stockroom. We do have uh, Kryptonite on that Zofia. 
able to use their concussion mines to open up the bandits from underneath if that is possible and works out it looks like it's kind of hard to tell from that angle but i believe neo has not placed down his bandit charges yet so the bandit tricking might be a little tough in fact it might be kind of worthless at this point because tk oh nope the bandits are down so depending on how this wants to go down kryptonite can either shoot her concussion through the drone hole and might be able to take out the rightmost bandit charge if possible or it, you know, C4 not going to connect, and then wherever we go, we have the bandit tricking going on as well. So it's going to be a matter of getting this wall open and maybe contesting either Jacuzzi, Logistics Hatch, or more realistically, either the garage um, doorway as well, and that's going to be your wall open. All that utility to deny the wall from opening up, and it opens up within seconds. And that right there is the power of Maverick, especially in a really great hand such as we've seen TK masterfully using that torch to decimate all of the utility. The track singers are going to go through the drone hole over on that balcony, cutting off the rotation of red stairs. That's going to force Attackers WD just play over inside the cache area, joining Control Freak, as well as Yaiko aggressively peeking over towards Billiards, rotating into bottom bar area trying to join back up with Ben who's furiously fighting with the players inside of bottom garage that's where freezing has made his position and he's not only going to take out the camp he's going to be trying to go for some wall banks here onto the Kaid playing towards the lounge there's also a player on the top of blue over towards those back who could swing at a moment's notice and that is Neo with a very powerful mp7 in his hands looking quite snazzy with the black ice <laughs> yeah, the black ice is always really nice to see. Not so much of a glacier skin, I guess, but I guess we can wait for that for another day. However, that defender at the bottom, I believe it's Yaiko, hiding inside of blue. Really tough situation to be in. They did rotate around, thankfully. And that's going to be... Did you see that electric law on Raptors? Yeah, I, I think it just got taken out. Yeah, why? Why was it there? I guess maybe that the like locks the bottom of the, the oh, two blocks. Oh, I see. Okay, I yeah. was thinking way too 400 IQ. I was thinking maybe the attackers had to walk on and be like a little trip mine. But no, Neo, take a double kill, taking down Kryptonite and I use, and that's gonna be TK yeah, following up the, the retrag on Neo. Control Second freak though, they're the same today, and it's gonna be Cody, last one alive, needs to find that kill, but Revenant in a four, I believe, having four people still left alive, secure that first round in map three. Yeah, at the end of the day, still having the roam presence, there wasn't much of a roam clear coming out of the intense attackers. That let both Yaiko and Neo just rotate all around the map, being those two very fast and very powerful German operators, rocking those yellow icons and very powerful guns, were able to just swing out, take out one operator for the Jaeger, and I believe two for the um, Bandit. We saw Jaeger go ahead and run out of through that window trying to make sure that the plant didn't go down but it was a little bit too little too late as the bandit beat him out to those quick easy frags also the maestro was using all 81 of those bullets to their full effect catching the bodies of quite a few attackers, attackers as they were just really forced due to the time can. constraint to funnel in through the choke point of the garage rotate hole and the breach and it's not a very advantageous position when somebody such as happy Tao is off the board so your only smokes were in the hands of freezing to try to cut those rotation points but i think one of them got eaten by an ads one did go off but the push wasn't quite quick enough to fully make use of that. But just like that, Revenant takes round one and we'll be going downstairs and seeing a very interesting push or interesting defense coming out of Revenant. They're not opting to go for the traditional SSG style roam with the mute Mozzie vigil combination, but instead, the Dubby is going to be taking the pulse down below, potentially trying to catch out anybody pitching if they go in a little bit too aggressively. They could catch a Nitro Cell under their feet and a quick free kill for the defense to capitalize on. I feel like at this point, the SSG roam, unless they're SSG themselves, is kind of overplayed. I think if you're going to start off immediately doing that kind of technique, it's kind of a waste, all things considered. Just going for the traditional defense at first, having your own strat, is something maybe the teams aren't even prepared for over the SSG realm itself. But, of course, you know, we're only one round into it as well. Say Revenant loses this round, they can always just win the next round. Or even later on, 
But we are seeing a bit of a split push right now. It looks like all the hatches are just trying to get open. Cody opening up the stockroom hatch and kitchen hatch getting electroclawed. Unfortunately, not going to have the opportunity to, to uh, open that up either. And the utility being brought on Intense's side, not going to really allow that electroclaw to be contested very much. Now, with that and being said, look at the. Oh, I was gonna say, unless they're able to snake a frag grenade down with the most recent shrapnel buff, they could find the electric claw if they're able to use that utility. Most likely there is an ADS down below as a gigantic band wave blesses our screen cleaning up oh, our no. just a little My bit. duo partner Barcode got banned. Oh no. Not Barcode. Attackers Looks like you're gonna lose off. some elo if you were getting those freebies. Such a unique person. But as the drone work goes down towards the bottom of main stairs, and Sophia's gonna hit it, uh, one of those goo mines and try to get a wall bang towards the players over towards AK inside of Armory. Now he's effectively stuck at the bottom of main stairs, stuck in that corner cubby as there's a bunch of guns trained on his location. Dubby's gonna be pulling out the pulse scanner as Tati is pushing over towards Blue, trying to take the Jaeger out from behind that rack. Ooh. He's gonna find him as Cody takes out Yaikel, opening up the fragging potential for NTNS, also known as Intense. Some more drone work is going over towards Moto as that is probably the other pinch that the Intense attackers want to take as Ayaz is making his way down dirt to get another angle for the crossfire. He might actually be able to find out the location of one of the players in the Kaid, who's right next to him, but he's not going to peek. Neo's going to instead get a kill onto Kryptonite as the... Uh, hey, but Toddy's going to pick up the refrag right here, take his second of the round. Here, there's a whole lot of bullets flying as Freezing finds one here, but Ben's going to answer back with a kill onto TK, as well as pick up another one. That's two for him, but Toddy's going to continue it out. But after the trades, after the smoke all lands, Revenant ends up victorious once again on the round at the back of Ben clutching it out and getting a beautiful headshot at the end. I think it goes without saying that, no, like what happened? I, it was just a back and forth bloodbath inside of Arsenal and Revenant came out on top. They didn't even need to do the SSG roam because what they did was effective enough as it was. I think because Thatcher's banned and we, we did see a lot of Kali in the last map from Intense. So I'm surprised they didn't they really banked on no one being able to take down those electric claws and they didn't intense didn't bring anyone to do that so i guess it was a good idea and even now even after that whole dilemma intense still doesn't bring kali for potentially taking down electric claws or Adapters anything of those sorts but we'll be rotating back in the gym and bedroom where maybe using that isn't as necessary but that can be a huge problem to begin with anyways because you still have those bandit charges and I believe the Kai no, no Kai the bandit charges on Jacuzzi wall are still there. Now, the attacking lineup that you have, really the only thing that's going to be effective against that Jacuzzi wall is Maverick taking down those bandit charges. Well, not only that, you do have the soft reach team of Ayus and Kryptonite. You can waste away the utility inside a gym from that exterior window. Oh, they true. can get rid of that castle barricade if there is Yikel on that Five bandit trick. But most likely some ADSs or maybe even well, my discs will be hiding all Attackers over that the bomb site. Bomb as well as the potential for any player if CCTV is left unattended. Could just get a quick little punch in that barricade and catch the side profile of an unsuspecting attacker. But just like that, Freezing and I believe that's Kryptonite are going to be pushing on the bottom of Garage and making sure the CCTV and other eastern side of the map is locked down into the control of the attackers. There's going to be a little bit of drone work as the um, track stingers go over towards the bottom. Raj has made his way onto the balcony and is furiously fighting with the castle of Ben through the opened wall. Unfortunately for the Revenant, they weren't able to get that proper reinforcement onto the cache double wall, and it will be just opened quite quickly at the hands of a little bit of explosive. And that right there has forced Ooh. everybody back, but Dubby's going to get a nice kill onto Ayaz with the finding the headshot of the AUG and taking out the entry frag of Intense. Yeah, Ayo's going down first is going to hurt Intense a lot. He's usually one of the front runners and top braggers for the team. Just able to get those initial picks, but unfortunately, he was just caught out by going too fast, too quickly. And he got punished for it really hard. 
Now here's the big problem is that now you realize that construction is under huge congestion and that is going to be jacuzzi wall partially open. Not really the best kind of wall to have, but the Maverick trick works out and that's going to be the fall wall open up for jacuzzi. And suddenly, you know, Ayo's death may have been in vain and that's going to be freezing, clapping back, taking down Neo. And you lose your Jaeger like that, it's going to be construction in, in your favor. Attackers Logistics could be a great alternative for freezing to rotate, especially with that shotgun. I don't Enemy believe it's reinforced from the looks of it. But here's the big problem, CDAPS. Ven is coming. Ven is coming for that flank, but no, he's retreating. Down back in the blue, he must think there's someone else there as well. And to an extent, yes, there is. Kryptonite is waiting outside of CCTV. But oh, the spikes are going to do. He's got to rotate all the way around through rafters. Unless he wants to make some noise or melee individual spikes to go through. That's going to take a long time. Now, with that being said, though, it looks like we might see Control Free go for a quick peek. He does surround himself in the smoke a little early. He wants to use the smokes for the rest of the round. A little early. Control Freak takes down Kryptonite, though. Kryptonite had to have been on the other side, but that's going to be freezing. Taking down Control Freak, the construction push. Turning out to be successful, but here's the thing, CDAPS. Ven is coming. Still coming. He's rotating around right now, and Freezing has an idea. I think at this point, Ven has been called out. There's no way he has it, but that's going to be Yikes taking down Freezing in a crossfire, and that is going to be the diffuser being planted down, and that's suddenly a retake at the site. Ven completely off the site, and Yiko needs to find that next kill, and that's going to be an intense bringing it back, getting themselves a point on the board, and bringing it to one to two. Yeah, that was a really, really great execute out of Intense. They not only got the diffuser down for the first time, they were expertly able to hold their crossfires on the post plant, put up in very, very nice positions. Most likely, Ven's late flank was called out due to a drone, or possibly even the sound cues of having to break those gridlock track stingers. And those are what the acute ears of Freezing were able to hear out and effectively communicate to his team. By the end of the day, the scoreline is still in the favor of Revenant, but it is in the expected split of Clubhouse so far. Most likely, we're going to get to a 4-2 split unless something in the tide changes just a little bit. Typically on Defenders Clubhouse, you expect to win basement and CCTV, but as you go to that tertiary bomb site of Gym Bedroom, that's where things get a little bit dicey. That's where Intense is able to find their first initial success, but they definitely can keep on pounding and keep on pushing through, trying to build any momentum and put themselves in the driver's seat of this series. They're able to be successful on one of these more primary sites. Keep in mind, this is not the first time we've seen this sort of story between the two teams. Keep in mind, map number one, Cafe, start off in bar. That was Revenant's win. Started off on, I'm sorry, the second map round going towards Kitchen. Revenant won it. Round number three, going to that tertiary site. Like you said, going to be reading and dining. Intense wins it all. So it's not the first time we've seen this situation go through. In fact, this is a very common situation in any tournament or any any league play. But it's going to matter now whether or not Revenant can get that three-round lead or if Intense can tie it up right now. And just like that, it's going to be a more traditional push for Intense as most likely the Maverick of PK will be trying to Maverick trick once again. He was quite successful the last time around and was able to expertly get the wall open. Just as he gets the top half right here. However, the bottom half is what can be a little bit more dangerous. If there is a player playing in that close up corner that PK is breaking right now, his feet could be shot. And as Neo is going to get a kill onto Kryptonite, unfortunately, he kills the wrong player. But it is one of the soft breachers that can hit from a distance that could be very impactful. Now, in order to get the wall open, it's going to be a little bit more dangerous. You're either going to have to shotgun of freezing to take a few shots to get it away, or you're going to have to have Ayu's throw up there and hammer it out. And just like that, freezing's going to get dropped down onto the ground and finished off. Actually, he's going to go ahead and just run away, but you can't run away from the nitro cell as a Vin rips the explosive brick Attackers outside of the bomb. garage. The wall is effectively not opened at this point, and if you're on the intense attack, you're falling a little bit behind. One frag grenade did open it up, I, but I do not know if you can 
get through that. But Ayuz is going to push in through Garage and take out Yaikul. But he's going to be traded right back as Ven picks up his second kill of the round. Leaving it all up to Toddy and TK who are trying to push the backside with about a minute left. One minute left on the clock, like you said, it's a 4v2, and the last two people, healthy and alive, it's just a matter of what they can do to bring it home. Now, again, it's CCTV, which is not a great site to be in this position, and you're really only option. You do have the hard breach, but you have to go through logistics. There's no other way. They do silent drop, which I thought they patched maybe two years ago, but it worked pretty effectively, and that's going to be Neo finding out through the impact, through the walls, the hay that's where they're going to push and suddenly having been discovered that might have sealed their fates completely now toady and tk only have one option that's to push through construction now if you've ever played ranked you know this is one of the worst ways to push i mean you have no other option it's just claustrophobic and intensely hard to bring home with 20 seconds left that gra frag grenade is going to go down it's not going to connect the ads zaps it away the flash grenade goes down unfortunately and misses and that is pretty much going to secure the round right there there's really nothing toady can do at this point to bring it home unless he magically gets a 4k four in four remain. seconds and that's not going to happen and just like that control freak is going to pick up the final two kills with that alda here 81 bullets of pain going down range is going to secure that round as the third round of CCTV goes into the favor of Revenant, and with a score of 3 to 1, Basement Church Arsenal is going to be next up as the battleground. This was a site that was a little bit closer onto the defensive side. I think it was only, I think Control Freak was the final one, or it was Ven. I think it was a 1v1 at the end, but it was just a gigantic cluster of trades. And after the smoke settled, it was just the final Revenant player standing triumphantly. So if you're on the side of intense, there's a little bit of room for improvement on your attack. And you could definitely swing this into your favor if you're able to take the first initial picks and set Attackers the trades up for yourself as, as opposed as to Revenant holding their crossfires more effectively. It's going to be a very, very similar take minus the pulse, which W did switch off in favor of the Australian Mozzie. It does seem as if Intense is very, very meticulous with their drone work. So bringing all of those pests here to stop the drone and make it a little bit more difficult could really pan into the favor of the Revenant defense if they're able to effectively further slow down the meticulous attack of Intense who have been known to sort of stall out just a little bit and run into the time constraint. What I find interesting is that Control Freak opts to go for the Maestro instead of the Mute Pick. Because that would be the SSG roam right there, pretty much. But instead, just having W on the Mozzie is a great option. Control Freak has been shown to be really good with that SMG-11. We've seen 2Ks, 3Ks, 4 kills in a round with that SMG-11 or Shotgun Control Freak. So, like, like I said, it's interesting to see it's not happening this time around. Toady right now opening up construction right away. It looks like that might be a bit of a red herring, though, because they are not going to utilize it right away. I'm oh, sorry, dirt. And so with that being said, though, it's a 1v3. Again, you need to figure out what you need to do right now if you're intense, because it's, it's a rough situation to be in. And... There's not a lot you can really do other than the standard, but the impact trick on the Hibana pellets in Kitchen is going to be... You can already see the gears are trying to turn through Toadie's head about what you need to do, because it's just kind of a, a yike situation all around. However, we do have Kryptonite wanting to go through construction, and that's going to be pretty much completely clear, except for Dubby inside of Jim. Now, Dubby is preoccupied by Ayus, and there must be a call out there that someone is hiding on the upper floors. Now, the question is, what are they going to do to retrade it? They know exactly where Dubby is. He's effectively trapped. I believe his secondary will be able to bring him down below on the hatch. And the Sophia opens it up. Concussion grenades are out. The drone is out. You are dead if you are Dubby. Now, now that the roam clear is completely gone, the cameras are shot out. Main stairs might be the way to go. You do have the Maverick to open up stockroom into Moto, but is that going to be enough? It looks like he's opening up a little bit and trying to find those peaks in the rotator moto, but he's not having any success. And that is still going to be the man advantage for Intense right now, but they're going to bring it home. They're so close to the site. 
And it's just, I don't know. I'm not confident in this. Never mind, I am confident in this. Kryptonite being take, taken down Yaikul. And now the follow-up. The C4 goes down out of nowhere. Ven holds down Church like a beast would take it now Kryptonite. And yeah, no, with the track stingers going out, it's going to cover the rotate hole out of blue as I is going to take a flurry of bullets towards the players over on Armory AK. The Kaid is going to start breaking away those aforementioned um, track stingers as the rest of these attack it seems to stall out, but they still have 35 seconds left to play with as they're going to be cooking up a frag grenade expertly here. Putting on top of that um, jukebox to take out the Meister Camden, effectively denying any intel. However, Neo's going to take out the backside flank of Tati, leaving it all up to TK freezing and I use in a 3v3 with not a whole lot of health combined. His control freak's going to take out freezing through the wall. There's going to be another tr attempted trade out of here as I just picked up control freak finally. It's all up to Ven and Neo in a 2v2, but it's not enough as both Ven and Neo pick up the final players and Revenant wins round five and puts themselves at a four to one lead. However, they do have to go to gym bedroom, which they did lose. So intense, definitely this is a very, very, very impactful swing round for them as you sort of need that four two split in order to feel comfortable with your impact on the attacking rounds. You're right, they did lose Jim originally, and it could go either way this time, but Dummy not getting any kills from the upper part in Jim, unfortunately, I think that was another big, con well, I don't know, I mean, he really could have done more, but I think that's the reason why the round was as close as it was. Even if Dummy had gotten one kill, preferably those, both of them, uh, both IQ and, uh, Kryptonite on that Zofia could have been a attackers. huge game changer a lot faster, but the end result was still the same. But I think the hold on Church has been really excellent for Revenant so far, and that SSG roam would have been a great option, but honestly, they don't really need to do that because the drone work is great on Intense, it's just that their, their gunfights are not. Yeah, it's just... With um, the Motley losing his secondary shotgun, it would have been a really easy way for him to escape through that gym hatch. But ultimately, as he started getting pressured, he didn't really have time to burn his knife or so without damaging himself quite heavily. He could have maybe gotten away and killed more time. But at the end of the day, I think it killed about a minute and a half. You can take that as a dub for Dubby, definitely. Because he's actually going to be aggressively attempting to put some bullet holes or punch holes over towards, actually he's just going to be hiding a disc over towards the CC wall. I thought he was going to be trying to spawn peek, but he's going to play a little bit more passive and tuck tail and run back into construction where he did get managed to get a pick onto Aya's last time through, I believe, two walls with that very, very powerful AUG assault rifle in his hands. Kryptonite the and the rest of the Hard Breach team is going to be trying to break open into Jacuzzi, effectively cutting the bomb sites in half, offering really nice lines of sights, as well as an entryway into these areas. TK is going to be starting the Maverick trick as Kryptonite is peeking over towards a possible rotation towards Jim, if he can go ahead and ankle bite anybody through that drone hole. TK is going to draw the first line and successfully get about half the barricade, as he's also going to be going for the second. I mean, getting those kills in the beginning, that angle biting, man, I mean, that angle biting could be really intense for Maverick. You don't really see that a whole lot in upper levels like this, but it definitely does happen from time to time. And whoa, freezing already getting that kill onto Neo, not caring at all. And that's going to be practically the site inches away from the attackers. It's only one rooms away, and that's going to be someone hiding in logistics. I can't really tell who that is at this time. But whoever it is, it's going to be... Oh, I believe it's Dubby. Dubby going to rotate around this time. The hatch is finally open. Now he can rotate the way he should have last round. And Neo being taken down again, this is not unusual for him. We usually see those Jaegers go down really quickly on the defending team for Revenant. Uh, before we had seen Yaiko go down as well on one of the CCTV sites. But it's just a, it's a bad situation to be in overall. Now... The Jacuzzi push is an interesting push. It's usually the most common one we see for Jim and Bedroom, but they're cut off still from the barricade on their right side. And the... Wait, hold it. And the reinforced wall is still in front of them. Now the Thermite is going to open it up. I don't believe it can be impact trick. And there is an Iron Shield 
at the end of the hallway with, I believe, Control Freak at the very end of it. Dubby takes down Kate Katoti, and Kryptonite finds Ben. Control Freak, though, claps back, and DK is just refrag City right now. Freezing finds another dub onto Dubby, and suddenly, it's a 1v4. Now, like you said before, C-Dabs, Jim and Bedroom has not been a great site at all. All for revenue. But to be fair, the other two sites have won almost flawlessly for them. And that's Yike taking down freezing. Is this going to be enough? The answer might be yes or it might be no. Now, Yike only has one option to push. They know exactly where he's at. He's cross peeking as much as he can. But again, Ios is just waiting with the SMG 11, waiting for any kind of movement to just give away that bandit. And there we go, right away. That's gonna be intense. Winning their second round on Clubhouse. Going into the second half, it's gonna be that 4 2 split that we're all so used to seeing. This is exactly what Intense needs. Yeah, and if you're on the Intense with the defensive rounds now, if you hit this 4 2 split like you're expected to, you will force overtime once again. And with how the maps have worked they will get to stay on defense for the next uh overtime attack or overtime a half so being sort of controlling your own destiny and knowing that you have the definitive advantage in overtime if you're able to force it can really give you a little bit of momentum and a little bit of breath of life as you may be at a deficit right now but it could not be at the foreseeable future especially if you're able to start getting some momentum and really replicate and the success of what can. revenant was also able to do on defense which is the expected result so far is actually a very very different lineup coming out of the intense defense as there's no bandit on the board only the mute for the denial of the wall so because of maverick's presence on the bomb sites here and on the attacking side you most likely know that cctv wall sort of cannot be contested unless the maverick severely messes up you know it's going to get open so why allocate all of those resources why not be able to bring a dock to protect rafters why not bring your vigil who can roam and maybe he'll start picking up some kills and pulling his weight on the block as well as still having the high fragging potential of not only the Maestro, but also the Jaeger in the back pocket, as we've seen Toddy go on some absolute tears with that 4160 carbine. Absolutely. And so this is a really important round again. Most rounds we've been saying are really important so far, but keep in mind, it's a two point detriment for Intense right now. If they can't win their first defense, that's gonna be a spelling story. Wow. For how it's gonna go. Personal from Kryptonite gets countered by death from Crypt from I'm sorry, from wow, Neo. I all oh, Neo. Wow. I need new glasses. From Neo. That's not a great way to start the second half. And if you are Neo right now, you're feeling really good because I think all that was visible was a little punch hole. So you know exactly what to look for. Now I could be wrong, but that's all I saw. Now, with that being said, it looks like the Mute Charge already down. That Thermite's going to open up, and there's nothing to contest this Thermite from going down. Now, the defensive side is really confusing for me Attacker on Intense's side because there's no Bandit, there's no Kaid. The Mute is there, but I don't believe the Mute was successful because that Mute Hammer was located. taken down, and I don't believe you can really Mute Trick like that. Now, I could be wrong, but... Yeah, it's already open. So again, whatever defensive hold you had, had to have been post wall opening up. Now, Ayus does have that MP5 ACOG. Probably in Raptors, if I had to take a guess. I believe, yep, he's in Raptors. And that's really your best shot for anyone opening through that window. Once he goes down, that round is going to be going to Raptors. But Freezing is going to answer back and take out the entry fragging Neo on the Ash with that SMG 11. He's oh so familiar with. There's actually two players up on Raptors that Revenant has to take care of. As Freezing's going to take out and peel another person onto Yiko, taking out the full soft freak. He's also going to have a Nitro Cell primed and ready to take out anybody on the breach as he can go through that R90 window in Raptors. Then it's rotated into Lounge. Is actually able to find the Jaeger of Toddy who's flanking, flanking, flanking. But Control Freak doesn't care either as Ayus in Rafters falls apart and so does the rest of the NTNS. 
defense as both of them gets another kill. Oh. It's all up to the Maestro, but high clutch ability. However, it doesn't matter when you have control freak on the Maverick. Who's just going to surgically remove this player with a well-placed shot to the head? And Revenant has a life once again and continues to grow their lead and stamps out any hopes of an initial um, attack or defensive win for NTNS to try to get some momentum. Now this is, if you're on the intense side, is where you start to worry just a little bit. Those are the rounds that you do not want to lose. And unfortunately for them, they're going to have to overcome that initial loss by being near perfect. It's a rough position for Intense to be in. They looked so great at the end of Cafe and Map 1. They performed beautifully on Theme Park and Map 2. But... What seems like the lack of experience and chemistry Defenders, on their team compared to Revenant is showing off the most in the most common map in all of Rainbow Six Clubhouse. And it's showing a lot right here. Again, this defense that we see on CCTV is just poor. It really is. I mean, all these operators are really great individually, but the overall way you need to set up CCTV site is just really bad. You don't have anything really to stop the Thermite from opening up the wall minus mute. And we saw how easily that was countered last time. And this time around, they don't bring a bandit or a Kai to bring it back. So I, I don't really understand what the thought process for Intense is right now. Because the same exact lineup they had before did not work last round. I think the only thing I can possibly think of is if you're on intense side, you know the Maverick is going to be strong. So, but honestly, I think you have to hold the Revenant attackers and force them to have to effectively Maverick trick. At this point, we saw Control Freak on the Maverick only have to make one small little hole and allow the Thermite to just bring clear. Instead of wasting about 40, it's about like 30 seconds to effectively Maverick trick. And that time is almost free if you're on the defensive side. And you want to take that all the time you can have. As we're going to see, the time is not really being a factor as Yaiko is all the way into the bottom of stock and is rotating over towards the round area. Some drone work is going over towards the garage, seeing where the location of these defenders playing the rafters might be. As W is going to rotate over here, Kryptonite's going to get a nice kill onto Neo, dropping off the Ash as the roam of the vigil is successful this time around. It's now Kryptonite is just chilling all the way over in the strip club. Ayaz is gonna get a kill on Deven, further bringing in the advantage of the defenders. It's just up to a 3v5 so far. The wall is now open, so it's not the worst position in the world for the Revenant attackers, but they definitely have an uphill battle as Ayuz's health gets buffed straight up by Tati on the dock. You know, you're absolutely right. I think I might be wrong because so far the defense is working really well for intense. Those are just individual gunplays, though. Overall, holding the site as a whole doesn't seem to be intense's strong suit, but it really doesn't need to be either. If you can take down those guns, or take those bodies down and the attackers are pretty much just stalling themselves there's a lot of bodies on site defending but they don't need to peak angles they don't need to play crazy and toady right now still playing in raptors not really gonna have a lot to say not he's gonna hold the angle but not a lot for him to really see either it's just a matter of seeing what happens next now kryptonite does take a lot of damage i'm not sure from who but the move up Ooh. whoa gets taken down from the grenade on his left and that is going to be the follow-up control freak takes down toady as well i don't know maybe i was right now because toady was such a great stranglehold for raptors inside of the site and that's gonna be kryptonite going down as well now the plant's gonna go down the defensive team needs to wake up a little bit but no the, whoa and that's Yaiko taking down tk on a pistol pistol double kill what is going on Pistol triple kill from Revenant! Yeah, not only a double kill, but a triple kill as a Revenant oh. pulled that round from the jaws of defeat. It was wow. a 3v5, but when you can get kills with not only your primary, but your secondary, Yaikil is looking like a little bit, but no, he has a Whoa. match point series. Yaikil taking down TK on a pistol, pistol, pistol double kill. This what is going on? Is going to be going downstairs and showing off what they're bringing to the table. 
inside of church arsenal room at this point their backs are against the wall once again and we have seen them be able to clutch up but not quite at this high of a level this they were down four to six on theme park but a two to six deficit is a little bit more actually mathematically double to the comeback that they had to prove last time so it's going to be twice as difficult of a feat to pull off well, you're going to have to give me a second. I'm still doing the calculations to figure out that you're right, that it's double. I'll let you know when I figure it out, though. But that calculator? Yeah, I do. Hold on, give me a little bit. I got this. In the meantime, I'll keep talking. Tony right now, though, he's on that smoke, and we haven't really seen a lot of Tony on smoke. I could be mistaken, but he's been mostly playing anchors, but just not the smoke pick. So I wonder if he's trying to copy a little bit of what Control Freak was doing and playing so well. But I cannot get over how well Yaiko played that triple kill on the pistol at the end of the last round. Not something you see every day. In fact, that's something you don't see most days. In fact, that's probably one of the first times ESA has ever had a triple kill or plus double kill plus on a pistol as well. But we're seeing a very generic, it looks like, defense on church this time around nothing really too out of the ordinary kryptonite bringing the kai this time around for the electro claws it's gonna be a little bit of an issue and we don't see the kali either of this badly banned to bring back the electro claws. yeah it's gonna be a little bit of an animal as cold of looking like a turtle with all five players downstairs trying to effectively deny any intel with the Jaeger will my goyo combination making sure that all the soft breachers such as Neo and Yaikel work their overtime and due diligence to get rid of all of this utility. The room clear has started up on the top floor as Yaikel entered in over towards Jacuzzi, but Ayes is going to open up the fragging and take out one of those soft breachers of Ash by running up the blue secret stairs. And that is a huge kick, especially when you have all of this utility burning potential if freezing on the Ramai is able to just stay alive and start accumulating those magnets. Not the first round on attack so far where Neo has been the first taken out. It's kind of a yike situation. I think Neo playing a little too aggressive at times, being the first one to be picked off, usually has ended in a win for intense. I don't really know if that's going to change this time around. But with that being said, a minute 30 on the clock, you're about halfway into the round so far. Excuse me, that's going to be Blue Hatch opened up already, and the angles I just don't think are there. Now, on Control Freak's left is going to be Ayu, I believe, and that's going to be behind the Iron Shield. That's a really safe place for him to be in, but if that Iron Shield gets taken down from the fr uh, Frag Grenade, that's going to be bad news. But nope, they both miss. The Iron Shield is there. They know that is going to be a huge issue. And the blue push suddenly is not looking too good. Now, I use right now is hiding in a small lower corner behind that generator. And that's a really good position to be in because he's baiting himself out for Ven to push up for the Womai to take it over. And that's a really smart option to have. Now, whether they're going to fall for it, I don't know. I'm going to get yes. And you can see Ayaz is really trying to get that kill for himself as well. But he needs to play it safe. Especially with the hatch right back over from him. But Ayu is taking the control freak. And the double kill follow up that's Ven taking down Ayu. And that's a big yikes. Now, here's the big question what can Ven do next? He can push up, but that's going to be the Wamai not finding any shots, it seems. But he needs to get that diffuser and rotate back. 20 seconds on the clock. It's a 4v3. So far for Rev, it's not looking like a solid round. And that's going to be the diffuser going down in complete iron grip. And that's going to be the Ten round right there. You might as well start the analysis. Yeah, I guess you can analyze how the blue Five hold was just so strong from intense. As now the smoke canisters is going to force W to save the op. Looking like CSGO or for your case, Valorant. Because that's your secondary game to cast. Very but true. it was just really, really great pressure coming out of the work of the double anti-throwables, both the Wamai and Jaeger holding inside of blue, was just too powerful for Revenant to overcome. But speaking of power to overcome, Intense is going to have to get over the hurdle and thorn in their side that has been CCTV cash room so far. Revenant has effectively attacked it two times successfully, and they've done so in a dominating fashion aggressively winning their gunfights and we've seen a little bit of magic coming out of a 
pistol that breaks the mold by having an attached red dot sight in the back hands of Yaikel. If Revenant is able to recreate the success that they've done so far, they'll win the map and the series. But if Revenant of if Defenders, Intense has anything to say about it, attackers. they're gonna keep on fighting and try to bring this to overtime, where they will again, again I say, have the definitive advantage. I mean, yeah, the definitive advantage right now, playing the defense inside CCTV, it seems like this is gonna be Intense's round. With that being said, thank you! They've brought the bandit and they brought a castle to help deny the attacking pushes as well. This is a good setup. Now, the reason why it's a good setup is that you have the bandit to bandit Attackers trick. Have you have Ayus with the castle able to push off most of the northwestern part of the map if you really want to, or even the lower parts of the map like Stockroom and just help those pushes from below be less effective. But at the beginning of the round, I'm curious to see how this is going to go. Yeah, I don't think the bandit is necessarily going to be bandit tricking, but it's going to force Control Freak to fully have to have the ball, and that's going to take a time to win. That is a really, really, really good adjustment on the side of the intense defense, showing that they are not willing to roll over and just accept their fate of getting that wall opening. They're going to have more pushback, and they're going to make the Revenant really work for the map control that they have. And just like that, we're going to see the Bandit downstairs in lounge with all of those adjacent rooms castled off, trying to protect the below area of the wall to make sure an IQ or somebody sneaky, such as the Soft Creature, can't just blast away those Bandit batteries with ease. They are truly going to force control freak to try to maverick trick effectively as neo's gonna be the entry prey right here dubby's actually gonna open up the killing as the thermite gets the opening kill onto the roaming castle of ayus who was down in the bottom of garage the bottom of garage indeed i mean this attack is looking really solid as well because with the zofia you really need to attack it from the bottom if there's a bandit on the board just so he can take out the uh the bandit traps and if there's a you um well a kite on the board as well, you can possibly take down the electric claws. It takes a little bit more time, but Neo oh, grip tonight. Beautiful freezing goes down next. That's a big yikes. 2v5 on the board. This might be the end of the series right here. Series point coming out right now. Intense. Not having a great CCTV defense. We haven't once seen them go gym or bedroom. And maybe, maybe that was the option for them to go. Because that Maestro is about to go down at two, it looks like, and they are completely surrounded. Maestro is in the worst spot possible. Reinforced walls, the only thing keeping him alive. A single movement from his body will be two different bodies in his way, not even, even without moving. He's dead. And with that being said, it looks like Toadie barely skirting away. 1v4, he takes out control for it. Can he bring it back? 1v4, a flawless ace, possibly? Unfortunately not. That is going to be Revenant taking map number three between themselves and Intense. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be going to a new series. Thank you for watching these two play. And this has been Intense's first time at ESA, and they did a really good job, all things considered. We went in having almost zero info about who they are, what they do, and we've come out learning so much about them. And against Revenant, who, to be fair, last season did not really perform that well, it was fairly close, all things considered, especially the first two map C dabs. Yeah, Theme Park was actually an insanely great map to not only watch, but to cast as well. Being able to pick the minds and understand exactly how these two teams wanted to attack and defend the new map, trying to define the meta and really you... understanding on a deeper level where everything had to go through. It was a really great close match, but the other two maps that were a little bit more established of Cafe and clubhouse did go in the way of revenant who was a little bit more of an established team who was a little bit more experienced in that and ultimately it did show but at the end of the day both of these teams did really fight their best and it was really great to watch and big ggs to both sides absolutely and it looks like we will be taking a small break while we set up the next series Oh, you know, it's only 10 o'clock at night for me. I think it's a little too early for another one. So let's go for it again. Let's let's just do this all night. I'm down. Let's do it. Oh, man, I'm going to need so much coffee.
but we'll see you guys in a little bit while we get everything set up.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to ESA Rivals. My name is Keglinek, and with me is the beautiful and fabulous C Daps. We had a fantastic first set between. Oh man, why am I blanking? We had a fantastic uh, first set between Intense and Revenant, and it went to map three. We had seen a very close second game on theme park between the two teams, and that was the only time we had seen Intense come out with a win. This time around, we have two completely new teams and two people who I personally haven't seen play before. CDAPS, you might have something different to say, but Digital Dynasty versus Going Nuclear. I don't have a lot of information on them, but the first map looks like it's going to be Cafe, so I'm excited. Yeah, if it draws any parallels to the first series we saw, Cafe was definitely an exciting map that we got to see some very interesting strats coming out of, as it does lean a little bit more towards the right side of being a bit more structured. But at this point, I think both teams are ready and we can go ahead and get right on into the action, not keep you wonderful viewers at home waiting for very much longer. I know you might want to see me and Keg's beautiful faces, but I think you'd rather see a little bit of high octane siege action. I mean, I guess. Nuclear and digital dynasty. Yeah, so the map bans for Cafe. I'm not expecting to see anything too crazy come out. Last time, of course, we had seen band number one be Thatcher. Band number two could be the same. What was it last time? Oh, I'd have to check my notes again. Mav. I think it was Maverick. Yeah, I think it was yeah. a Maverick. It was a Maverick band. I was thinking Capitao at first because that was map two. And so Thatcher, for, of course, going down first. I'm expecting either Maverick or Hibana. We've seen Hibana come down a few times before just because I would say she's the safest Heartbreach right now. Mine is Ace. But with that being said... I mean, I would expect Maverick and Mira, and then maybe the fourth one we had seen Valkyrie before. Oh, Capital. I would have been right. But Mira's going to be the next one to go down, of course. And then I last time we had seen Valkyrie go down, I don't know if we're going to see Valkyrie again or if that was maybe a targeted ban because we had seen Valkyrie banned, I believe, two of the three last maps. Yeah, I think the Valkyrie ban just piggybacks off of the anti-intel meta that a lot of teams are going for, especially because currently in ESA, due to issues, Echo is perma-banned until his invincible yokais are fixed. And just like that, going nuclear is going to take the Valkyrie off the board. It's going to lighten the load of any IQ players of trying to find those pesky black eye cameras hidden underneath tables, on top of ceilings, inside of Christmas trees, maybe underneath a piano. Anywhere you could throw them and stick them, that's where they could be. So trying to use that scanner can be a little bit overwhelming, especially if you want to be a, an IQ such as Luckshot, who's probably going to be bringing that insanely powerful G8. As we're seeing a very, very frag-heavy lineup come out of Digital Dynasty, comprised of having the Ash and Sophia dual entry um, soft breach squad with both the Nomad and the IQ being able to frag if being put into the proper positions. We're gonna be starting right in on the action on third floor bar cocktail lounge, typically the primary site on this map due to its very, very strong nature and very easy to defend. By so, small story. Um, it's very late where I am. I'm on the East Coast of the US. So I'm making coffee right now and I went up to go during the band phase to get the coffee, right? So. What I didn't realize, though, was that the coffee was made, but I put the mug in upside down. No so way. Th there's coffee all over the place. <laughs> uh, that's can, okay. we get some, make... can we get some effing chats for Keg here? Oh, He's going to have man. to clean up coffee. Yeah, that's okay, because Dynasty okay, and go. Going Nuclear are much more important than... Uh, I don't even want to look behind me. I have a coffee maker in my room. That's how bad it is. But, I mean, this defense right now is looking pretty standard to what we've seen before. That rotate hole going from wash, I'm sorry, bathroom into freezer. We've seen that happen plenty of times before. It's a matter of now what's going to happen next. We do have the mute mozzie combo, which we doubt right scary. And we do have that Jaeger on mine. This is complete drone and complete projectile to none. And most likely a good amount of that utility is going to be utilized to try to protect Vadix's evil eye maestro cameras. They're bulletproof and they shoot laser beams as well as just being able to see through smoke 
and having a whole lot of utility left alive for both plant denial and intel on the back half of rounds especially if the maestro is able to stay alive he has one of the highest clutch abilities of any operator in the entire game but just like that we're seeing a whole lot of pressure coming over towards the white corridor as zoid on the zofia is upside down repelled trying to potentially find out where unlimited is over towards that pixel corner he's gonna be droned out quite quickly as the sophia is gonna rotate over towards the piano gonna start repelling on that putting pressure as milk on the nomad is gonna make sure that the red stairs are secured and not gonna be flankable without getting knocked on your butt yeah, I mean, the defensive side right now for nuclear is pretty much your standard defense when it comes to cafe, but it is just a nasty, nasty setup here. Like we mentioned before, I mean, the evil eyes on Maestro, the, the Jaeger will mine combo, the mute mossy combo, that, this is going to be really difficult for the attackers. There's no other way to sugarcoat it. The will mine behind the iron shield right now. It's going to be unlimited, and so it's a matter of whether or not he can... Who can take down unlimited first? If unlimited can be taken down at all in this position and so it looks like a lot of the soft reach potential is there not a lot of reinforcements at all from the looks of it and that might be really good for the attackers and there's a lot of soft reach capabilities actually it pretty much just comes down to the zoid on zofia and that's it but luck shot right now about to find a skirmish and that's gonna be the jaeger taking down zoid teddy though in the middle of that taking down lucky shot as well i'm sorry you know zoid so your soft breach and your intel gathering is completely gone. You have your hard breach, you have some soft breach, and you still have your nomad as well. Not completely the worst situation to be in, just pretty damn close. Now the plant does go down, it's gonna be a fink, but Vanix doesn't care, he still takes down JV. And that is gonna be a 2v5. Now it's pretty much the worst situation you can be in. At this point, you just gotta pray that maybe the attackers will be aggressive and go after you because the air jabs will be there. But 13 seconds left, there's no real point for them to aggress forward, and I think it's ready for analysis. Yeah, as Milk gets a kill, Wiki is gonna pick up one and two with the Nitro Cell PP Roni combination, finding a explosion and a headshot in quick succession. We're seeing a nice double kill camp coming out of that. What? I believe that that was a full flawless round coming out of nuclear. We can flash the scoreboard real quick. I can confirm that. And actually no HRD support was fallen at the hands of an attacker and it was Milk on the Nomad able to find out one kill, but it wasn't quite enough as the defense of going nuclear definitely dropped some bombs towards the digital dynasty attackers. There wasn't a whole lot of map control able to be taken for free as every single area that Digital Dynasty wanted to push it was met with the quick hand of resistance on finding both the Wamai getting a kill and the Jaeger getting a kill Defenders early on backing up the Digital attackers. Dynasty attack and really stalling it out over towards Cigar Lounge area and at that point the Digital Dynasty Tigers were sort of grasping at straws. JV went for an aggressive sneak plant and it did not oh. pan out, but Unlimited is going to get a TK, which is really Attackers unfortunate, especially when... Uh, uh, no, yeah, no that'll he's do allowed it. to run that skin. Uh, not the head gear. Nope, that's the Pro League skin. Is it really? I don't yeah. think... Is it? That is, that is the Pro League set. That's the I, Pro League set. Yeah, 100%. I think it's good. Yeah, it is. That, it that, is. Um... Well, maybe Five it was a misclick, remaining. but with that, you're going to lose two reinforcements as Attackers well as your four mute hammers, which were your primary form of anti-breaching, which could spell disaster for going nuclear. I just want to interject and say I did make coffee now, correctly. Good job. See, for Thank me, you. I did the smart way. I just have espresso beans that I'm munching on. Yeah, that they're, sounds they're really good. They're covered in chocolate and they're delicious. Oh, so, never mind. That sounds really good. Yeah, there's some dark chocolate espresso beans. Shout out to Trader Joe's. Please sponsor me. My, You can find my business email on my Twitter. Did so, you know that dark chocolate's lactose intolerant or dairy free? Interesting. Yeah. But well, with that being more said, yeah. <laughs> with that being said, though, the attackers are already starting off on a great advantage. Vanek is dead. You lose out on those mute jammers, like you said. And typically, what we've seen so far tonight is that mute smoke and other SMG eleven really operators have been really big clutch potential for both defending teams. So, I mean, 
Yeah, that might have cost you the round already. You still do have hard support on that smoke. Unlimited takes down Johnny, so it does even out pretty quickly. Gaining, you know, losing a mute for an Ash. I think that's a pretty respectable trade. I think the main thing is just the mute didn't get his utility down. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And I mean, that sucks. But I mean, it's the closest thing to an even trade I think you can really get. With that being said, we've seen a very solid gameplay style from nuclear all, you know, all things considered. And I don't really see, I mean, Maddox being lost will affect the round greatly, but it's not like it's out of the woods just yet. Now, with a minute 20 left on the clock, Luckshot's looking around for the roam clear inside mining room. He's not, that was a weird echo, but he's not really finding a whole lot of success. In fact, I don't think there's any roamers upstairs, especially with that man disadvantage they had already. It seems like all the roam potential is on the bottom floor. But just like that, there's gonna be a little bit of Home Depot work as the way he uses the Buck Master Key shotgun to effectively recreate the site. And he's gonna pick up a kill, but not before Teddy gets a refresh onto Luckshot, taking off the IQ. Unlimited is also gonna put his hat in the bag, get his second, actually, never mind, he got a TK. That's his third kill of the round as the Nomad falls as well. It's all up to JV Stun and Zoid. And the back wall is open. It could be a path into sight, but the smoke canisters are going to make that very, very difficult to push. Zoid is actually dropped in the freezer hatch and is pushing in, but he's going to get found out immediately by Unlimited, who picks up another kill, and that's four kills for him. Not quite the ace, but if you count the TK, I guess you can say that that's yeah. five kills on his board, and he has unlimited potential here to continue fragging out. That is a very high DPI. He just did like a, a 360 in front of my eyes that I could barely register. I mean, that was pretty impressive from Unlimited. And I don't really see that momentum from them stopping anytime soon. Lockshot and the rest of the, the gang needs to hope that maybe they can at least get two rounds before going to the half because Cafe is a really defender-sided map, all things considered. And the Frost into the Mozzie is an interesting choice. They're going to think mostly that the defense is running trapped, but in fact, they're running Intel Denial. Yeah, Frost is one of those operators that some people might think is sort of like, oh, only noobs play Frost. Attackers but if you ever look at and the, those charts that Ubisoft releases, there's a reason that Frost is actually highly effective and has quite a big win delta in the higher levels. Of Siege up in the Platinum Diamond rank style is that Frost has the really like uncanny ability to just get free kills at the end of rounds because when you're trying to push the site and you have to jump through a window, are you really going to be worried about the Frost mat that might be there or are you going to be worried about the three guns that are shooting at you as you're trying to take site for 10 seconds? No, that's seconds what you're going to get the kills. But Mozzie is probably a traditionally more in five seconds holder operator in the competitive scene as his pest is so much more difficult to drone and if you think of your drone as an extra life you're just gonna keep on losing those lives away and make it very very difficult to gather the necessary intel that you need especially when you have to clear multiple people on the top floor such as digital dynasty is going to have to do on this heavy top stairs upstairs room that we're gonna see coming out of going nuclear now, keep in mind, we had seen the same exact setup in map one versus Intense and Revenant, where both defensive teams went, I'm sorry, Revenant had gone bar and cocktail and kitchen first. Then they lost their first round on dining and reading. And now dining and reading might have one of the highest skill ceilings in all of Siege. And now it's really a matter to see if the defenders can do what they can, what it takes to bring it back this time around. I don't know. We're seeing Luckshot play very aggressively in the beginning this time. We had not seen that before. Holding down A site entirely. All of A sites opened up. Zoid takes down WK. And is that going to be enough? That That's the Mozzie already dead. Thermite opening up in the left side of mining fireplace. And that's going to alert the defenders. What's happening? I don't think up until now they've had any idea. Now, Teddy is going to be rotating around to washroom, it seems like, and it looks like they might be going for some vertical play and attack Rome clear denial. Mick does take down Unlimited, but Teddy claps back, taking down Johnny. It's just a back and forth between the two teams and not a real, I guess, substance. 
The attackers did lose one person already. That's going to be the gridlock going down. But you've lost a lot on the defense, and that is a 4-1 right now. Zoid with the triple kill, and that is going to be Teddy, though, clapping back against Nick. And this could be the reverse ace. Plant goes down. He's been spotted out, and that's Luckshot clutching it out. That is going to be Digital Dynasty winning their first round against Going Nuclear. And, I mean, this is the same exact story we have seen time and time again on Cafe. Yeah, you expect to win third floor, you expect to win kitchen, and then reading room is the toss-up. And just like that toss-up here, we saw how Digital Dynasty was able to force open the door. They got control of A-Site quite quickly, and I actually believe that they could have gone for a sneak plant and really, really put on the pressure. But as all the frags went off upstairs, Upstairs control was relinquished. The buck just dropped into the other site, shot everybody in the back, and all of a sudden, putting the vigil in a 1v4 situation isn't the best odds for him. I don't care who you are. I don't think many people really relish the opportunity of like, oh my gosh, I'm in a 1v4. This is amazing. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to relish that fact unless you're an absolute sadist. And I mean, if you're a vigil player, you probably are anyways. But going back to bar and cocktail, it's like going back home. This is a much more comfortable site for any defender. And, you know, all things considered, I think Digital Dynasty did win that uh, dining room round. And it seems like they've really scrimmed that site, too. They went in with a game plan, especially Luckshot and Stunton. They opened up the left side of mining. They took control of the site. And it was a huge retake game all of a sudden once those gunfights were over. And it seems like, it seems like going nuclear was not in the same position. It seemed like they were underprepared for the site in general and went there because they were forced to, which is understandable. But now they're going back to what they understand a lot more. And I think this might become a 4-2 split just because of repeating that cycle of bar, kitchen, dining, leading to the 4-2. Yeah, Digital Dynasty really wasn't even able to get their foot in the door of site on this third floor. I, they kind of walked in and tried to plant and were instantly ripped apart by all the of the Baddix. But with that, the map control just wasn't there as both roamers picked up kills. And that's going to be on Digital Dynasty sides. Their main priority is making sure that the Wamai and the Jaeger are not able to get the open kills and continue the momentum for going nuclear. Johnny and Zoid are over here on the soft free squad, and they're going to start droning over towards the top of Red Stairs, as well as breaking on into Piano. Actually, Luckshot's going to get a really nice kill on Dovatix as he finds him on his cams and is able to shoot him from below, making full use of that gadget that IQ brings. She's not just a gun in the G8, she actually does bring a whole lot of utility as well. Yeah, bringing a whole lot of utility is the name of the game right now because... The G8 is great, but those claymores are also spectacular. And the drones, of course, are always a nice little cream of the crop. But again, it seems like we're having a kind of a 1v1. I don't know what the real proper term is, but it seems like a lot of the attackers are just playing their own game. They're playing with those 1v1s, and they're just doing what they can individually rather than playing as a coordinated team. But wow, can we go back to the Ash for a second? Because that's a fantastic angle. Unfortunately, Zoid, not so lucky, goes back down, and that has the potential to be such a good angle. Going all the way into freezer, Mick takes down Unlimited as well. Teddy, not too far behind, going to be DBNO in the middle of White Stairs. That's a big yike situation. That's going to be nobody able... Oh, no, I'm sorry. Teddy is going to take down Luckshot as well. 3v3, Teddy with the double kill right now. The attack is stuck inside that cigar boundary, just in between both the cigar sites right now. It's really a matter of what happens next. Now, we did see the mute inside washroom. We've seen this story again between an ash and a mute, waiting to see what happens next. But it looks like the peak is going to be going to the left side near Pillar, and that's going to be WK taking down Mick as well. Now it's a matter of, can that diffuser go down? The that last two defenders are going to be, drop. I'm sorry, the last three defenders Ooh. are around the freezer site. That's going to be Johnny taking down Teddy. Can he get those shots? No, he it's cannot. He go. doesn't spot out the rotation. That's going to be the Mozzie trying to get those kills. Dog, dogging and Ten weaving. Ducking and weaving. Johnny tries to get up his teammate. He's not having Five too much success. To and that's going to be the C4 coming out. And that's going to be going nuclear securing round four 
really nothing you can do in that situation. You have a bomb defuse to worry about. You have your teammate dying and bleeding right in front of you. And that's going to be WK with that. Taking advantage of their own thermite hole with a rotation going around and then named the round. And that was... The attack had a little bit more legs, but just the roaming Jaeger of Teddy was just too powerful. We saw him utilize that really nice angle on the side of both of the mini bars and was able to down the diffuser. And after that, they didn't have enough time to really get any more map control. The rest of the attack defenders just converged on the final ash and there were too many gunfights to be had. But Digital Dynasty was able to take more map control and were a little bit more successful on this attack it was a lot closer than we saw last Attackers time and maybe that will bear evidence bombed. as they attack kitchen which was another site that nuclear was able to win quite handily hopefully now as we see the mute is not instantly tk we're going to get to see the mute jammers actually go down to deny drones and potentially any reaching capabilities but Vatix is actually switched on over to the bandit is going to be doing a more traditional bandit batteries on the wall as opposed to just mute jammers they not only stop the breach they actually destroy anything on the wall, so they're a little bit more effective especially when you now free up the ability to place those mute jammers to stop the drones such as we're going to see Gianni's drone at the bottom of your screen holding underneath a bench going to cut the site in half and offer some nice lines of sights and intel for any attackers that might meet their end to hold flanks and give off any intel to the team. I mean, Intel's the name of the game again for going nuclear. We have Teddy on that vigil and we have hard support on the mute as well. We don't see the Mozzie this time around. We don't see the Wamai either. So not too much of a projectile defense if you want to count Thrones as a projectile. But I mean, the attacking, it looks solid again. There's nothing really I would change on the operator lineup for Digital Dynasty's team. But it's those gunfights. It's those gunfights that are really separating the two teams, especially. There is a lot of some roamers. It looks like only two on the top floor. That is going to be Teddy and Unlimited waiting for those sneaky little people to come on by. And that's already Unlimited getting a little bit of action down the Nomad trying to conquer back, but Teddy takes down Zoid. That's going to be yikes. Mick goes down as well. Luxshot still super lit and trapped between the two roamers. This is a run and gun game. If you're Luxshot right now, you're out of options. Unless you can take down one or the other, and that's going to be unlimited without a care in the world, taking down Luxshot with zero issues whatsoever. He does get a little lit up, but I wouldn't call that really an issue in this situation. And at this point, if you're an attacker, you can only jump this banister and hope for the best. Realistically, you'd break your legs, but right now their spirit is just as broken. Vadix takes down Johnny, and Stunton is the last one alive. Can Stunton bring it back? But no, going nuclear gets a flawless round on Digital Dynasty, and all I can really say is yikes. Yeah, the room was just came alive for going nuclear. As last time we were able to see Digital Dynasty effectively a top-down room clear because there wasn't as much pushback coming out of the defenders but this time they slapped a vigil and they slapped a Jaeger up in third floor and they were able to get a absolute flurry of kills and decimate the attacking forces really didn't give up any map control killed everybody and just fell back to site and waited for people to push down brown stairs and that's where the next two got their deaths as well it was just a really, really great roam coming out of Unlimited and Teddy. And they're probably going to be trying to do it once again as they lock in the same operators. This time they're going to have to be successful on the one site that has been their Achilles bomb. heel so far. As they were unable to successfully defend the reading room and dining. That is where the one on the Digital Dynasty board top of your screen. That was a couple rounds ago on this site, over on the left side of your screen, the west side of the map, is where Luckshot just kind of sprinted on in, took control of all of mining, and ultimately just was able to hold a whole lot of crossing and really started putting pressure to split the defense that was upstairs up, and then the buck and somebody else just killed everybody that was distracted.
which was a really well played eight and switch coming out of Digital Dynasty. And they're probably going to try to do something very similar over on the side of killing nuclear. You're going to have to be a little bit more cautious of what map control you're specifically giving up and foregoing, making the attackers really work for it a lot more if they're going to just sprint on into sight. They need to be punished accordingly, as Luckshot's going to be actually having to go all the way upstairs, going to do a more traditional roam clear as opposed to the rush strat that we saw him take advantage of last time because it didn't necessarily lead to a plant it was the round was still one at the back hands of the rest of his team taking it and getting the engagements on the top floor i mean you have to get that top down floor um push again that we saw time and time again especially on cafe but when it comes to dining and reading you have to there's no other way and already it looks like luckshot making his way into Mining room, he's gonna get spotted out by that evil eye. He wants to do something about it, but he's effectively stuck right now. Now, Zoid is repelled on, I believe, big um, cocktail side. He's looking for those kills. He knows there's gonna be a lot of roamers upstairs again, especially looking like Teddy is upstairs. I'm not really sure if Unlimited is as well. From the looks of it, the answer is no. And no, I'm sorry, he is upstairs. He's hiding out inside the bathroom. There's gonna be three roamers up top. They realize that really going that top down is the only effective way these attackers can really do a whole lot. And that is gonna be what feels like everyone closing in. And that is gonna be one going down, two going, oh no, not two going down. And that is gonna be Unlimited going down. Teddy and Unlimited though, trading bodies back and forth. Luckshot is incredibly lit. And all the upstairs roamers are effectively dead. Now, the anchors down. So I'm sorry, no, Teddy's still alive. He must have rotated out. But with that being said, the anchors are still alive and well. They're waiting for any kind of craziness that can come by from the attackers this time around. They're not playing any games this round. They know exactly that Digital Dynasty won their only round on dining and reading. With 50 seconds left in that timer going down, that's going to be Zoid going DB. I know I'm not sure from what. That had to have been a C4, I believe. Another a drone being taken over. And that's going to be hard support looking for that DB. And no, he knows that someone got affected by it, but he wants to go for that kill. But no, instead, Lockshot wants to save the day, revive his teammate. But this might be their undoing. Hard support does not follow up on that. With 27. Yeah, What's up? I was going to say, it could have been a really interesting play. What's even more interesting is this nice angle on top of the bookshelf that the attackers of Digital Dynasty might not necessarily read into. That's hard to pour. picks up one with the angle, as well as downs the IQ, leaving it all effectively to up to Milk with about 10 seconds. Attackers However, he's looking the wrong way, but Teddy saves his life as he takes the head off of Milk, and Vadix will finish Wait. up and down, but not Hold on a day. Oh, okay. That was a really weird death icon. He just had the skull and crossbones, like when you team kill someone. I think it was because he bled out. He downed him. Oh, he bled. Okay, okay. I see, yeah. I see. <clears throat> With that being said, one in five, it's not looking good for map one for Digital Dynasty right now. But now someone behind the scenes might have to let me know, did Digital Dynasty pick Cafe? I don't think they did. This would be a really big misplay if they did. Yeah, at the end of the day, whoever's map choice it is, is what you want. You want to win your own map choice because that's one of the very few things you directly control. Exactly. Sure, you don't get to... Actually, it is their map pick. So this oh, is not the... No. It is not a fortunate site or start for the site of Digital Dynasty, but weirder things have happened. We could very Defenders clearly see a 6-0 defensive attackers. sweep for Digital Dynasty to see them win 7-5. Or we could see going nuclear go the full nine yards and take this map choice before going to round two of the series. But regardless, we are going to get to see another exciting half of Siege with the roles reversed this time. Digital Dynasty is going to be able to defend, which is the preferred side of the map. But they definitely have a hill to climb after they were not able to win a all but one it is a massive hill to climb digital dynasty i mean i can only hope for the best their defensive setup doesn't look too bad i do like what they bring out the kaid is a good choice because you have that acog on no i'm sorry he's running the uh the smg so unfortunately we won't be seeing the acog here but nonetheless i mean it's still a good option to have 
Kaid on the board with that three armor, one speed. It's gonna be a matter of now how digital, uh, go and nuclear want to play this. And with unlimited being eight and three right now, I'm honestly a little nervous because it has been a really fast, really octane, high octane gameplay style for both of them. And I don't think that's gonna change with them on attack either. And they might just be able to sweep the downstairs. Now, of course, I could be in for a surprise right now. They could play a little bit safer and still lose the round. You know, if there's one round you don't want to lose, or one site you don't want to lose, that's bar and cocktail on defense. Yeah, especially when your bag is already against the wall. You're one round away from fully pinned back and having to flawless to even have a hope of getting to overtime. But just like this unlimited is going to be over towards the right window, making sure that that shield gets designated at the top of the white stairs, making any sort of pixel push or piano push just a little bit easier to extend into that corridor. As also, there is a Goyo shield over towards the pixel corner with two ADSs behind it, as well as a Goyo sitting there looking all snazzy in his black and gold pro league set. Unlimited is going to drop on red hatch and start refiring his way over towards heaven, but however, those pop shots will not bear fruit as the Goyo is getting converted upon by both Teddy and Unlimited. Whoa. He's going to find the pixel on the side and take out Milk as Teddy also takes out Luxshot. Over the flank from Johnny DD is going to finally take out Teddy, but not before two people are dead at the hands of the soft breach duo. Unlimited finding a beautiful pixel peak angle on the Iron Shield. I did not think he would find that or anyone would find that. But it's going to be a 3v4 right now. And the C4 does come down from underneath on the Kaid. But Unlimited relatively unscathed, still being somewhat alive. The Goyo Shield being taken down by WK as well is going to hurt Unlimited a little bit more. But hey, in the end, still alive. That's what matters most. Now, 48 seconds left. It is not looking great for either team, all things considered. Unlimited heavily damaged, and then with three other operators still left alive a little bit. And that is going to be some vertical play from underneath. Zoid playing, trying to get any kind of kills he can from underneath. He's going to start rotating back from wide stairs, it seems. He needs to get back onto the site as soon as he can. But that being said, it looks like the attack has kind of stalled a little bit. And ooh, the sledge goes down as well. Unlimited claps back, taking down Zoe, the Kaid flank. Unfortunately dead, and that's going to be Unlimited rotating back up the stairs. Now Johnny and Stutton are holding on to this as much as they can. Stutton goes down with a double kill, and that is going to be Digital Dynasty winning round seven. That's going to be their second round on the board. You might have been right, C-Naps. Maybe we'll, we'll see a 6-0 sweep come out right now. But right now, if you had to win one defensive site, it should be Bar and Cocktail. Now, Kitchen is a little bit trickier, but it's still heavily in Dynasty's favor. Yeah, actually, we will have to see. Yep, Baddix is going to hover over the band at least again, but I have to switch onto the Habana for fear of losing the round due to some banned content. If you didn't know, ESA is following the precedent of Pro League, where instead of a sort of blacklist of banned skins, it's turned to more of a certain skins such as the Pro League sets and the pilot program skins are whitelisted. So those are the only ones you can run besides default. So, if you have friends or you're playing in the league, make sure to take off those skins so you don't Defenders, lose rounds due to some rule patience. But just like that, we're going to be going all the way downstairs. This digital dynasty takes on the kitchen site. They're going to be trying to defend this with their lives and keep their cafe dreams alive. But it's going to be a very interesting um, set up as most likely the dog or Jaeger is going to be set up on the side of Cafe, which is a very aggressive style of play that can definitely pan out, and it does take a whole lot of utility to get these players out of this specific choke point. There's going to be ADSs behind the Cafe counter, Maestro cams all over the place, some reinforcements here and there, as well as the Castle Barricades specifically funneling operators are heading out to certain areas as well as probably some barbed wire giving sound cues to all of the other defenders on site. The Kaid is also going to do a really great job of protecting the backside and making sure that you have to really work for any breach of you do. Now, it's interesting. Usually inside kitchen or, I guess, bakery room, whatever you want to call it, you see a rotate hole go out into the red hallway near red stairs with the castle barricade shutting it off on the right side to make sure that you can rotate still a little bit in and out of kitchen and have your roamers come back to site when need be. Hard support, by the way, already taking down the dock, but still 
Usually you don't see that completely reinforced anymore. It's kind of a hybrid strategy between the old and new meta of the map. And you can see on your left there in the third person overhead, that is the case, but it looks like that dog already dead. Johnny's looking for that follow-up, but he's playing a very risky game. And he's going to rotate back to side smartly, but he gets picked off a little bit from Unlimited. Unlimited not able to secure the kill. That's still some damage done. And, I, wow, what a fantastic angle. I don't even think he realized he got shots off. Yeah, with points not being on, you don't know if you downed somebody. Or, just typically in Siege, you don't know if you necessarily damaged them. Particularly, especially when you're using a hollow sight, one of those one-time things such as the reflex hollow or red dot, trying to take things at angles, but was going to be known as Wiki takes down luck shot, as he takes a good amount of damage, but ultimately comes out on top and drops down the edge of the area of the bottom red. He's also going to drop down that um, the, the camera as the rest of the attack is pushing in. The Whoa. Ash is going to get a kill onto Milky, despite a little bit of a visual glitch of a fused launcher here but the ash is gonna fall at the hands of jv stunton who's stunting on everybody with that all to 81 bullets of pain going down range taking down two this round once again leaving it all up to vadix heart support and wiki who don't have that much health combined however the maestro could fall at the hands of this player frag grenade but it won't connect here however heart support's gonna get a kill onto johnny but jdv Gets another kill, swings out, but not enough as Vadix takes him down. And going nuclear wins round eight and starts going towards map point of cafe. Fantastic work all around for going nuclear. I mean, there was no real big mistakes they had made. It's just a matter of not able to have that rotate, like I mentioned before, and just being stuck on the site, even if it's yours. You, you just get stuck and you can't move at all. But JV did the best he could and he did quite a bit of damage, all things considered. But that initial frag going onto Zoid, I believe on the dock uh, in Bakery, is just that was again a big beginning of a snowball effect that they, the Digital Dynasty, just could not recover from. And right now we are sitting at two and six in Digital Dynasty's not so favorable position. And I don't really think, I think this is going to go to map two after this round. Reading and Fireplace again, we have not seen a, a successful defense so far Attacking tonight from any game on any team in Reading and Dining Room. And we have not seen a successful kitchen uh, uh, defense as well from Digital Dynasty. We did see a successful bar and cocktail defense from them, which was really nice to see. I mean, it's kind of hard not to win that. But on Kitchen, unfortunately, just the over-aggressiveness from going nuclear was too much for them to handle. And I think this is going to be the same exact result again, especially from the top-down rope um, attacker patterns that we see usually from Red Hatch. This is anyone on the upper floor is going to go down very quickly. I think what was really interesting during the pick phase, it might have been glossed over just a little bit, was the Monty was flashed, and that's why we saw a sixth pick off of the castle from Milk bringing the Greek strong man of Oryx. I think I'll, I've been thinking it'd be a really, really good interaction to see and cast a giant Greek Oryx tackling a Monty, but unfortunately we're not going to get to see that this time, as the Monty was sixth pick in favor of i believe the iq but yes the iq has already taken a good amount of damage from a little bit of an aggressive spawn peak coming out with only about 50 percent of the hp any gunfight that vatic takes is not going to be that advantageous but with a full down room clear imminent here there's going to be a good amount of drone work over towards the cocktail bars area there's a whole slew of drones finding out exactly where all these defenders are going to be playing as going nuclear is going to be going for the final kill in the final round potentially of this match yeah potentially the final round in dean and i mean unless Digital Dynasty can do something that really change things around. That's going to be, this is again, going to be the last round of this map. Now we are seeing a very slow attack, all things considered so far from nuclear side. Normally by now we would already see a, maybe a kill down from one side or the other, but it looks like they're being very careful about this round so far. They want to make sure they enter the site carefully and safely without getting immediately picked off. And I can understand why they're a little concerned because I believe on white Stairs. We do but well, we do have on top of white stairs, we do have lock shot waiting for anyone to repel into the hallway. And it looks like Unlimited does not want to deal with that, but instead rotate over to Red Hatch and drop down from there. 
Now notice all the roamers, they did take their time, so it allowed them to rotate back onto site or the lower floors a little bit more. And we do see a little bit of action coming out from below as well, trying to get those um, vertical kills. But Milk going down from Teddy, that's Long gonna be the magazine. first of many to go down possibly. That's gonna be the Oryx, unfortunately, not showing really any play. I don't think he used his utility at all either. And that's going to be Wiki as well. Yeah, I don't think you can tell any expanded overhead either. And that is going to be Mining Room taken over. Now, Luxa is still all the way upstairs as far as I'm aware. I think he may have rotated down white. But if he can rotate down red and get that flank, that would be a fantastic move to do. But here's the thing. Mining Room has been completely uncontested. Now, there is one at the bottom of white and one at the top of white that's going to be Luxa. It's really a matter of how this is going to be played, how the defenders want to bring this back. The frag grenade not going to take it back, unlimited going down. And that could be a very important kill because Ace has been completely uncontested. The Maverick gets the Attack Diffuser down. And where are the defenders? The ones that are alive, that is, that C4 going down, not going to connect, unfortunately. Longshot takes down unlimited. He's been DBNO for a little while. And Vatic wants to jump back onto the site, but unfortunately, Lux goes down as well. That's going to be Vatic with the double kill on the JV. Zoid, last one alive, needs to take a 1v4, but well, now a 1v3 and gets the defuse, but in laundry room, is going to be one waiting, and that is going to be game. Yep, as we saw last game, or last series, the Vias pistol does a lot of work, and just like that, one bullet to the head is enough to kill any operator in this game. And going nuclear wins this lap, her first map of the series at a dominating 7 to 2 performance. And what's even more dominant would be the fact that this was Digital Dynasty's map choice. I mean, overall, uh, a very, this has been the most one sided round or map we have seen so far tonight. We did see map three between, uh, Intense and Revenant go a very similar way. I think Intense got three rounds over the seven wins from Revenant, but yikes. And it looks like there might be a little bit of a contest going on whether or not there was a banned skin on going nuclear side. So I'm sure during our break, while we go to map two, we can find out what's going on there. I'm sure we'll give you the spicy hot tea when we come back after our break.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to ESA Rivals. We got the tea for you like we said we would, and it turns out, yes, there were some banned skins in that last round. However, we decided maybe it didn't give really too much of a competitive advantage because, you know, it, it did end 7-2. and two. Not really too much at stake, I suppose, between the two score lines. And with that being said, the team that did have the banned skin did get a warning. But hey, that's water under the bridge for us casters. We don't really care too much because we got some awesome content coming up for you right now. Digital Dynasty versus Going Nuclear on Map 2 in Clubhouse. We don't want to keep you waiting, so we're going to get right into it. My name is Keglinek, and with me is the beautiful and fabulous C-Daps. And we're going to go to Clubhouse for the second time tonight. Yeah, Clubhouse, I, I talked about it earlier. It is the T3 stomping grounds, playground, whatever you want to call it. Every team that wants to call themselves T3 has to know Clubhouse and Villa. And right now we've seen Clubhouse just... And cafe. Up and, yep, Cafe's pretty good as well. But with that, we're going to be going right on into the action. Digital Dynasty is going to be on the defensive. And with that, they're going to be taking the first ban off the board, being the highly predictable Thatcher, a very, very powerful British SIS operator that can effectively counter nearly every single powerful defender. Yeah, I mean, with Thatcher off the board, I mean, I, I wish I could say I was surprised, but I'm really not. I mean, with Thatcher and Mira, those are pretty much guarantees off the board. So it's really a matter of what these secondary defender bands are, and attacker bands are going to be. Monty goes off the board, which is an interesting target banner for Clubhouse. It makes a lot of sense, too, because Clubhouse was reworked moons ago, but it's still kind of a really close quarters map. And having the Monty push on to some really tight sites like Jim or CCTV, can be really detrimental. And Valkyrie ban... Oh, Valkyrie ban before Mira. I mean, mm. the next is going to be Mira. But Valkyrie going off as well has been a common ban we've been seeing tonight as well. Yeah, and just like that, I mean, personally, Digital Dynasty is banning. They could choose to not yeah. ban the Mira and utilize her, but Mira is going to be banned just like pretty much every single game. And Echo is also off the board due to some controversy with Invincible Drones that nobody wants to deal with. So just like that, we're going to be getting into the action with the first sight most likely being CCTV. Actually, I'm going to be completely wrong, and they're going to be going downstairs to Basement Church Arsenal as hard support hovers the ace, which is a band operator. Could have been some more controversy, but... He's going to switch off onto the Maverick just in time as Vatic gets the pick onto the Blackbeard. Most likely an AFK pick that, yes, will be six picked away to a more competitively minded Sledge Soft Breacher who can help to open up some nice lines of sight, especially on the basement bomb site that we will be seeing the Digital Dynasty defenders try to hold on to as long as possible. Attackers need to I mean, and defuse as many bombs the as setup can. we see right now is definitely not for the SSG realm of church. It, it's looking like your traditional defensive setup, especially with Mick going for the Kaid and Electro Clawing the hatches as well. There's no bandit on the board, so maybe the Electro Claws will go for basement uh, church walls instead. Maybe? But when it really comes down to it, you know, the CCTV beginning is usually what we see, and it looks like uh, Nuclear's was set up for CCTV as well, but honestly, when it comes to the lineup that they have, it, it's not really too uncommon, and I don't really see it switching up between Church and and uh, CCTV as well. But with that being said, we'll be going into round number one now, and so there is a lot at stake. Digital Dynasty only won two rounds last map. Now, it was Cafe, it was Defender sided. They started off on the, uh, the the attack, I believe. And so it didn't work out for them there, and they start off on the defense this time, so this might be the map of redemption for them. However, I feel have to say, this is going Nuclear's map pick, so they're most likely going to be comfortable bringing the pain forward onto this bomb site. But with a good amount of droning and some quick aggression, we're going to see some initial entries over towards the lounge area as well as some hatches being opened over on towards the kitchen side as wkey or 3y 
is going to be breaking open the site and could potentially go for a quick hatch drop, but most likely will be trying to utilize those angles to make sure none of those defenders down below feel safe underneath the open hatch and constantly have to fear the danger that is above them. Unlimited is going to be just running around, making a whole lot of noise, but not really knowing where he attackers. wants to go at this point. He's going to be trying to make some planks over towards Bar before he actually is probably going to rotate down the main stairs to start putting the pressure over towards the players on Church and even over onto the Moto Hatch. As he's actually going to down Luckshot on the Jaeger, but he will be in the down but not out state and slowly crawl away to be revived by a teammate. However, just that initial pressure is going to put the Jaeger at a very, very low amount as the floor bangs are being attempted, opening up more and more angles. As the Badix completely reconstructs this kitchen hallway, as he can actually get a nice deep angle towards a very commonly held spot up behind mini bar inside of the church. Yeah, it's a very interesting angle, and you can expand upon it too if you had a thermite on, but I digress a little bit. And going into the back of church is generally one of the safest options you have as a defender, and that's been completely nullified now. JV taking out Teddy. The Maverick going down as well. It's going to be a double kill coming out from him, but the, uh, sorry, Maddox takes down JV in return. It's not looking great for Vadix right now. He has a hair of health left in that. So he might be able to try to get him. But no, oh my god. It is pixels versus pixels right now. The smoke goes prone. He doesn't want to deal with that mess. And the defense is looking really good right now. Attackers dropped. Now, with that being said, WK looking around trying to find the best entry point. That diffuser's down. You need to pick it up. 25 seconds left. You need to run a marathon to get that down. And that's going to be Luckshot. Excuse me. Taking out Unlimited as well and Vatic is still holding remaining. this angle trying to figure out what to do this might be round one going to digital oh, dynasty big piece on vatican yeah there's really nothing you can do in this situation you just have to hope for the best and take that first round with a grain of salt but suddenly it was a double kill at the very end there it wasn't quite enough though had they come down maybe a little bit earlier we could have seen a reversal but digital dynasty regardless takes round one on church and that's the exact start you want to have from Digital Dynasty. Really proving that you can string together some rounds, get a little bit of momentum on your side. Big on Vatican. Yeah, there's really nothing you can do in this situation. You just have to hope for the best and take that first round. Right now they've already gotten 50% of the rounds. A grain of salt. And they're looking to continue that trend of stringing together these defensive rounds, starting to build a little bit of a lead for themselves as they go to the tertiary bomb site of GM Bedroom. They might be able to catch these attackers off guard a little bit, but it seems as if they have a nice static lineup coming out, as actually the Sledge will be 6 pick to Yes, Sledge, very interesting here. The Soft Breach squad will remain intact, as most likely Defenders everybody on the attacking side is just going to stick to the same operator for all six attacking rounds, playing a very similar role in understanding that their utility can be applied to every single site. Just like that... We're probably going to see hard support on the Maverick. Try to trick away this jacuzzi wall by just drawing two horizontal lines. Looking like an equal sign on the jacuzzi wall. It will break away the barricade for somebody such as the Ash or the Zofia or maybe even Vadix on the sledge if it's feeling spicy to breach it away in a soft matter. But just like that... The rest of the back room is going to be fully reinforced off, making it very evident that there's going to be a nice horizontally spread roam coming out of the digital dynasty side, making it very difficult for map control to be relinquished. And they're going to make going nuclear definitely work hard if they want to get towards site. Yeah, going hard is what going nuclear would like to do most. I guess you could say they go nuclear when it comes to the attacking side. So far, a kind of a weak performance from them. We did see almost a double we did see a double kill and almost a 4k at the very end from WK. It's just a matter of how they want to attack Jim. Now we gotta keep in mind that going Jim as your secondary site is beyond odd. And we almost never see that. Usually go CCTV church. Jim with people never wanting to go gym and god forbid to go bar but Hibana not caring in a world gonna be opening up two different hard breach walls I'm sorry reinforced walls and that's gonna put uh, JV in a really odd position now keep in mind the mute jammers seem to be up on just a tiny part of that wall and that's not really gonna do a whole lot unfortunately 
<laughs> and so they're just got to push it completely, completely blind for the most part, except for maybe a drone going out. But overall, already, it seems like this attack is kind of stunted on nuclear side. Hard support right now, I believe on the Maverick in Jacuzzi, it looks like maybe the top of Clubhouse rocking around inside Jacuzzi. Vatix is Attackers looking around trying to bomb. find those roamers that went downstairs to get away from the attacks inside this cash room. But I, I mean, it, it's a slow attack, but it could still be anybody's game. Now, with that being said, Maverick not playing on Jacuzzi side. It, it's really weird that they're not even touching. Oh, they did open up Jacuzzi. Never mind then, but still, Jacuzzi's not becoming a primary focus. There are the two defenders on stairs looking around for it. The Jaeger's going to be playing at the top of Jacuzzi. Zoid wants to get those kills, but the pressure from two sides is collapsing upon the teams. But never mind, that opening kill comes out. JB taking down Vatix, and the double kill might come out shortly. Luckshot right now going to be rotating for the flank. They know exactly what they're doing. This seems to be a much more comfortable map for for Digital Dynasty, all things considered, despite it not being their map. Now the construction push is working strong. Johnny and Mike going down to Luckshot. What is he up to? It seems like someone's familiar with it. Unlimited being taken down. It's a double kill from hard support, but I'm, for, I'm sorry, from Luckshot, but hard support shuts it down. Zoid comes back and takes down Teddy. It's a 2v1 situation. Hard support's the last one alive. He needs to push the site. He gets lit up a little bit, and now he needs to maybe rotate around logistics. C4 comes out, not gonna do a whole lot. It comes down to this, with 17 seconds left on the clock, what can you possibly do? You need that diffuser to go down, you take those kills, you find one, you DBNO the, the mute. But where is that Jaeger? You gotta go for the kill, and whoa! What? Whoa. There's absolutely no way. Hard support with a fantastic <laughs> What? Oh my. Oh. It's time to retire. It's time to he, retire, man. He got a hip fire headshot. You take those kills. <laughs> find one. Yes, you know the, the mute. Like like oh, house. where is that Jaeger? You gotta uh, go for the wow. kill. And whoa, that what? really could have been whoa. in Digital Dynasty's favor, but a comet came over the sky. It's a full moon tonight, and hard support brought it back through. I don't even want to call it desperation. That was that was some insanity. Yeah, that was absolute insanity as we saw a 2v1 clutch come out. It, you can say it's a little bit of luck for the Maverick. I'm sure Heart Support is going to argue that, oh yeah, I planned for my one bullet while sprinting to stray 90 degrees to the side and go right through the helmet of the Jaeger. But... I Attackers think at the end of the day, and as many it, bombs it, as they can. all rounds count the same, and going nuclear, getting that round on defense could definitely turn the tides into their favor, as every single round clubhouse attack matters so dearly. You're trying to at least get that 4-2 split, and right now at a score of 1-1, one one, they're putting themselves into a really, really great position so far. As if they win any of these next attacks, if they're able to effectively attack CCTV, which we've seen not necessarily be the strongest site in the world if our last series have taken precedent. Teams might have just figured out the best ways to attack it because this is such an old standing kind of site that a lot of teams have a lot of practicing trying to get into. Especially with the rise and prominence of Maverick Kirking, allowing CCTV wall to be opened so quickly and effectively. And as soon as you get that wall open in Rafters Control, your execute can pop off and really start taking names in a quick manner. Now keep in mind this is before while Ace isn't currently in quarantine as well. Once he's out of quarantine, it's even going to be less of a viable site. But in the meantime, the Maverick tricking is already underway. And wow, my god, is that fast. And that's going to be the Maverick tricking already done. That's going to be the Zofia. I'm coming to the follow-up. But before that, Unlimited takes down Zoid right away. The Jaeger's dead. The Goyo shields are out. And already it looks like this is a very, very fast, high-octane attack. Bro, going nuclear. Now, here's the real question I have for you, CDAPs. What's the best way to, for them to attack this? Digital Dynasty is a man down right now. They could go through logistics, take over some of construction, or go through rafters. What's the next step for them? 
I think you need to either get construction control or red control. And it looks like they're going to hear my pleas as Wiki is going to start breaching that back construction wall, effectively making the A bomb site a kill hole. Otherwise, that's going to be a little bit of a high trick, but it's not going to be quick enough as just a little bit of those X-Pyro tails did linger. And there's the rest of them are going to be shot away as three players are stacked up inside the castle. Blue is actually going to swing on out and he's going to fry out WK3Y as Johnny picks up a kill of his own, evening out the man count. And Limited has reconciled with hard support up in the top of Rafters as Vatix is also beginning to push this backside, starting to choke out the rest of these anchors that are in sight. Over Luckshot on the bandit has rotated to the back of the main stairs and could go for a flank on Vatix as soon as he gets called. However, hard support is actually inside of sight and is getting the diffuser down and it is a post plants position as Luckshot is able to take out Vatix that backside is his main Maintaining to be secure. Over Milk is also going to get a kill onto hard support as Johnny runs out of construction. It is not quite enough as a flank is going out. Unlimited is going to take out JV Stunning and also down the Goyo as a flurry of bullets are flying everywhere. It is essentially a 2v2 at this point as the time just continues to dwindle down. Utility is getting dropped all over the place and the Ash and Zofia are still right here. Taid does get re revived and brought back into the fight but there's not a whole lot of time and there's a whole lot of anguish they have to cover Raj and the breach are here so gonna take another shot on two luck shot milk is gonna finally get the kill out but teddy's gonna go for one two and three and finish out the round for going nuclear yeah going nuclear that's what they did indeed that was a beautiful post plant situation for only having a 2v i believe three situation going down holding the right angles especially on raptors Digital, I'm sorry, Going Nuclear just held that extremely well. They knew exactly what they were doing. And yeah, the lack of manpower sucks, but they brought it back so well because that diffuser was in such a prime position to get two different beautiful angles on that were hard to trade out on the rappel and down by the rafters top of the stairs and slowly rotating to the mid stairs. There was nothing that Digital Dynasty could really do. Now, going into map three, we're going back to church and arsenal again. And this has been proven to be a very good, this has been a good site for Digital Dynasty to initially take. This has been the only time they've won a round so far Attackers on map need two. To and now, keep in mind, it seems that the momentum has been going on and on since then for going nuclear. And this could be a very different outcome as well. The, the, uh, uh, the setup, the operator setup, and it looks like the reinforcements we see for DD side isn't really too different from what we're used to on that first round. And the operator lineup for nuclear side is also exactly the same. But here's the key difference. They, going nuclear has this momentum. Again, I think they were really prepared for that CCTV push the very first round and they were taken a little off guard. Now they're primed and ready for church and arsenal, and they know exactly what they need to do. Yeah, they need to be able to get open these hatches as quickly as possible, as well as flush out the heavy presence that Digital Dynasty is putting towards that blue corridor. They're sticking some people behind those ventilator racks, and that typically is the Jaeger, and trying to take that control away is very difficult when your hard breachers over towards stock, making sure that that hatch is open. It allows you to burn the ADSs or the Wamai magnets that might be protecting them. You can typically flush one of those players into the rotate hole back into church. Then you can start constricting your way into the site effectively and making sure you're taking the proper engagement. But right here, one engagement might come out quite quickly as the maestro might get caught slacking on a wall bank from Teddy, who has aggressively made his way all the way into dirt. His location is not known in the very slightest. His drone has not been spotted out, and it's a little bit of a chess move here as Teddy is patiently waiting for JV to mess up. The rest of the players are just stacked up in a very turtle heavy position. Both Zoid and Johnny are inside of blue, making sure they can push those players with the smoke and my combinations. Both the Jaeger is playing over in Modo. Unlimited has made his way all the way to the bottom of the stairs, and JV Stunt is going to have to reposition himself as he hears the drone of Teddy Neo at the top of dirt. There are going to be bullets exchanged everywhere, and both players take a good amount of HP, both at around 40 after their initial engagements. Initial engagements, indeed. It is a, just a rough situation to be in inside third tunnel. You can't really push up because those smoke grenades are in your way, and if you push up, you're essentially dead. Now we do see hard support go for the frag grenade in top on top of kitchen, but it's gonna bounce back in a little bit. The splashback is gonna come back and hit him. 
to around 25 health left on his character. That's a bad situation to be in, and Milk does take down hard support to follow it up. He wasn't having a great round to begin with, but Teddy and Unlimited still heavily damaged. Those are your two top braggers, and they're not in a good position to be in. No, but the double kill, taking down Vadix as well, Teddy does take down JV, who was the clutch for the very first round we had seen on this site. Unlimited takes down Milk as well, it's a 3v3 right now. We do see Teddy pushing down Dirk finally, and there's no one really to contest him except down inside of blue. There's going to be Luckshot, I believe, looking to get those kills, but we also have Zoid as well hiding behind the boxes. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the smoke. That's going to be Johnny. Now, here's the thing. You can't rotate whatsoever if you're Teddy. That bomb plant does go down. Wiki does take down Johnny. That's going to be a double refrag. Teddy takes down Zoid. It's a 1v1. 34 seconds left on the clock, and there we go, Luckshot taking down Teddy, and that's going to be a 2v2 between the two teams. No ban skins, Defenders no mercy the between the two teams, Bottom going into team round band. 5 Defenders on band. map 2 of ESA Rivals. And that was a really great shot, and not, <clears throat> he, as the Luckshot was forced into the 1v1 position, it can typically be a very stressful scenario Teddy takes down Zoid cool it's a 1v1 and just 34 seconds left on the clock and there we go luck shot taking down Teddy to take out one of the teammates but the refrag was just too strong setting up those really great trades on the retake was how digital dynasty was able to come out on top with a quick diffuse with a good amount of time coming out it's showing that probably basement arsenal is the stronger site so far for, but for this team as well as the last few teams that we saw in the series one of tonight maybe we're just gonna see this season basement's just a better site than cctv i mean so far it's looking like it's that case Attackers pretty much locate and church and, and basement can. have been relatively uncontested i mean that was a lot closer of a round we had seen in church than we saw in round number one but all things considered that's digital dynasty's best best uh defense to go on so far unfortunately once you win it you can only go there once and you have to wait a little while before you can go back so it's back to cctv and cash room and this has not been a great site for them jim and bedroom had more success i would say than they did on this site now keep in mind jim and bedroom was only lost by pretty much a freak bullet from hard support so i'm surprised they didn't want to go back to that site but cctv has had probably the high, highest disparage or disparity between Attackers losing and winning for DD. Yeah, I, I'm gonna probably. Oh see my god! Oh, was that a TK? Oh, oh never mind. That wasn't as cool as I thought it was. No, that's a TK. I was oh, gonna he's say. trying to shoot the camera, and just like that, unlimited entry partner is taken off the board, as well as a good amount of ability that the Zofia brings. Being able to burn away those ADSs is instantly gone at the click of a button. Now it's going to be up to Unlimited, most likely. You have to wait outside for the Maverick trick to go off. It's going to have to be taken by an Ash charge, and that's also going to require the Bandit battery, or in this case, the Kaid Claw, to be found before that soft breach can occur. Unless Vadix is going to just go up and Nope, Vadix can't do it, as actually he does hammer it away, but he's going to be instantly refragged out by this JV stun. As Zoid's also going to get a pick and drop the diffuser of the hard support onto the ground. It is a 2v5 scenario, not looking good for you here this time around. It's a 2v5. Wow, that that team kill just led to an unbelievable snowball effect, it seems. And CCTV is looking like a really good sign for DD right now because they have not lost a single body on the floor. In fact, there have been zero entries, it seems like. Yeah, zero entries for the attacking team. Maverick did. Maverick the tricked the wall, but not has anyone has actually Attackers gone into the clubhouse the building yet. And now if you're the attackers, you're not going to enter that site. That's suicide. That is death on a stick. Wiki takes a little bit of damage. It looks like inside gym and bedroom. Not really sure I'm from running. what. That's going to be unlimited. Taking out luck shot. And logistics might be the way to go. If it's soft, it is soft breach charge going down. That's going to be... Never mind. You're going to have Goyo hiding inside construction. That's a big yikes because you've lost all your main methods of pretty much getting anywhere on the site. The only thing you can really do is... Push through construction and hope for the best, but I believe the Goyo 
did not rotate into bedroom. That would have been a great option for him. But it looks like he has to... I'm sorry, Wiki has to just push. Has to push through construction one angle or another. You could jump out the window, maybe rotate around. But that could take a little too long. The only thing you could really do is either hope for the best or save. But it looks like Goyo's forcing his hand. Laying down prone, not having that angle. And that is going to be the Goyo taking... No, the Goyo does not take them down. That's Wiki taking out Johnny. 3v1. Now it's a matter of 20 seconds left on the clock. What's going to happen next? You try to get the free fire, but PD has Wiki's number. That's going to be Milk finishing off the round, leading into, I believe, in Digital Dynasty's favor. Yeah, Digital Dynasty, I believe, is up 3-2 to two after that round. And yes, they are, as the final round of defense on this DD side will be played out. And it will be into Gym Bedroom. If you're on the side of Digital Dynasty, you definitely want to try to get this 4-2 split as you could have been going for the 5-1 if it wasn't for Hard Support's crazy clutch. And I'm sure we'll see clips of in a, maybe a couple of compilations if anybody in chat was quick enough to clip that and post it somewhere. But as it breaks down, we're going to see a very, very similar lineup coming out of all of these sides, except Vadix is going to be switching off of the sledge in favor of the Moroccan Operator of Nomad. That's going to minimize the impact of, I believe it was... Whoever was the Mozzie was able to, to get a really nice point going. Probably Luck Shot playing the Operator once again. Was able to go all the way through the back side of up red stairs. Retake CCT control and kill a good amount of people in the back getting three kills. They're going to try to minimize that impact and make sure that, that does not happen again. Unless Luck Shot wants to try to tank an air jab, make a whole lot of noise and get knocked straight on his behind. I mean... Yeah, we're going to have to see what happens this time around, but I think you're right about that Nomad pick. That Nomad pick is the first I think we have seen on nuclear side between the two maps. I might be wrong, but I believe the Nomad pick was generally for DD side. And this might be what they need, especially with those late game aggressive engagements we had seen from DD last round. But with that being said, we can only hope that there won't be any team kills this time, and so far, so good. But Vanix on those air jabs could be the decider for this round because we had seen pretty much every other operator on the defensive side used so far except for Milk on... No, we had seen Milk on the, um, on the castle. We had seen it when they played gym and bedroom. But with two minutes and 30 seconds left, I don't know how this is going to go down. We do have one waiting inside of CCTV already. Yeah, and with that R90 window being barricaded off, it's gonna offer a little bit of support for on the Oh wow. no! As the Nitro Cell is able to take out hard support, and that is your primary Attackers hard breach off of the board, making it incredibly difficult for you to effectively get the jacuzzi wall open. And that is the way to directly cut off the site and make sure that there's not any strong rotates over towards the main stairs on logistics area. And with that Nitro, sure, there was a refrag onto the Kaid, but I will take that trade if I'm in Digital Dynasty's shoes eight days out of the seven. Now, it does look like the Hibana's on the board as well, and that Jacuzzi wall was not Electroclawed, but your Nomad and your Maverick are dead. Those are two people you don't want to lose so early on into the round. Unlimited whiffing a shot onto Zoid, unfortunately. Trying to go for it again, trying to find another body on the floor inside bedroom. Just not going to connect. Now, I don't think Zoid's going to jump out, but this would be a great opportunity for them to do so. There are some people already kind of playing in a uh, vulnerable position, but not going to play that aggressively, it seems. Now, keep in yeah. mind, DD... What's up? Oh, I was just going to say, there's going to be some drone work as the as the castle's location is found to be holding over towards the main stairs. And a wall bang will drop him into a down, but not out state. However, Teddy is not gonna know because of points being off. Wiggy's actually gonna take out Zoid, who was trying to be the field medic of the team as Teddy Neo has just broken his way into sight. However, a quick glance of that bulletproof camera is gonna find out his location as he takes away the ADSs and the wall ender. Castle Barricade is going to be breached here, but Luckshot's going to get a nice flank onto Wiki in a 1v2 situation unless he's able to pick up Milk, but it's not going to be enough as Teddy gets him and takes the round for going nuclear. Yeah, going nuclear was just in a really bad position all... I'm, I'm sorry, no. Um, the Mozzie was in a really bad position all throughout 
I mean, he had to rotate around the bathroom. He got a great initial kill on Wiki, I believe. But once he rotated in the bathroom, he was effectively stuck. You can't really push forwards into bathroom. You can't rotate back around with Jacuzzi because you know someone's already there watching that angle. And it is what it is. We bring it to an even 3-3 going into the second half. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in church this time. Also going to be the primary site for going nuclear's team. Now, we're not seeing the SSG roam again, but we are seeing a very anchor heavy roam, it looks like, except for Legion and Jaeger, who are, of course, the two primary fraggers of the team. Oh, excuse me, probably playing upstairs as well. Yeah, but with the abundance of impacts on the side of the nuclear, we could see some impact tricking on the kitchen hatch. But in conjunction with that, you are going to have a wiki on the Kaid being able to effectively shut down any of those breaching attempts if the electric claw is not effectively taken care of. Static is actually going to be going upstairs and reinforcing the hat, just making his one speed three armor self really burn those extra calories on those stairs. Teddy's going to be probably placing one of those two mines in towards dirt before barricading it off, but that's where the Zofia's drone of Zoid is making his way in, possibly leading it to believe that there is an aggressive push from that side of the map, as the Habana also spawns over there and probably will be opening up a hole for the Zofia to make his way over towards and actually the kitchen window is going to be open, but the drone work is going to initially go over towards the stock area, where Luxshot will probably pop in, pop the blue hatch, and start making his way over the other sides of the map. Knock, knock. It's a 5v5 right now, and early on in the round, we're seeing some vertical plays go on, and I mean, Church had been a struggle site for both teams. DD winning the defensive side every time we had seen it so far, but it looks like early on Zoid wants to go for this kitchen vertical play, and that could have a lot of success early on. We do have the Hibana in the Maverick for the hard breach, so it's not like they're out of luck, but hold on a second. I don't know if you mentioned this, Steve. I don't believe you did. Oh, never mind. Johnny taking down Unlimited, but still, JV has a lion pick, which I, I can't even tell you the last time I've seen lion in any kind of play. Yeah, he has a really powerful gun, but the ability has been nerfed pretty handily. However, if you are trying to go for a full roam clear, it can be nice to try to freeze out and just make try the attackers feel any bit of fear. Just Speaking as of right now, it's going to block the Maestro in behind blue. But as soon as that EE1D is finished off, he's going to rotate back into safety by the church as Zoid is breaking open some lines of sight over towards the main hallway outside of church. Oh! However, the maestro is going to get his head domed off as Wiki waited patiently for the hatch to open and took his free kill, as well as Vanix has made his way back into sight and is trying to hold off the aggression that Johnny located. is rotating in on blue. He's going to start droning and actually not see where Vatic is. However, the relocation is still going to be effective as another lion scan shakes the map. Oh, it's all right, Johnny. Okay, 3v4 right now. Teddy gets t um, takes down... Oh, I'm sorry. H Hard support takes down Luck Shot. It's a 3v3 still. 3v2. Uh, wow, I am exhausted. I need more coffee. Yeah, 2v4 right now. There's 38 seconds left. And wow, the lion somehow not able to secure that kill. It's going to be hard support taking down JD. And Zoid, you're the last one alive now. You don't have the diffuser anywhere near you. And if you do, you're most likely going to have to drop Moto or, well, he's at main stairs now. So he has to rotate back up, ruining his positioning, or go for all the picks. He had a 1v4, now it's a 1v3, 1v2. It's a double kill situation. Remain. We have seen some crazy Ella pistol, I'm uh, sorry, Zofia pistol kill earlier. So are we going to see that again? You don't even have the diffuser. You got to play for kills, man. And, oh, both getting lit up just a little bit, but not enough to secure the kills. Stalling as much Operator, as they can, going nuclear wins round seven, and they're going to break the tie by having that 4 3 lead. And going nuclear is definitely trying to take back that lead, and they're in quite a good position off of the strength we saw from their attacks. Being able to string together three rounds and get a tie on Clubhouse attack is a very, very, very advantageous position. 
because all you have to do is get your typical 4-2 split, which most teams are able to achieve, and you will take this map for your own, especially because this is their map choice. I'm predicting that they really do know how to defend it, as evidenced by the really strong position they were in at the end. It was cut a little bit close on the final clutch potential as the Zofia just started firing and pre-firing every angle like a madman was able to pick up two Attackers but not the final ones which are truly what matters but the end two impactless frags is not the worst thing to do really relinquish on the attack side but with that going to cctv cash room this could be the hotly contested site that could make or break going to clear streams of ending this in two games. If they're able to successfully defend this site, I think they'll definitely be sitting pretty to try to end this game in a quick fashion. However, if this site does seem to be a thorn in their side, as we've seen it be for other teams, this is where things could get really interesting. And it will force Jim Bedroom to be a strong site that has to be win if they want to get the dub. If you are a digital dynasty, you need to figure out right now what you need to do to bring this attacking round back. Because if you can't win this round, it's over. The game is over. Now, with that being said, let me explain why. Because if you are a digital dynasty, you've had a huge uphill battle these last two maps. And, you know, you had a lead for a while on this one, but that was on the defense. If anything, that was not luck, but that's easy streak compared to attacking on attack. Now, Nuclear has had your number for the majority of these games, and it has been really close all but maybe one round of all the rounds we have seen between the two maps. Now, the Hibana wall is going to open up on CCTV, but there's nothing really to contest that on the defense except for maybe the Electro Claws, which I think were either destroyed or dedicated probably down below. Now, I believe, and there was one Electro Claw 100% down below, and yep, it is going to be going to both those sites. They just gave up CCTV wall away, which is interesting, but Teddy's not afraid. He takes down JV, and that's going to be the refrag from Johnny taking him down as well. Now, it's going to be Raptors completely uncontested, it looks like. I'm not sure if there's any Roamer presence clear, but Zoe takes down Unlimited as well. And whatever's working so far, it looks like Digital Dynasty took their brain medicine because they are bringing it back right now. Now, you took out a lot of the players that were off the site, but now it's a matter of taking out the people that are on the site. Those Hibana walls were okay. Uh, you can be able to crouch onto the site, and you can also not vault over, but you have a line of sight. Milk takes down a wiki as well, and that means there's only still one that was damaged on Digital Dynasty side. It's a 3v4, so you need to bring this back to get that high once again. The smoke grenades go down. Cash is your best option, but you have to rotate out and probably find, uh, I believe, Sophia hiding out. Maybe the Tibana hiding out outside the wall. Maddox takes down Milk. That's going to be a 3v2. You got to slowly bring it back. 2v2. But that's going to be hard support going down. Johnny wants to bring this home. He, ha he has to get that defuse down. Unfortunately, that rotate doesn't work. And so here's the big issue. What is the Kaid going to do? He's being attacked from the front and from the side. He gets a little bit of damage down. And that's going to be the defuser going down. Maddox takes down the defuser. Johnny, though. And that's Digital Dynasty surprisingly barely bringing it back against going nuclear what seemed like an easy win for dd turned into a very very close call yeah i really thought the kaid was going to be able to pull that one out in a spectacular fashion but digital dynasty was able to hold off the heroics that the players of the um going nuclear side were able to string together but with that we're going to return to cctv cash room as there most likely is going to be a little bit of an adjustment on the side of these going nuclear defenders to make sure that they don't relinquish the map control in such a quick manner. The dock was really, really forced out quite quickly by the Capital fire bolts as the Kaid is actually going to be switched onto the Kaid. He decided that they actually do need the Moroccan electric man to try to deny all of the breaching towards garage Attackers wall. Maybe this time they will allocate an electric claw to that cctv wall but most likely not as with the maverick player the wall is going to get open regardless unless you see some crazy crazy plays such as we saw that nitro cell getting outside of the holes and taking out the maverick 
but most likely on this site it is not going to occur that way as really contesting that breach once the maverick is making a straight line becomes very very difficult especially with the ability of the attackers to repel on that remaining. outer balcony they definitely have the advantage as you're on the drone looking for a hole all you can see is the top of their head and maybe the repelling grappling hook might even Attackers cover that away. Out to locate a bomb I don't want to say they go in nuclear and played really cocky last drop. round, but they didn't really even bother to try to contest that CCTV wall. And yeah, I kind of think that was a misplay there. Now, if the Kai electric claws go on to the... Yeah, well, there's one. There's only one this time down below inside Garage. The other one's probably dedicated to CCTV, if I had to guess correctly. And a bomb has been I located. believe so. Yep, I believe so. And so that means that other wall. Yep, there it is. The other one is going to open up garage down below. It seems like, and that might be the best attacking way to go, other than opening up the, from Maverick tricking. That looks like Maverick's just kind of sticking around right now, waiting to see what happens next. Probably waiting for Hibana to open up garage down below. Teddy is still holding onto Raptors. Now keep in mind, Teddy let go of Raptors. If I let go, I mean he died very early into the round and that was a huge part of the raptors push from the attacking team being so successful into getting that diffuser almost off now with that being said though it's a back and forth and no one has died yet and we're just about a minute into the round i think the jaeger actually got misdroned out here as he rotates over towards the breach that the habana made wiki is actually able to take out milk on the maestro as unlimited gets a nice flick onto johnny actually guess i did a little bit of preemptive strike on that nitro so taking out the maverick but ash is going to get a quick refrag onto the jaeger of unlimited downstairs in the basement but at this point you do not have a way to hard breach your way into sight and you're going to have to do it the old-fashioned way two abana charges have been placed at the bottom of garage making it so I guess you could only do a prone hole in on CCTV if you choose to do so. Teddy's going to overheal himself and he most likely will be taking some engagements quite soon as a first initial Zofia lifeline gives him a little bit of a stun to his head, but the bullets have not started flying so far. He's just going to be taking a nice passive angle as he gets drone. Hard support is going to take out JV Stunton as he drops down the ash to the SMG-11. However, Luck Shot's going to get a nice shot onto Teddy over here, but not before Zoid falls at the bottom of Barrage at the hands of Hard Support. However, he's going to get refragged out as Lucky Shot takes out his second kill, but he has to get two more if he wants to complete this clutch and keep Digital Dynasty in the lead actually take the lead pardon me he's gonna have to push up a red stairs and try to reclaim that diffuser he's gonna have to start droning to get the necessary intel right now he's stuck at the bottom of these main stairs outside of blue and both vanix and wiki both have very very powerful weapons for this clutch one of these operators you definitely do not want to go against is the alda right here as 81 bullets rain down vanix is going to take this round for going nuclear as they finally are successful on the cctv defense it's about time that CCTV was finally successful for going nuclear. They played that a little bit longer than I thought they would. They barely lost out last round, but they decided to go for it again. They came in with a different strategy, and it worked out really well for them. Now we're going back down to church, which I believe was also another win before for going nuclear. Again, another close one. To be honest with you, CDAPs, I've been kind of surprised how close this game has been, especially compared to the last one we had seen before. Yeah, it makes me believe that maybe Digital Dynasty, I guess they were more comfortable and possibly thought, hey, we won map picks. We get our map pick of Cafe and we're also comfortable on Clubhouse. But at the end of the day, it's almost like these map choices are reversed. Both to teams are nuclear was definitely a lot stronger on Cafe and Digital Dynasty's keeping up on this map clubhouse but that also is to be expected as every t3 team is nearly required to be prolific at this strat map but with it at a four a score line of four to five it is still very very close but still teetering in the favor of going nuclear as they not only have the lead but do i have the defensive side for the rest of right 10 the stream has frozen for me, but it looks like we are coming back to life. Oh, to oh go. there we go. We are back on top. We are back in business. Attackers are yeah, so this is going to be an interesting attack, all things considered, because if 
if, if going nuclear wins this round, they will be going to match point and series point between the two maps. And, you know, we, we haven't really seen a lot of great attacking potential when it comes to Church for DD's side. They did a great job on the defense. Uh, they did a great job on the defense. They didn't lose a single round defending Church, but it looks like the stream's struggling a little bit for us right now. And that's going to be Blue Hatch immediately open. It looks like the internet for our observer might be dying a little bit, so we do apologize, but we will do our best to commentate over it. That's going to be Blue Hatch already open. Now, with Blue Hatch open, that's going to allow a lot of leeway for the attackers to get multiple angles like we see in Garage and going down below. With that being said, I don't... We do have the Jaeger playing inside the generator. And, oh, wow, immediately, before even fully dropping down, Teddy is there like quick draw McGraw, taking down Johnny. And that's going to be your Zofia off the board. And that's going to be a lot of soft reach and uh, a, a lot of, you know, an ACOG and a lot of just fragments off the board. But Teddy is not done yet. He's hungry for blood, but unfortunately, he's been forcibly quenched to Zoid. Takes down Teddy. And that is going to be a 4v4 right there. Zoid does take them down, which is a really good thing to see. But the Smoke wants to go up and get some blood action as well. And it looks like Smoke, though, wants to play it a little bit safer. He's going to be hiding in a little bit of a deeper part of Dirt Tunnel while having somewhat of an angle to rotate back into, into blue. But so far, just keeping the Sledge at a standstill while the rest of the team keeps going forward inside of main. <clears throat> yeah, the main stairs push is coming. Evident Milk is going to get a pick onto Wiki here, dropping the Cade and making sure those electric claws do not continuously get juggled. However, JV is just going to be going towards the main church wall and trying to breach this open. His left shot holds his cross. The smoke is rotated out of dirt. However, the wall of church is actually fully electrified. But as they do have control of Moto, they can start their push. Milk is actually fighting with a rumor who is trying to get on a little bit of a flank. Over here, however, hard support has just rotated away down blue stairs, and he is just shooting at nothing at this point. Vadix is trying to retake control Bomb of Moto and might find the thermite. Actually, the Havana here if he peeks out, but he's gonna fall at the hands of one shot as HD support and Unlimited both get a pair of kills onto Zoid and Milk, leaving it all up. In a 2v2 to Luckshot and JV, but as Unlimited goes upstairs, he picks up his second frag, leaving it all into the hands of JV Stunton. The hard preacher with the diffuser is trying to rotate into dirt blue, but it's not enough as hard support picks up another kill and going nuclear pushes to match point. Yeah, going nuclear, going to match point is not something that we is something we say pretty commonly. I was gonna do like a double negative, but I figured it's way too late in the night to do that. But I mean, going nuclear, going to match point again, we, we've seen it time and time again, and I, I don't, I'm not surprised if we don't continue seeing that going forward. And so DD is struggling a lot right now because they try making these split pushes through main stairs. They try doing dirt. They tried doing blue. Two out of the three of those did not work. Now, main stairs worked a little bit better than the other two, as in not instant death. But unfortunately, they were just not able to make that fully dedicated push. And when it comes to just having two giant rooms, essentially, what Church and Arsenal is, and just being surrounded by different objects that weave back and, and forth, as many bombs as going can. nuclear just knew exactly where to go and exactly where to place themselves in position wise and get those frags. And Digital Dynasty suffered for it. Yep, and just like that, this could be the last round of this series as we will be going to gym bedroom for the first time on the going nuclear side this is a site that has gone 50 50 won once and lost once by the defense so far however you have to put a little asterisk next to the win as digital dynasty won off of a crazy clutch that arguably couldn't have happened or shouldn't have happened Five whatever you want to say whatever letter you want to put in front of those last four letters should have worked but, one. but just like that this could be the end but the soft breach and the hard breach squads are going to be coming out just like digital dynasty every round but this time jb stunton has passed off the hard breach to johnny and is taking one of the new operators in the form of yana this could be quite a little surprising wrinkle as we have not seen her played so far she could just manage to sneak one of her holograms up 
main stairs and really give a jump scare to any of the going defenders that might not be ready to have an operator just right in their face. Yeah, I would love to just focus on Iana a little bit more this match than some of the other attackers. Just because, A, we don't see Iana too often, but B, she's just such a cool concept. And I'd love to see how the Prisma is used. But with that being said, we're seeing a Jacuzzi put push right away. And I genuinely don't know what Maddox was trying to do. He went for the run out. I think he got a little too greedy there and he got punished for it accordingly. But with that being said, that's going to be the bathroom wall from Jacuzzi opened up. The Maestro is forced to rotate out, and that's going to be pretty much free access in the gym. Especially with Maestro going down, that's going to be even more free access in the gym once that castle barricade goes down. Now, the top of main stairs will have, I believe, unlimited on the Jaeger or Wiki. I can't really tell, but we're about to find out because that's Wiki on the ump taking down JV. And unfortunately, we don't get to see the Prisma used at, I'm sorry, the Gemini used it all. Now, Zoid is trying to find those concussion kills. The C4 comes out. That's not going to connect, unfortunately. And it's just not a good, great round right now, it seems, for going nuclear. They're trying to do too much at once, it seems, and Zoid is just taking advantage of that, and it's going to be a 2v4 right now. The bomb plant goes down. Wiki's suffering quite a bit. Zoid is going on a rampage. Uh, at the very least, that was a 3k, but possibly a 4k to go with it. Yeah, and really well played by the Zofia to continuously cut any rotations of the players inside of Cash Room, trying to hold horizontally on the map. But as soon as that main site control is relinquished to the attackers, all the Zofia had to do was sit outside and hold the angle with an ACOG and wait for people to cross into her crosshair. Really well played as the post plant position wasn't even really a factor because I actually don't know if the diffuser got down or not. It was going to go down, but Zoe just killed everybody anyways. But with that, this is the last round of regulation. We're going to be going to CCTV Cash Room, the hit or miss site of Clubhouse so far. Typically, you would expect it to have a pretty fair win percentage, but precedent is not taking that much of an impact. JV Stunton does a six pick off of the Thermite to the Yana once again, trying to hide that operator maybe going to try Defenders to sneak their way up main stairs and attackers. get a whole lot of intel or maybe just going to help supplement the garage push to get the pesky pesky players out of rapper which most likely will be teddy neo on the Wamai, continuously throwing away those magnetic discs to ensure that not only traditional throwables such as flashbang or zofia charges get taken away but also offering the unique ability to counter the happy pal bolts which is something that Jaeger is not able to do i really want to touch back on what you mentioned about the sixth pick going to yana i mean we just don't see yana too often and she i want to say she's a huge sleeper right now this is the first season where she's out of quarantine and she's able to be played but I think she has the potential to be one of the best supporting operators in the game. Just because you have a fully fledged, unlimited Attack human drone that Attack can see so much here. more than a tiny little drone can. It can't fit in any, many spaces and it's not as portable. But oh, and grenades, she has grenades. We've seen Eska play those grenades in AG and it's just absolutely wild. And she, she is a huge, huge sleeper. And hopefully JV can finally make it proud. It's five and six right now. Going Nuclear needs to win this round, not only so I can go to bed, but also so they can claim the title of having that 2-0 victory over Digital Dynasty and what seems to be a very, very hotly contested map too. Now, with that being said, of course, we are seeing a down, a, not only a horizontal, but also lower vertical play and okay. I don't know who opened that up, but we are the Zofia did open it up and we are seeing the rotate from underneath. Now, that's a tricky situation for JV to be in because you have to be exposed when climbing up that ladder. It's going to make noise and unlimited is no dummy. He's going to spot you out. There's also an operator on the top of rafters right now. I believe that's going to be Kai. So what can you really do right now? The answer is effectively nothing other than use your grenades. There might be an ADS down there. Unlimited already took down Johnny. And I, I expect JV won't be too far behind. He is trying to go for the 
Grenade, and it's such a risky move. Is it gonna work? No, because Teddy is a one mine, and the one mine magnet's gonna be there expecting something of that caliber. Now, it's gonna be a 4v5 right now for DD. It's not too late. You lost your capital, which is great for the post plant or the plant denial. Zoid does take down hard support, but I mean, that's the smoke, that's the anchor. I would really worry about the two hard fraggers right now on their roaming. And no, looks like Unlimited not able to find too much potential, but there we go, never mind. He goes back out a second time, finds one shot into a double kill. That's three so far for this round before finally going down. JV takes down Unlimited, but at what cost? At what cost? Because JV and Milk are the last ones alive. You have a barely alive Maverick, and you have your Yana still hiding at the bottom of blue. Teddy, though, holding down the angle as much as possible. But Avatix looking at the evil eyes, not able to find too much either. JV's completely fine. Looks like this slow rotate up the rafters. The move. There's 19 seconds left on the clock, and you're finally down to just JV. But it doesn't matter too much. That 1v5 and 1v4 is short-lived because that's going to be a two-kill streak for Teddy on going nuclear, who have gone all the way into winning two maps in a row. Nucleosis. Yeah, Yes, I was just about to say Nucleosis coming out of Unlimited as Going Nuclear is able to finally close out this series at a score of 2-0. We saw some really great performances coming out on both maps as Teddy and Unlimited just were nearly unstoppable as well as Hard Support also hitting that double digit threshold. But when you break it down at the end of the day, both teams did play very well. The first map wasn't necessarily as close as Digital Dynasty would have liked. But they definitely were able to come back onto Clubhouse and really show their stuff. This is only the first week of Rival Series, and there's a heck of a lot of games to be played. And if you're any team that was watching them, maybe trying to get a little bit of scouting, I think every team that played today has definitely made a name for themselves and shown that they are a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, I mean, all the teams haven't, all the teams played really well. No team really played that bad. You know, there were some slip-ups. We did see some maps go really, really poorly for some teams. But overall, I thought everyone played pretty well, all things considered. You know, to be honest, going into ESA Rivals, I wasn't really sure what to think. I thought maybe we would see absolute stomps come out. But no, we didn't. We saw a lot of really close games and a lot of crazy kills. Keep in mind, this is the same exact set where we saw, well, not this set, but the set previous to this, we had seen a triple kill with a pistol. Not something you see every day, CDAPs. Not something you see every day. I think on the right other side that. of that, we also saw a hip fire headshot clutch from the one yes. tap of a sprinting Maverick. I think that falls into the same path. Same already. category. I mean, yeah, same category. Maybe that'll be on your top 10 list <laughs> coming out of ESA rival kills. But maybe I think everybody here is a little bit tired, especially on our production teams. We've been casting since about 7 p.m. Eastern. If you count that out, that's about. Five hours. I'm sure Ocho is also very tired as well. Big I ran shout out, out to our observer. Yes, Keg lost his coffee. He had to make two cups because he decimated one all over his carpet. But with that, that is the end of our final best three today. The winners were going nuclear as well as Revenant. Revenant. Yes, I was gonna say Revenant. You you got me. I, I was gonna say it, I promise. But with that, I guess we can go ahead and say good night and make sure to tune in tomorrow as we continue more games coming out. And just really excited to see the rest of the season coming out of all the other series of ESN.